Everybody, I think that's me. Am I the coming up next screen or coming soon screen? I'm not sure. We got Sean Williams walking over, but we're about to have the semifinals of the Monte Carlo Open. What's up, Sean? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I'd say just a huge shout out to uh, the Union Club, which is a club in London. Just started playing like backgammon seriously. Oh, okay. A load of us here for the first time in Monaco. This, okay, uh, the Union Club in, uh, yeah, in Soho in London. In Soho in London. Sean Williams wants to give a shout out to them. Okay. Good luck to you in the match. Yeah. I think we're live, right, Tara? I'm talking to humans. Cool. Okay. <laughs> yes. What's up, backgammon fans? And indeed. Yeah. So we've got Sean Williams. He, right there, you just saw him on camera from uh, Great Britain, of course. Uh, he is in the semifinals playing against, what is the, oh, I got to look up the name. I'm going to forget it if I can't see it. Um, it is Ronald Amorim from Brazil. So that's our semifinals matchup for the, the Monte Carlo Open, which is like the warm-up tournament here. Um, it's a pretty huge tournament, though. It's, uh, I think you can get in for 500 euros for that one. The prize is up top. It looks like any like it's as good or better than probably all like usual U.S. tournaments and smaller things like that. And whoever wins this much match is going to play... Ryan Rabello in the finals at 3.30, so two and a half hours from now. Oh, cool, and they've got the Tempest clock. I haven't seen this actually work yet. This is a new thing that I know uh, Mark and team at Galaxy have been uh, working on designing and, and have at the tournament here are selling here, too. I haven't gotten my hands on, on one to play yet, but Mark was saying he loves playing with it. Okay, cool. That's the start. Pretty easy. So Sean on top, Ronald on bottom. Opening with a 4-1, and I got to, I got knocked out of this tournament by Sean Williams, so um, I don't know if I'm rooting for him or not. I'm going to have a hard time with that would be an objective. I'm not familiar with Ronald's play, though. Um, yeah, Sean and I had a pretty exciting match, actually. Um, I think that's posted on my YouTube channel if you want to see that one, but we got to DMP. I think maybe in that game I was a favorite briefly. But for like the rest of the match, playing from behind, what can you do? But it was a lot of fun. Good player. Interesting decisions all the way along. Um, okay, and we got the first interesting decision here, 2-1. I think, um, yeah, okay. So he chooses to make the anchor, which seems pretty reasonable. But a lot of times in these early games, just for the distribution, leaving the shot and giving up your bar point to make the five point is quite the improvement. When you get missed, you get to... Uh, to improve your structure a lot the next roll so uh common theme there to go for that and being down in checkers back already why not the defensive anchor is a little premature you might actually uh cover the outfield better being split so that was a neat one uh six three okay and ronald being decently ahead in the race is just looking for safe place this seems pretty natural now would prefer not leaving the blot in the in the board but that'll be okay Okay, Sean with that anchor is going to be in this game for a long time. 6-2, that's a nice constructive roll. Um, yeah, if, if Ronald can make a point or two in board, then he's going to be creeping up on a cube with this racing lead. But I think it's there's still plenty of contact with those five checkers on the mid and the open five point now, so I don't think we're really in cube territory quite yet. Um, Sean, fortunately, has a perfect board for dealing with the contact, too. And we can see the numbers on XG very close. 
Um, it's never too big of an error to like lead, uh, cube with the with the lead in these kind of holding game positions. But you don't need to until you might lose your market, and there's very little chance of that occurring here. You don't lose your market by very much, so you don't get a lot of value out of sending the cube this early. Um, nothing really changed much on this one, except we have four in the midpoint now, so sets will clear, sixes, fives, fours. We'll bring all of them down safely from the midpoint, so we're getting closer. That's a big signal for holding game cubes for sure. Um, and I think just 13 to 8 and staying safe again is going to make a lot of sense here. Does not look good for distribution, and his position's certainly gotten worse after this, but just looking for safe plays and play, playing the race home if he can. Sean continuing to improve his board and be ready for any shots that he gets. 6-3, okay, I think my inclination would be to take one off the midpoint and prepare to clear, um, even though it dillies the builder to the 4. Yeah, and he immediately notices that after he covers... Um, the two point that is that is three is going to be down regardless. Um, so after he sees that, he realizes he'd rather make a safe play and doesn't need the two point. Building points behind the anchor aren't so valuable here. It's not really looking for contact, looking to clear safely. This three now he's got a spare on the four that he can play with it. So I think that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, okay, we're catching up on the transcription really quickly with the double aces. Double Aviva has been doing really good with us so far. Transcription. It's a tough job. Just got to ask him to slow down every now and then. 6-2. So we can start to think about whether just giving up the midpoint is the best contact here. We could potentially go with one. What do we care if we get hit with an ace? An ace five is going to cover, but we still get pretty good contact. It looks like an opportunity to maybe play 13-7, to 6-4, something like this. And our other play, of course, is going to be 7-1, to 6-4, to four, something like that. Yeah, I think this is a little better. Oh, he plays two down instead of keeping the contact on the mid. Okay. Um, that's the safe one. So, see, it's not even clear with that two ace if, if Ronald would have been willing to hit and leave the shot. Um, so that was the value of potentially making a play like that last roll. But I don't think those tend to be too big. 3-2. I think since we can safely get to the 8, this is a nice chance to leave it. He didn't want to with the 2-1 last roll because it left multiple indirect shots outside. Here, it's just going to be the 10. Uh, narrowly missed with a 5-4. And so Sean's just going to play to the ace and continue to wait for contact. Oh, look at that. There's an opportunity to step out and actually see that midpoint blot in case it couldn't get home safely. And, uh, okay. Those can be tough. You got to be pretty sharp to to notice those sorts of um, opportunities to play extra bold in in holding games like these. Um, and now that all we have are the eight and the six to clear, even with the gap on the five, the double seems fairly clear. And the take it have to think about the six point board, but it looks pretty good for contact. Okay, it's only twelve pips in the race now too. But okay, uh, Ronald's gonna wait. I think, I'm not sure if six checkers on the six is better or redistributing to the four. Neither looked very good, but your two to ace is going to be part of it. Awkward position for Ronald, but if he can hang on to the race lead and get home safely, he'll be doing great. Sixes is going to force both to go, and I think that gives Sean the racing lead too. He's going to take a moment to count it, and this should be an almost even game now. I remember Sean doing a lot of this to me too. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you win tournaments though i think for real you know i mean it's like poker talks about that a lot too it's you you can't get through a field like this without getting lucky at some point or many points um so when it's your weekend to roll well if you play well with it then you do pretty well and look at this um with this what is the raw count it's only three and a half pips that surprises me that that's enough for a cube already i wouldn't have thought to either but i guess all the wastage on the white side okay okay we can punish two pips for the checker on the ace. There's like nearly a gap on the five. Maybe we can find the cube there, but it's pretty borderline. And now he's rolled more pips, so the pip the the cube should be bigger. So I think he's gonna miss another opportunity to send here. What do we have here? Four three and okay, distribution getting a little better. I think has Ronald improved his position or not? This still feels like as we've gone down in pips and got more of a racing lead. That were probably doing better. Okay, he's only one pip ahead in the raw count. 
Well, I'll have to talk to Tar about the graphic on the top there because the EPC is pushing the regular graphic off. We can do things about that. But I love to see the EPC, the effective pip count. That shows you like a true measure of the racing lead as opposed to just the raw pip count. Um, you can learn about that in articles online and things like that. But it's a really, really handy metric for trying to figure out races in the end in the bear off like this. Especially as you get uh, later into the, the bear offs here. And having rolled a big set, I think the cube's going to come for sure. Probably good enough for a pass. And Sean should get off to a one point lead. Oh, thanks, Jill. Good to see you in the chat there. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Amir. Yes, for rooting for Sean. Okay. I'll let him know he had a fan. Poor Ronald, though. No one's rooting for him, huh? Hello, Germany. All right. Just a one point lead for Sean. Um, not enough of a match lead to really make any adjustments here. So. Um, Cube's going to act fairly similar. Unless we get to some really high recube kind of situation, then it can change a little bit. Or three. After the double sixes, I, yeah, slotting two points makes a lot of sense. Oh, this step up play is not something I'm looking for. But a lot of times, if we don't have better options, we don't mind playing something like 13 to 10 in front of the anchor and, and offering him the opportunity to leave it. What would we get on the transcription here? Okay. All caught up there. Well, thanks, guys. Yeah, this is a really nice, what do they call it? The Monte Parla, I think it's the Carlo Grand Prix board. Um, this board is going to go to the winner of the World Championship. It's a, a new board that, that Galaxy and FM Gammon have been producing. Um, and man, does it look beautiful. It's got those same matte finish checkers that the void boards got. Um, looks pretty classy on the stream here too, I think, but the wood looks really nice with it. And look at this. We got to a small pass already. I'm fairly familiar with these references too. Usually once you, after the opening double sixes, if you have a point and your opponent does not, those tend to be doubleable with a pass. As long as your opponent has a, a point too and is like kind of equal in board strength, they can take. And if you don't have a point, then you don't have a cube. Um, so Ronald correctly finds a cube, and we had a small pass for Sean. Maybe that actually could be slightly score-sensitive, too. Possible that an even score, it's a little bit closer. But should play very similar. Okay, and after being... That's six out there. Was he coming from the ace point? Looks interesting. I didn't see that uh, play very closely. But it, it seems like a strange down this much in the race, like a strange position to run in. So if I had a full 3-6 to play, or he was entering with a 4-6, then maybe that's his best 6 instead of breaking the 8. Um, interesting decision there. 5-2 for Sean. He's going to want to make a board point as soon as he can. And is it worth leaving the shot, though, when he's outboarded here? I think so. I think the, yeah, the, fifth, the five's going to come around. But allowing your opponent to hit and escape with tempo is a little bit concerning here. Hmm. That's a tough play to make. I'm not sure what I would do here. I might just play to the eight and But I guess if you're keeping him busy with something, maybe maybe somehow it keeps you from being blitzed. I don't really know. That's a very difficult play to make, but I mean he's really in a lot of trouble in this position regardless. Um so going for the board strength right away. Um, the 3-2, he would have hated to be there. This plays at least a little nicer, I guess. Oh, more decisions for Sean now, too. I think he needs to make his board before he hits anything. I don't think he can afford to use the ace to step up. I don't even know if it helps. So many numbers cover. Six isn't going to hit anyway, then. I got to learn how this Tempest clock works, too, because it looks like... I don't know if that's the clock itself or you just put your own cell phone in there or what. But that's a nice little like cell phone looking stand too. Oh cool. It looks like they get to hit the actual stand on it too to, to switch plays. So the clock actually like bounced back and forth too. 
All right, sixes is a great shot for Ronald. That's going to help him win a lot of gammons. That's like the the threat of the single checker back. If he gets closed out, he's going to lose a gammon a lot of the time. Got the Cuban in time and got taken. Um, so it's looking like a very likely four points for Ronald. Um, with 14 outside and eight is 22 and some kind of small, more crossovers than usual. Where would I guess this is in gammon territory? Probably getting close to 50% of the time with the closeout that he's going to win a gammon. We can see in the numbers on the plays here. Um, okay, it's closer to 60, actually. <laughs> You're having fun, huh? Relax. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gravity sensor used in the clock and the fun. Oh, that's so cool. That's clever. That's super clever. So it's a phone app that you just put in that station and then you bounce it back and forth. That's a lot of fun. Morning, Keen from Madison there. Oh yeah, it's early over there right now. My my uh, my laptop is still on on Wisconsin time, which is like six twenty a.m. What do we have with the? Was he forced to leave a shot somehow? Five four. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Clearing from the rear makes a lot of sense. And I think Sean's fairly happy to roll a six and start trying to save gammons here. Uh, waiting for the shot is going to lose a lot of gammons, but he could win. So, um, and and now Ronald's out on the outside. I think maybe I'm rooting to to fan one more time. There'll be quite a few. Okay, five one, worst entry. But now he's just trying to race off gammons. Fortunately, Ronald for him for Sean Ronald hasn't uh, taken too many checkers off. Has had to bury a lot to the deuce and the ace. And so it's a it's a fair fight for saving the gammon or not. Happens about half the time. Oh yeah, GL noticed that we got the error blunder right too. Yeah, yeah, that was throwing me off yesterday too. I think it's more helpful to see what the big ones are, and we're going through the match afterward, and yeah, we got that cleaned up. And what are we at here? Ronald needs three rolls on average. Get off and five crossovers for Sean. He's a roll behind. He's going to need a set. And he's going to need two crossers every time, and he doesn't get it here. So I don't think he can save the gamut anymore. I think that's it. Yeah, he realizes it. Spends the time to uh, calculate it. Oh, cool. We got the ad for the board up there on the top now. The Grand Prix. Uh, Mark says it like Grand Prix. <laughs> Confuse me for a second. <laughs> Those are cool though. I think I got to see some of these variations uh, when I was at the FM Gammon headquarters last time I was in Istanbul. And they're really beautiful boards, finding really nice woods to work with and make some like luxury versions of this idea. 5-3 is just going to make the three points. Nothing crazy to do here after the split. Oh, nice. We should add on to the Tempest clock to allow it to record matches, too. I like that. <laughs> That's an awkward angle. Okay, 2-1. After our opponent has made an anchor, we really need to make an anchor, so I, I'm thinking split somehow. Um, maybe we slot the ace with it? Sure, yeah. This looks good. We currently have the better board, too, so less risk than in a moment to split. 4-3 um, should make the best point available, I think. Even though it's not the right checkers, you really prefer to use something from the 6-point to make that, and that big stack is going to be a liability. And Sean gets to hit. Of course, he'll go for it, even though there's a blot on the 5 in returns. And, okay. Ronald's going to hit both of them, I think. Yeah, definitely one, and then he's going to look at whether he wants to make the ace or not. I think, oof, that's tricky. Well, that's a good heads-up play. I'm not sure I find that. Um, it looks so nice to unstack for the blitz. You put two in the air, you're going to have a lot of chances at getting that other checker anyway. So, okay, that makes a lot of sense. And I think he's pretty clearly too good now. Um, hard to imagine what Sean can roll to have a take in this game. Maybe a set to make an anchor. That would be very disappointing. But with three on the roof, I think Ronald's going to go for it for now, for the foreseeable future. 
Six four, great shot to take that checker off the deuce and and keep Sean dancing, prevent him from making anchors. Three entry, okay. Sean loves anything that enters. Three two, and Ronald loves anything that hits loose and and takes that anchor away. Inopportune fan, Ronald likely to win another gammon here. That's a good way to win a lot of matches too. Just to win gammons every game. They're both showing us their different styles of how they, they've been rolling well in this tournament. <laughs> Not noticing a ton of differences in play style so far. Obviously, Sean hasn't had a lot of decisions in this game, other than the split, which was right, I think, and got in trouble and got blitzed as a result, but still the right idea on average. Um, okay, 13 to 9 brings another builder, so we have a decision between 11 to 8 to get another checker aimed at the 4, or to prevent some serious anti-jokers and get the back checkers moving by coming off the 18. Both seem fairly reasonable to me. Um, I don't think any sets are going to make the point after that play. I probably would have found 11 to 8, but makes enough sense here. Okay, now he can afford to bring another builder in for the double threes to close out. Oh, he got double threes twice, but that seems fine. Sean's going to need to enter with double fours, I think, to save a gammon. Okay, looks like five down for a builder, and then 18 to 14 after that. Interesting that he finds 18 to 14 first. I think some people have some ideas that I don't about shuffling checkers in the outfield on the way home. Um, making sure all your sets play okay, that you're not going to leave any major anti-jokers. I tend to just think about the easiest way to close people out. 6-2, okay. Um, so the question is, do we need to close it or not to win? Okay, I, I kind of like the switch idea. Lifting's not too bad. The The liability of the open four for the rest of the game is going to be annoying. Generate some some wins and a few less gammons. But, okay, fives is perfect. Going to close it out. But he decides he doesn't want to leave the shot and deal with that potential problem. But I think you're just in the driver's seat to close out anyway, even when you get hit on the four point. Um, kind of similar, I don't know. If your opponent has a better board, maybe you can worry about it a little more. All right. He is incredibly likely to win a gammon if he can just bear off safely. So he's going to be prioritizing not leaving shots in this bear off um, rather than aggressively bearing off. And so he's nice and even on the outside, just like he'd like to be. A few backgammons in this position. Not too many, though. So we're talking about the new boards in the playroom, too. Yeah, they're pretty nice looking. You can see on... Not sure if Stream 2 is live right now, but it looks like we have one of the playroom boards on there. They're... What do they compare to? They're they're all FM Gammon stuff, too, but they're um, they're like a leather outlay foldable board. They're, they're pretty nice. They're like a huge upgrade from the plastic boards we had, like someone said, for sure. <laughs> Greetings from Berlin. I got to spend a day on the way here in in Frankfurt because my my flight got delayed and then I missed my connection and I didn't get to Nice until till Friday instead of Thursday. And Frankfurt was cool. I would go back there. I found some good coffee shops. Yep, easy gammon for Ronald in this one. And so he's going to be to a 6-1 lead. That is 5 away, 10 away. Um, that's a well, halfway through the match for him almost right off the bat. Quick start to this match. Six points in two games is tough. Well, if you haven't seen yet, and you have an iPhone, by the way, they uh, finally released the, the Galaxy app. You can check that out and start playing with it now. I'm sure there'll be bugs along the way as they figure that out, but it, it looks pretty nice. And I'm sure everyone's going to be asking about it as they go, too, but it's uh, it's like a new server, new app, everything, so it is the great reset. Your rating no matter matters, and you have to earn it again. So we're starting over on points. 
I'm going to have to go home and play a whole bunch of gamut, backgammon on there. Uh, it's not going to be released for Android until, I think, a week from now about or something. So maybe by the end of the tournament, next week, something like that. But it's available on the iPhone and the Apple Store. I think people are starting to wonder if that was ever going to happen. 6-1 makes a point. Nice start. Sean with this five-point deficit, if he can get into like a threatening gammonish position, he'll probably send the cube a little more aggressively. Um, I don't think it's... It's going to play fairly similar, actually, to to our crazy scores, like four-way, two-way, four-way, three-way, three-way, two-way, because the recube is just never happening. It's going to be very difficult for, for Ronald to send a four-cube five-away. It's too valuable of a, of a thing for, for Sean to hold. He anchors up here, and this is the, the kind of, like, one-way game where he might find a cube if, if Ronald can't anchor. Yeah, I think he's going to be stuck playing behind with this, and being ahead in the race, he's going to have a pretty simple take, but I think we could start to think about it there for Sean. Interesting. I'd like to see the cube action. Um, double ones is a very good shot for him, so this could be too much if... If uh, Ronald fans or enters poorly, like this having the ace point, I don't think this is. I think this is just going to be a, a fairly clear pass after this sequence. So if something this simple can happen and lead to to a cube, you have to let go. I guess double ace isn't that simple. Oh, we still have a take here at this score. Okay, okay. I would not be surprised to see a pass in like a very one way looking position like this, but. Again, it's it's not like the most sensitive scores quite, where I think we'd probably let this go at some of those, at like a four-way, two-way or something like that, just being so dominated. And he is going to take it still. Realizes that there's still match length to go. Not a ton of rolls that are going to develop Sean's position a lot either. Good find there. Four three plays into the six. Okay, yeah, Zob's other option was two down for building, but I don't know if it gets enough extra potential. Fly shots are pretty painful. I like that idea. Really needs to hit one of those checkers and keep Ronald from progressing to an anchor. Oh, and I think he gets to hit two here. This is a nice shot. And now he's in the blitzing game plan. Yeah, someone's asking the, the, the smartphone server is separate from the normal Backgammon Galaxy server. They're not doing anything to like bring ratings over. But also, some of the features to how the rating system work are a little bit different. So it's like a nice opportunity to reset and see how those ratings all play out. Um, I think it's only three, five, and seven point matches that are going to count towards your Galaxy rating now. Um, here, we have a decision here. We'll keep talking about that in a moment. Wow, what needs to go? Okay, we're going to cover with the 6 or 4, so we can either come out or come down. My first instinct was 13, 7, 6, 2. That feels pretty loose, but when you get away with it, it develops the best. Um, are we in... I think we're ahead enough to just leave, leave the anchor, though. So, like, covering from the 8 looks very nice for distribution, has the spares where you want, and then the 4 out duplicates a lot of entering numbers and hitting numbers. So I think I like this play in the end. This looks pretty good. Four down with it to build on that four point seems reasonable as well. But he can just make sure that he wins the race by coming out this way too. Um, so what are, one of the checkers from the back, I think, should be coming around. Something that bears on the four point. He's going to hit loose. Okay, hit loose on the ace makes a lot of sense. Continue the blitz. And if we do that, I think I, I like this idea of 13 to 7 to cover it. It's pretty loose, five blots around, but only a two point board. So I don't think you can get in too much trouble. Um, blitzes a lot of times like this, we want to be all in on the closeout. And he covers with a six for sure. Um, no deuce that does a whole lot. I'm not sure it actually helps us to break, um, the eight. We're at least blocking fours for now. Maybe I'd find 13 to 11 or any other two with it. Um, but of course, if you, you split eight to six, then you get four, two and twos to close out the bore and you only have fours and twos. It's only one more shot. Hmm. Yeah, I'd have a hard time finding eight to six here. I would for sure talk myself into any other play. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, so he's going to miss, same as last time, opportunities to play. It's a six then, apparently. Doesn't look like that much merit to it to me, though. Okay, now the, yeah, I think just getting a check around the 10 looks very nice. So however we do that is great. Okay, I think the 8 to 5 is interesting. He gets aces then. More numbers, too. It's starting to look kind of worth it. 6-3. Yeah, I guess just back to the from the back to the five seems fine. Nineteen to five. What else can we do? We, I really like keeping the checker on the ten. You like that that blot six checker or six pips away tends to build very well and have a lot of numbers that hit loose. And so there aren't really different plays once you get there. Um, if you play eleven to eight, you don't get a new builder, so you want to play eleven to five. No other three gets you new builders, so sure, we'll just work from the back. Oh, why aren't we streaming on Twitch? I don't know. Consolidation of channels, basically. I'm trying to have one place that people can go instead of being confusing in a different, different groups we're chatting with, stuff like that. YouTube works pretty well, though. It's been good for our streaming, anyway. Uh, what is he? Okay, he shifts off the 10 to 7. Interesting. Not sure what the idea of that is exactly. Maybe he doesn't want sixes to leave a blot on the four. Probably the idea. I never worry about that, and then it happens to me occasionally, and it hurts every time. Let's see. I think we can just bring a checker in here. Why not? Why not seven to six? We get the same number of builders whether we play eight to seven or seven to six. Um, but this way, we're one step closer to bearing off. I like that a little bit better. Or three, okay. Going to enter one, and if he can avoid being hit, then he'll have a chance to anchor up and maybe save some gammons, but still looking in tough shape. 6-5 only pays off to the double fours. We are going to leave the single shot, though. Um, so Ronald has a turnaround number now. 4-5, good enough. That's going to, like I said, allow him to clean up pips while Sean tries to bear off. Always frustrating when you can't complete the close out there, though. Okay, he's just going to roll a set of sixes, though, and probably win the gammon anyway. I think he's still a favorite to win it, but but Ronald's got some hope now. He's going to run one around and use maximum of his pips. Looks like almost a 50-50 gammon race after that roll. Okay. I think we need to pick in and pass here. I think taking the checker off the board is going to keep your opponent fanning a little more. I think... I wonder... I, I don't think it even wins more games to avoid the hit at this point, because your opponent could just enter higher on the six. Um... And they're going to be able to stay for the shot on the five point if you roll a six one five one four one next roll anyway. So there's sometimes there's value in just letting your opponent play and leave leave that position when they get forced to with a six something like that. But here I think the pick and pass just clearly wins more gammons at no cost. What up, Mate? Hey, what's up, Nick? How are you doing? I'm doing well. Do you have anything to do today? Recording matches at all? They won't be able yeah, to hear you if you're not like straight in here. Oh, cool. Everybody's talking about the 5k then. Okay, okay. 6 1, okay, so enters high and just going to save Gammons with crossovers the best he can, but Sean likely to get four points back and be in an almost even match again. This has been a swingy one. This could be over fast. 19 15, sure. Any four, I guess, yeah, it's a little more efficient with pips maybe to not go so deep. Takes the three for the crossover. I played Ronald uh, in uh, Las Vegas last November. It's a very decent player. Okay. Mate says he's nice. played Ronald and that he's a decent and nice player. Cool, cool. Nice gentleman. Nice, man. I didn't know he was in Vegas. Does he Does he live in the States or does he live in Brazil? I think he lives in Brazil. Okay, he lives in Brazil. But he travels to Vegas. That doesn't seem like a short trip. Oh, wow. Okay, we have only four or five crossovers to save the gammon. Maybe, I think he still needs a set, but he can get off this. There's hope. One, two, three, and then how do we get the most numbers from here? Do we need to fill in the five for double fives? I think, I think that seven to six makes a lot of sense. Oh, is this? No, if you're going to come ahead with two, then I think you got to stay on the ten to get double fives. Um... Yeah, actually, I think you can you can get fours here. This looks good. I really I think six to five has got to be part of it, though. 
Um, either six to five. Yeah, I like this. Or we can find some play that leaves three outside and includes uh, 12 to 10. But this should make most sets work. Okay, he rolls double twos and saves the gammon. Not going to matter. <laughs> or roll, hits the gammon. Cool. Six to five scoreline, Mate. <laughs> oh, someone arts is saying hi to you, Mate. Are the consolation bra brackets posted anywhere? I think they're in draw boss as well. I think so. Those links, I forget where they're posted, but they're posted somewhere for you to follow along. Probably on the Monte Carlo tournament page. Um, five away, six away. I don't think there's going to be any checker uh, adjustments, any cube adjustments, really, for the most part. It's one of those awkward scores, though, where, like, any adjustments that you would make are really technical, so I don't know them very well. I find them very difficult to remember. Ronald lives in Rio de Janeiro. Thanks. Okay. Good to know. I'll have to go visit. I've never been there. I assume I'm invited. Four, three. Okay. Um, yeah, I can hit twice for the Blitz after making the two point. Okay. Follows the theme. A lot of times I would have been thinking about splitting two. Ronald does well to enter both. Only eight in the zone is going to be tough to follow up on this blitzing idea for Sean. Let's see what he does with this roll. Making a point is very strong. And if Ronald's likely to hit or anchor, but if he fans, what do we have? Okay, never mind about that. Now Sean's got maybe a small pip lead, but is three checkers wasted behind? Okay, sixes is going to solve a lot of problems here. I think playing in front, you don't need to cover the ace. You need a landing point to bring that midpoint and anchor home as well. Um, got a clear lead in the position, but it's just the racing lead and it's going to be tough to bring home. So I think he's a ways off the cube here and already has an awkward number. Ooh, we want to, okay. We're out of direct range. Yeah. I was looking at this. Why not just, I think it was, he missed a good opportunity to just leave the 18 point there. A lot of times fives, you like to do that. All right. Oh, this is going to start to be a tell. Maybe Aviv is uh, missing the plays when they're not the recommended play by XG. 2-1, <laughs> going to make some board points. Very good. Very good. Oh, we got people watching from Sicily, too. Great. Welcome. Oh, 6-3 is perfected for clear in the midpoint, so his play worked out last time. Probably pretty happy with that result. And just will need to leave the bar point somehow now. Uh, fours is a little fast for Ronald, but he's still looking good with his contact. I think he's got a, I presume he's got to give up the midpoint here, and especially since he gets to make the five with it. And that's going to give Sean pretty free reign to the outfield, but the race is reasonably close now. And with the open five point, I think the contact's pretty good with a perfect board for Ronald as well. So I think he's going to have easy take, and I don't even think we have a cube really yet. But he's worried about breaking all this contact when he's down in the race, so he's looking for some other option. The thing about this is that he hasn't given up his contact, but when he does this, what's the contact worth? He can't really capitalize on a shot right now, and he kind of opens up the board in the game for, for Sean anyway. Uh, this is largely forced. I guess we could leave a blot in indirect range instead of direct range. Yeah, why not do that? Um, unfortunate shot for Sean, though. Definitely was hoping to just play something from the 18 point instead. Um, yeah, I'm really not sure why you would leave the direct shot instead here. Once he saw that it was an option. Five one, not a lot to do with that. Eight to two makes sense. Really wishes he had the board for this position that we've ended up in. And look at this. He can't even, if he... He has no way to, like, safely clean up the blot on the 7 without something else coming with it. So there is the 4. I think I agree with that. And then does he want to continue with one of those checkers? I guess just cleaning up a blot is probably worth the most. At least since Ronald's destroyed his board, if he gets hit, like, one of those checkers in the back gets hit, he should have plenty of time to enter on the 6 or the 5 and just kind of escape that way. He's really mostly hoping that just, I guess, both getting hit is pretty bad. 1-4. Do we even hit this? 
Our play B is not going to be to leave a bunch of shots. Yeah, he can come control the outfield with with 22 to 19 here and make his board. And I don't really see what's going to punish that other than like even five shots aren't so bad. But this just because it has to kill a checker. And it still leaves a shot on the ace against a better board than we have. It didn't feel like time to to take that risk. Sean still had two blots to bring around too. So we've got time to deal with it. 6-5 links up. That's a very nice shot. And a uh, big racing lead too. I think he's going to have to think about the cube next roll. And Ronald's going to have a difficult decision about taking your passing. What can he do to keep himself in the game here? I don't think... See, now if we come out from the 22, we're leaving a direct shot. So I think he's reduced to just breaking the midpoint can't play contact plays like you did before and this looks like a pretty easy ride home for sean huge racing lead and even if he gets hit he has so much chance of just entering hitting another blot that i i, I would struggle to take this as as ronald and it's pretty close and he snaps it up quickly so okay i can see ronald must um doesn't value the purity of his board as much in these games that, that must be a he did like to be able to make a, the double fours play that he did, I guess he's he's seeing that there's still going to be good contact for him either way, and now he's willing to take this cube in this spot too. Um, so cool, finding something out about his like strategic thinking about about these positions. Can expect to see more of that. Someone asking if we have admin or mods. Yeah, naked HD XYZ is uh is our admin. They're on the team. Okay, now can we afford to... Oh, I do like XG's play there where we slot the six instead. But I guess this play makes more blots, but I'm, I'm inclined to start a point. Yeah, I think uh, eight to five makes a lot of sense if you're going to play the ace to cover. Um, we really... I mean, we just need a better board for the contact, but he's still relying on a perfect four-point board. He's thinking he's going to get the fly shot now, potentially, and wants to be ready for it, not having to deal with... A blot and board. Okay, the phone should be pressed into the stand instead of resting on the stand. So right now it's just resting on it? Okay, maybe we'll fix that between games. So it shouldn't be as wobbly. That's really clever though that it's an app that runs that way too. 5-2, what do we do this? We can't get either of our back checkers to safety. How frustrating is that? So if we're going to play a five, we're going to leave a direct shot. I don't think that seems bad. So what is our our bold play, I guess, is probably just 10 to five and then 14 to 12. And that doesn't always clean up and things like that. So can we afford to play like clearing the six, though? I'd have a, a very difficult time doing that. I think it's going to give you problems leaving later. Your opponent still gets a bunch of fly shots, so I probably just go for the thing that I think is going to get me closer to home. Very tricky play, though, and just frustrating to get something that doesn't do anything you want. Um, I guess there's another direct uh, shot lever option of 14 to 7. It seems like it must just leave more shots and have less upside. I'm not sure why you wouldn't use the deuce to come closer, but it must reduce shots somehow, I guess. Probably what he found there, just a 6-5, and if he comes down... It's going to be 6-3 and 5-4. Okay, but he rolls a 6-5 and hits, and now he's got some chances. Hasn't caught up in the race yet. 6-2. Okay, that's going to hit and, and keep Sean well in the lead. There's no way to not deal with another blot. You're leaving a shot either way, so you might as well put your opponent on the roof and let them fan. Okay, we'll get that clock fixed too soon. 4-3 is going to hit. Okay. Ronald's performing. Might be able to come back in this still. Just keep the checker moving to avoid being hit again. And a fan, this could be enough. Now Ronald's got two checkers back and the racing lead. And it is, yeah, the question is almost too good here. When he sends it, he's going to make his gammons not worth a lot. And Sean's got to figure out if he wins this game enough with contact. But being on the roof, down in the race, your board is all messed up now too. So even if you hit a shot, it's hard to win when you're five and three-pointer open. So I, I expect he'll find a pass here.
So I think he's counting the race right now to figure out exactly how much he's down. He was ahead enough in the race. I wonder if he'd want to take it. I, I think he's going to have to go through numbers and how they're going to play as well. There's, of course, a lot of fives and twos that are going to pick and pass. And that's going to really kill his chances. When he doesn't do that, he's just ahead in the race too. So yes, yes, finds the pass there, realizes he's lost it. And three away, six away. This is definitely a score we're going to adjust at. Ron's going to have to get aggressive with the cube again. Ronald's going to have to pass early. Ronald's going to have a very difficult time finding a good cube at this score. Yeah, tough sequences for Sean there, for sure. Six four after the point and and trailing the match, yeah, making the two point and going for the blitzing structure makes a lot of sense here. Um, and look at this, I would have thought after the two point, maybe I wouldn't be inclined to split there and play into my opponent's game plan. But having the three points good enough to to go for that, Ooh, we might have had Wilson go in there and fix the clock. Someone said something about that. Four three anchors up. That's uh, best case scenario for Ronald. Playing a nice, uh, safe anchor game at a score like this is exactly what you're hoping for. Just gambling on one or two points and trying to not have to worry about a gammonish game at all. Or three, presumably just two down? I'm surprised, I guess, outboarded you. See, I had enough in the race to, to play stiff? That's very strange looking to me. I don't know, uh, I don't know why I would play to the six. I would, I would play two down and look for the building potential. Try to improve my position and get the race home. Um, but he finds the six play. Too many fly shots against a better board, I guess, would be the idea for the other side. Six four, what can we do as Sean now? He's going to run all the way with a slight racing lead. That's almost surprising, too. I guess we have no other productive four is the problem. But playing for contact seems like an option, too. But really, getting away with the pips is very nice when the race is really close like this. So balancing game plans there for sure. And Sean's achieved an anchor, too. So they're going to be in a nice even game now. Even race again. Look at that. We could link from the 21, but it feels a little premature against 9 in the zone and a 3-point board. Um, so I think he's just got to play safe. Both their positions are going to naturally roll forward through those anchors, and if someone can roll a set, they'll have the clear advantage in the game. No reason to give your opponent an attacking game plan, though, when you have an anchor already twos with the racing lead he's going to look for a way to break contact with that so i think he could think about just all the way to the nine but maybe making some board points is a little better sure it's uh in a mutual holding game like this it's unlikely that he's going to get through the game without without some contact so making a board is pretty valuable as well um awkward roll for sean i don't know where i want to play this with a blot and board we can leave some indirects so 13 to 11 is an option, but our four doesn't look all great that great with it. This play duplicates some covering threes and stays nice and pure. Forces our opponent to leave a lot of shots if they do hit from the anchor. So nice find being trailing in the race to, uh, to volunteer and get yourself a little bit of a structural advantage, not play like an ugly four to the deuce or the ace there. And the follow-up, not great. I think now it's going to make some sense to play behind. We don't have to play as ugly. Yeah, starts the point that we want to. No dice on checker in this tournament. So they're going to be re-rolling those. 3-4. Something's got to go. And nice two duplication there too. It can't be the anchor quite yet. The contact's still too good. Leaves a ton of shots. So clears his 11 point. Like the play. Back and forth with these decisions where uh, we have this 13 to 8 option and then where's your ace? It's not very good. I guess just to the 12 probably. Then our other option is going to be 8 to 3 and leave a direct, which we don't get as many returns on anymore. Um, he's going to find the lift with it, which is a little too impure. You want the board later. I'm, I don't think you really reduce shots much. Yeah. He didn't. 6, 2, and 5, 3. He plays down. So it's better to just stay pure outside. When I play 13, 8, 3, 2. Yeah. You sure? You got it? All right. Little transcriber catch up again. 
Uh, it wasn't a 6-2. It was something else. Oh, no, no. It was a 6-2, and he makes the point, yeah. You played a 6-2. We good? Yeah, yeah. You play 4-1? Four 4-1. One. Four one. Sorry. And what did Ari roll here? 4-1 is just going to clean up the blot. Oh, wow. Look at this. I wasn't thinking about this at all. Being down in the race, he wants to stay outside for contact. Wow. If he finds his play, this is pretty sharp and heads up, I think. 13-8 I, uh, feels very natural, but you're using your checkers perfectly for contact to just make the ace instead. And he's going to find that play. That's pretty good. I don't know if I would have found that. It's hard to just volunteer the nines. Fours is going to leave a shot. This is not a good roll. Yeah, I don't see the value in leaving the checker outside instead of inside other than maybe you save a six for coming off but it creates an additional roll okay they're pretty close they're pretty close i don't think that's going to be with the huge racing lead and an anchor for ronald i don't think this is good enough to cube or anything like this he goes with the saving a six idea that's interesting pretty cool fine but sean's going to think about it at the score the the thing here is that when he rolls a deuce he's going to be doing really well and when he doesn't though he's going to have very good contact with the pure board for the rest of the game and it's a fairly clear cube. Wow, that's very surprising to me. I'd have a hard time finding this too. Um, mostly a score thing. So I think he can just release contact from the anchor now and go for outfield coverage. Maybe keeping one back to cover is reasonable as well, but you give your opponent pick and pass twos. 6-5 uh, gets there after this play too, so there's a little bit of that problem. Okay, Ronald just cleans up his blot. And without the shot, I don't think this is enough anymore, so he doesn't think about it. Make a blocking point seems very strong here now. And then your best distribution three. I think staying back is pretty important. You don't want to let your opponent roll something that that escapes to freedom without a, a shot. So I think I like the 8-5 to five a little bit better there. Three one. What is 4-3 going to do now? I think we got to keep all the checkers live, so we're probably just playing 12-5, to five, but definitely would have hoped for something more than this. Making a point behind is fine. Making the bar point is fine. Double twos. Is this position falling apart enough for Sean to send a cube yet? I mean, most of the gammons are, are gone. He's going to keep rolling, okay. Yeah, he's got a huge pass now. Maybe he's thinking too good. I don't know. I kind of doubt it, but yeah, there's a huge risk now of having to come out with a 3 or a 5 and getting closed out and actually losing a gammon in this spot. Um, prevented a lot of pips from happening on his turns. Let's see what Sean wants to do with this now. And continue to roll. Keeping high numbers blocked still feels pretty important, but we don't have much of an option there. Maybe we're playing, yeah, just shifting both. 8 to 6, just bring that in. Okay, that's an interesting play too. I'll probably find the 9 and 7 like Sean did here. Excited. <laughs> <laughs> Ronald prefers that he left the double fives for him. Okay, Sean's going to send this cube, and we'll see if uh, Ronald knows it's a pass now that he's been stuck for a few rolls. No. Okay. Exit. He does. Okay. Going to let it go at the score. I haven't seen any live chat in a while. I bet my internet connection is busted. Might try to refresh that quick. But okay, what is the scoreline now? Five-way, three-way, a little bit more normal of a... What do we want to call it? Like uh, the kind of aggressive score cube situation that we're used to. Well, there we go. No, people just haven't been writing in the chat. Okay, I see a high mail. Got it. So typically in the opening, yeah, okay, at the leading score, you just hit from the 13 with the 5-1. At trailing scores, you can start to think about hitting loose on the ace too, but typically not the right idea. 
Two one. Do we need to split here? Trailing? Maybe not. Opponent's got another checker in the zone. We can just anchor, play down, play for offense. I like this play. Your opponent has more of a blitzing structure than a priming structure, so I split into it. Two one's gonna make the five. Great shot from Ronald. Um, Sean, a lot of the time we're able to respond similarly by making the five as well. What is he? he wants to think about the bar point. Um, surprised he's going to look at this play and split instead. Uh, maybe it's a score idea that he's thinking about here, but usually in the opening, you know, the better distribution you get out of making the five point is extra important here, but also it's just a better point. You almost always make that over the seven point. You got to split with it though, so maybe that's part of it. Four three is going to make the bar. Okay, nice structure for Sean. Clearly leading this game, but his opponent has an anchor, so he's not going to have too much of a threatening cube. Just not enough gammons to really make things change a lot. 2-1, your opponent has an anchor, so you need an anchor yourself. You are splitting at least the 22, maybe all the way to the edge. Depends if you see this as a priming or attacking uh, threat more. And I think the threat of your opponent just rolling a 4 to make the 9 is bigger. So, yeah, I like his stepping up all the way to the edge and making a fight for the 21 point. And Ronald dominating this game, even at the score, is going to think about the cube a little bit, or pause to think about it. And this this roll is going to translate his position into a blitz now, or an attack. Could still be a prime later. But he's going to give up his priming point of the 7. Check around the 24, sees the light. And on a fan... He's going to be dominating this game. I think we might have cube action. Um, this is... This, I'm not... The thing about this, it doesn't really keep both game plans open. It keeps you, like, not focused effectively on either. Where I think, I think the play where you just make the four point keeps Blitz and Prime open most effectively. Um, blitzing by hitting loose on the deuce while keeping your Prime... You're not really achieving the best of either world by doing this. Though it might feel like it keeps your, your prime intact at least. Um, but you still have like a gap for a prime. Okay, I think he's going to find the right play here. But just looking over his options. And you just don't like to give up the 7. Maybe he really likes the 7 point. That could be a piece of his game. Since he did make that early on too. And on a fan, I yeah, I think the cube is coming even at the score. Look at that. It's a tiny bit early and I think it's still going to be a very difficult pass for Sean. Or take for Sean, sorry. And he just insta-passes it, even at the score. This is a, a score play lesson for sure there. At those three-away scores, when there's Gammons present and still game to go, um, a lot of times you just have to take and, and play those out, hope for the best, hope to get to a recube. This is an opportunity there. Oh, people are focused on the game instead of uh, talking to me, I see. The blunder. Enters and covers. Looks like a pretty strong response from Ronald. Yeah, the four prime doesn't seem like so much when your opponent's anchored at the edge of it is the problem. That can be uh, a tough one, but that 8-7-6-5 formation, even in front of the 21 point, is a lot stronger than it might intuitively seem to, to a lot of players. So unless you've studied that quite a bit, uh, easy to undervalue the strength of that, I think. But again, I think that was a fairly clear money pass. Maybe not super clear. Close enough. And I think it's just tough to see that, that you need to translate that into, uh, into a take at the score. It just looks bad either way. Interesting here. Yeah, the when he steps up to the 21, he's kind of voluntarily priming himself a little bit. So there is some better play there. But I've... Instinctually, it makes a lot of sense, too. Trailing in the match score is a huge argument for just making an offensive play instead, though. Um, four is, yeah, probably just going to run for lack of a, a better option here. Making the nine primes nicely and volunteers, sure. They both look pretty good. Maybe leading in the score, I'd be inclined to make a simpler play that doesn't risk a shot. And the ace is going to hit on the 12, okay, and continue. And... Ronald being two away, five away, once again, going to have a lot of trouble finding a cube, but in a relatively simple holding game like this, that can happen. Certainly can, and it's not like Sean can just take anything and re-whip the cube because he doesn't even win the match on it. So a lot of times it's better to just go for the Crawford game. 
Um, so again, Ronald finding himself in the kind of position he wants in this leading score line. Uh, he's going to want to get a checker moving ideally from here. And sure, he's going to leave some shots, but just going to come out and do that. Trailing in the race, though, he does need to fix that issue, but double sixes are going to be a problem for Sean being stuck back on that 21 point. His position is deteriorating rapidly. Even with a, like, uh, a huge racing lead, he's a slight underdog after this roll. That's impressive. And instead of pairing the checker, he should volunteer a shot. That's pretty surprising, too. And Ronald, with no points yet, is leading this game. So I think he's just going to focus on containment here, I think. So I, instead of giving up any piece of his prime, I think just coming out from the 20 to 16 with two of them makes a lot of sense. The rest of it, I'm not sure. The unstacked to the... Oh, he has six checkers on the six. Okay. It's a little awkward to think about not making some board points. This seems reasonable, too. How bad can making the five point ever be? But you do open up fives to run, double fives to escape for the race. Um, so a few small problems there. I think I like keeping the prime when you're still down in the race, though. Let's see, he's down 20 pips after this play. And I think that's your big hint to to keep the nine point intact. <laughs> Am I getting photo after here? Hello. Hi. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Double threes. Oh, what a shot for Sean. Semi escapes uh, the prime, becomes a favorite again. Really about the best role he could ask for. And I think Ronald's still going to have plenty of contact here to play this out. But, uh, oh, he can block the sixes now, too. Extend his prime. What a awkward, like, that's so strange to make the midpoint here and have that be priming someone. But okay, a little bit for everyone in this position. We're just going to make the, make the next board point in the four. I think. Oh, look at What is this? Just going for distribution and racing value. Yeah, I guess there's some logic to that, given that um, Sean's not really playing for the contact. He just wants to escape and win the race with this big of a racing lead. Double sixes is going to solve a lot of that, but still down eight pips in the race afterward. Ronald needs to find a play that maximizes contact. That's probably still clearing from the rear and making 10 to four. Um, maybe he makes two board points, actually. What's wrong with that? Can we just make the four and the three? That is a sizable error here. I'm surprised. Yeah, the fly shots with such a good board. Okay, okay. I can see this. So he keeps the ten to keep the most contact as well. Threes. Okay, he's very glad about his play now. Since Sean is stuck on his anchor and can't advance. And I think this is the best he can make of it. Oh, look at this. He should shift five to two and save some sixes. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. These are tricky tactical plays they're making relatively quickly. I think this is just going to... Oh, wow. See, again here, I'd just be inclined to play inside the board. I don't think six to one is so bad. I'd love the two to six to four. Um, but giving up the ten and letting your opponent roll the three is okay now. Very interesting. Six one. Okay, Sean saved one of those. So this is going to play itself. And once again, Ronald taking over this, this game with the purity and the contact. Even though Sean has a giant racing lead, this, I think, is just going to clear the 10. Slots the 5 point and prepares to make the best board for contact later when Sean has to leave the 18 point. This prioritizes keeping deeper contact, but you can see Ronald's position is inflexible to... To really deal with playing this way. He might have a hard time clearing the 10 and volunteer a shot he doesn't want to next roll. Um, things like this. 5-4. So does he want to advance both of them or get one all the way to safety? Uh, advancing both is going to reduce shots. It's going to keep it down to the minimum of 20. And usually you'll escape one of those checkers anyway, even if one of them's hit. Uh, yeah, so I think this makes a lot of sense. When you keep one back... A double shot, six and three, is going to be way more than 20 shots. And Ronald going to think about the cube real quick. Hits. Got to start there. And then the three down. Okay. And on a fan, I think he's going to have to play this game on. Ace four is pretty good. That Does that bring a checker around the bend to reduce shots or just try to escape? I'm probably just trying to escape here. 24 to 20.
Ronald needing a two from the bar. Um, a six five is good enough. I think that's gonna hit loose and go for wins. Wonder if he didn't see that right away. Even at the score, I think you have to try to to take this game over this way. And a fan, inopportune fan. And this is the kind of scenario I was thinking of where I think this is a very difficult game to cash. Maybe he's got enough wins to do it here. But the thing about it is that a lot of the threat of this position is that he can still win a gammon. He picks up that second checker after covering the five point. And so the threat of those gammons is just completely gone at the score. Um, so yes, it is too good. Too good to double. The four, I would come out and see that checker in the outfield and try to pick it up, I think. 10 to 6 to attack the ace is an idea as well. Four, three fans, okay. And Sean in some trouble of potentially losing the match in this game if he can't anchor, enter well, avoid that other blot being picked up. This is a start. One more miss. I think, um,. Yeah, I like this 12 to 6 to focus on closing out, and then 10 to 8 just gets a checker closer to home. And otherwise, we're trying to keep contact between the, the blot on the 15 and the blot on the 11. Double aces, just out of reach, but he gets to make his board. Well, he's going to advance two of them for sure, 14 to 12, and then he can reduce one shot, or he can cover. And I'm inclined to cover and just have a board prepared in case our opponent hits loose. Uh, Gammon's diminishing quickly, but wins are still really great here. So maybe Ronald can think about cashing this game now. I think Sean still has a fairly normal take point, too. Um, given that he's not winning Gammon's of his own. And yeah, just slightly too good. But cashing's not too bad at this score, either. Uh, hitting loose for sure. Yeah. And you can see the wins dropped quite a bit. The Gammon's didn't too, do too much. So not the role that Ronald was hoping for. Um, ooh, and Sean's gonna come back and hit two. What a shot. And now I think he's going to have a cube, almost certainly. I don't think this is too good when you're stuck behind a 5 prime with only a 5-point board that can crack yourself. Last ace, either way. Not sure I see a big difference. Could this be too good? What is going on here? I, I, would, I can definitely imagine how we lose this game, so I'm thinking about sending the cube, and I, I'm not 100% certain that the gammon threat's probably enough at the score where maybe Ronald has to let this go. For money, would I take this, though? Wow. This is very difficult. And, okay, finds the snap take at the score. Nice job there. Only 14% gammons, yeah. Hard to win a lot of gammons given that you might not always win the game by rolling a 6. And even when you do, you don't have a closeout. So Ronald can continually just roll a 6 and enter... And the cap on a closeout is still like, I don't know, 40% gammon, something like this. So, okay. Nice cube action from both. What a turnaround on those double aces. That was something. Entering with the six for Ronald is very strong here. Sean looking for a pick and pass to keep him dancing. And doesn't get that. He's going to enter both checkers at least. I think maximum safety here. Yeah, playing in and keeping the outside even makes a lot of sense. And difficult to win a gammon for Sean now, especially when Ronald enters with a six. Okay. So we're almost certainly going to a three away, two away score line here. Unless something crazy happens with the dice, we could still go to the Crawford game. You never know. Yeah, three one's a good start for that. Wow, what a swinging game this was. Looked like the match could be over pretty easily. And Sean found an opportunity in aces from the bar to turn the game around quickly and be playing for a gammon after cubing. Getting taken as well. Really good stuff. That's going to save all the gammons. Could potentially win too. I shouldn't rule that out. I, I've probably seen crazier than that gammon. <laughs> that would hurt on Sean's side though for sure. To we'll lose the game from here. Oh, XG says 100%. Is that right? Could be right. Could be so unlikely. Oh, we're into the most difficult part of the, the bear off or the transcriber for sure. Seven to three, two off. I don't think he found it. Yeah. Nope, he keeps switching it the wrong way there. 
Now we'll get caught up here. This is not the play he made, but I guess... So it's not a UBC format or anything. It's just for our benefit. So I don't know. If they don't get it quite right, it doesn't matter. As long as we can get the score right and not mess up the match there. You sure? Yeah, maybe he'll just let him resign the game after this or something. That's fine. Double six, double five, double three. I can see it. He can do it. it yeah? Come on, even I will applaud if you manage it. Oh. He cannot do it. <laughs> oh, it's calculation. Okay. It's going to work out for the transcriber here. We'll just throw some random shots in there and get back on, on track. And here we are, three-way, two-way now. This is definitely one of the, the most aggressive scores. I get to do a lecture tomorrow morning on this here in Monte Carlo, and I've written a book on it now. I have no idea when that will be published. But, um, yeah, three-way, two-way, just any small advantage, and the cube will be coming from Sean as long as there's gammons in the position. If Ronald can anchor up early, he's going to take away most of that gammon threat. So that's a huge... Something that he'd really like to do. Escaping is pretty good, too. So big priority for him. Great return shot from Sean. Once again, any any roll that anchors for Ronald is, is massive at this score. This is pretty good as well. Hitting and making the five point. If he can stay in the lead, then Sean's not going to have anything to think about. Um, yeah, I can't imagine entering on the 24 and putting that third checker back just to make the 10 point. I don't think it's quite strong enough. So any play that split seems pretty strong to me. Uh, I missed an opportunity to really go for it and slot the five though. Um, gets rewarded with pointing on head. Okay. Ronald at two away, three away. Again, is going to be in one of those situations where if gammons are at stake, He's going to cancel them by sending the cube, so he's going to have a lot of incentive to just play this game out early. But if he can get to the late game, Sean has 25% match equity if he just passes this game. He actually has to pass a little bit earlier in just a late game race or something like this. 1-3 is going to enter and split, I presume? The hit for tempo is an option at this score. I think probably not so much for money because of how many gammons it loses. Um... It doesn't look like it's preventing enough. I guess you're going to leave a shot either, either way is a problem. You're leaving a direct six, fours to hit, so... Yeah, why not go for it? Maybe this is a fine normal score play, too. I like the find, after all. Unstacks as well. You just hate leaving that checker on the 24. Nice return from Ronald to hit the blot and board. And setting a fourth back now. Three six is a fan. Okay, and this is the kind of game I'm talking about where maybe we'd think about a cube for money, but we're going to have nothing to think about at the score. The... The value of this position is mainly the gammons that's going to win. 2-1. Uh, oh, wow. I would... Okay, he can do both. He can play the 8-6 to six distribution and make an anchor. Um, and now, if anything gets turned around, too, he's got that. And Ronald will be in this game till the end pretty easily. This, I think, is going to take a checker off the, the 21 and bid for an anchor. He's going to clean up a blot instead, though. Okay. I'm not sure why he needs to go for this. I think his best hope is to form a back game at this point. He should be trying to go for wins. This is a lot of fly shots. It's a little stiff to play down to the 8, though, especially in case he does make that second anchor. Maybe he's thinking he'd like to make the 23 instead of the 21 and make the 1-2 back game. That could be part of what uh, made that decision last time. Yeah, the 3 down and step up now, so he's going to go for the higher anchor this time. There's not enough racing deficit to necessarily play a 1-2 game here either. Loose hit looks strong. You really don't want to let your opponent just make that for free, especially since we can cover the point six away. And Ronald's in a really great game at 3-away, 2-away here. Happy to be playing against so many checkers back with an anchor like this. 3-2 doesn't do much and is going to give Sean a chance to make that really important 21-point anchor. That's a huge step in his game if he can advance up there. Double fives is the opposite of what he was looking for almost. Um, I guess for lack of many other options, maybe it's going to make the three point behind? There's just nothing. Can it make the ace along with it? I guess the, the 21 to 11 is the first thing I see, but it just looks so awkward. You don't like making points behind the anchor. But I think just pointing on head is like the best thing... 
that you have available in this position. What else do we have? We have 21 to 11 and then 6 to 1 with both. Could be a constructive play that keeps everything in place. But letting your opponent just roll here looks pretty bad as well. Oof. Not a lot of good options here. And so these are some of the hardest plays for me, too, is picking from a bunch of things that you don't want to do. I like this pointing on the three to start. I really feel like this is maybe the most productive of options available at this role. And getting a checker to safety is actually very hard for me to find because I want to advance the 21 so badly. But even when I do with, with four checkers back, I guess I have a lot of problems being primed with not enough timing. So that makes some sense to just get the mobility and hope to split to the bar or the 21 later. I like Ronald's play here, just keeping his anchor and keeping the back checkers moving. Just wants to get that, that third one going and keep all of his points. The 11 point is the next to go for builders if he gets the opportunity. Six feels like mandatory... 24 to 18 here. But then you can't clean up the blot. Is he that worried about being hit that he needs to make the deuce? Well, I don't think I'd find that either. This is a very difficult play. I just want to get the checker moving from the 24 so much that it feels like the biggest liability. But he finds a good play in cleaning up the blot and making another board point. And Ronald's got an easy play in just hopping out there. Sixes is massive. Wow. It's going to come out and hit. What a turnaround here. <laughs> wow. He's going to look at, oh, he could hit and make the five too. How many options do you have? But just getting past all this structure is too big. I don't think that making the five point when your opponent's anchored is nearly as important as making that bar point anchor. But if he's going to think about both, I think he really needs to think first. I think the hit is probably the first thing we need to do, right? Am I crazy there? And then we come out with the other part. The hit in 11 to 5, is that a candidate? It might be better. I don't know. Okay. This. What is Ronald going to do with this? He either has to give up a point and leave a direct shot from the bar point anchor or come out and leave a double shot. I think keeping the structure feels a little stronger down in the race this much. So I'm just coming to the outfield. I think why not just play... Do the 16, leave a 3 and a deuce. You still have a bunch of points open. Yeah, that's the checker you want moving. And after that massive turnaround shot, Sean's got something to think about with the cube. But in a holding game, there's not that much gammon threat or anything like this. So I would wait. And I'm surprised to see it's as close as it is, actually. Um, okay. Now that he's got the racing lead, too, he's just looking for ways to bring this home safely. So, so cleaning up 12 to 11 and playing 6 to deuce is an option now. Um... It can be hard to think that way after you've been in this game where where you're just looking for some sort of second anchor or contact and never expected to just be ahead in a holding game. So if he can adjust and find what the pip count is pretty quickly, I think he has a chance of finding this 12 to 11, 6 to 2. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him make uh, more pure play than that, though, given how the game has gotten here. Okay. Good find, good kind, fine. <laughs> I like the just no understanding he has t-shirts. I want one of those. Simple plays, cleaning up. Okay. Oh, double fives is going to do it. We talked about this in the first game, right? This is uh, a prime strategy. Throwing sets to uh, get yourself out of positions like this. I think 18 to 8 around makes a lot of sense. He maybe fears creating another point to have to clear later. Um, but he does still have to clear that midpoint if he keeps it. So I don't think it helps to, to just go for this instead. And it's going to help you clear the 11 safely. So yeah, just get him closer to home. But I, I think I get the idea. It brings two checkers in, keeps all of the points out of direct contact. And with this huge racing lead, he must feel like he's getting close to a cube. Doesn't feel like he has enough market losers with those five checkers outside uh, to bring home. Let's see what he goes for here now. If he didn't want to make the 8, I'll be surprised if he wants to make the 9 with the midpoint. Um, so what's better, though? After you, If you're going to make the 9 point either way, would you rather shift 11 to 9 or 13 to 9? Maybe that's a way that he can find it. 
There aren't really other options here, though. He's going to be forced into one of those. I guess what he could make the he could stack them all on the eleven and play three to ace. I think that's going to look a little too stiff for him or stiff for him. Yeah, he really doesn't want to make a point in direct contact with that anchor that he has to clear the later, though. You can see that that's his dilemma here. Um, oh, I guess you could just play 11 all the way to the 3 is some sort of option as well. Um, but yeah, you can tell that he's just looking for any other choice other than to having to make the 9 point, even though that's XG's preferred play by a long shot. And he does find 11 to 3 afterward. Okay. We can see his strategy for sure in this one. And yeah, I like Ronald's idea there. That's my instinct to start to make a point too. But playing a checker in and being ready for a fly shot that he might get right away, very reasonable as well. Tactically, you got to watch out for those. If you think you're going to get your shot now, it can be a liability to have a blot on board. I tend to make that mistake a lot. This is just going to make the five. He's going to be happy to make that point. Doesn't look like a point to clear anymore. Makes a landing spot. 4-1, okay. Makes a board point. And now, yeah, fairly easy racing claim. We're going to go on to 2 way 2 way which is a DMP game. Wow. Great comeback from Sean. He has been on the ropes in a, in a number of scenarios here and just hanging on. Um, playing a pretty strong game, too. Ronald been playing great, but hasn't had a lot of options in the last few games. Five two. I think I always get confused if we want to bring the two down to contain, or if we want to split after our opponent runs with six five. But he finds the containment. You love to have that checker on the eleven to keep your opponent from running with some sixes quite as easily, getting double shots. And yeah, two way, two way. The cube is automatic. You can just play DMP instead. Uh, you can optionally wait, but you might lose your market. Um, no sense in waiting and thinking about gammons. And so a blitz, not the winningest play, but the best he can do with this. Uh, keeps keeps Sean from developing his position as well. With all those checkers around, threatening to build. And so it's in pure and difficult to bring home. But he's only got a single checker back too. So without the, the option to anchor, this can work pretty well, this blitzing game plan for Ronald. Fours. For Sean, likely makes the five and attacks on the deuce. So he's got a bit of a blitz for himself. A little bit more pure position, though. What is he in? He's going to think about whether there's some other, like, more racing-oriented option, I suppose. I guess that would be just 13 to 5 on its own, or maybe 8 to 4, 6 to 2. I'm not sure. Yeah, that blitz isn't any better. So I think, I think he's going to find his original play. I, I don't really see a play B here. Uh, people asking when the final will start. So the winner of this match is going to play at 3.30 local time, which is, uh, I think it's 2.30 now, so an hour from now, roughly. And Ryan Rebello is the winner of the semifinals on the other side of that bracket. So the winner of this gets to play the young phenom. Had a pretty good match yesterday against uh, Raymond Lightborn. That was exciting stuff. That was our first stream of the weekend. And we're going to be here for a whole week from right now. I'm <laughs> just realizing that. This is the most streaming I've done for a while. The, the schedule is pretty lax here. So I'm not sure if we'll be on like 24 hours a day or anything like that. Typically, the main event only has two matches a day. That's always a nice thing about playing at Monte Carlo as well. Um, but tons of backgammon action to come. This is just the, the first warm-up tournament that started two days ago. And we just got the stream up and running yesterday. After a lot of setup and planning. 4-1 after, so the fan from Sean was nice for Ronald, of course, but this doesn't do a whole lot. We can't get either of the back checkers moving with the racing lead, which would be our strong preference. So either we're going to leave a whole bunch of shots from the bar when outboarded, or we just reduce shots by playing 11-6. to six. I think this makes some sense. The 5-1. I guess 6-5 to five is all you can do with that. Sean would have loved to enter and hit and go for some sort of turnaround here. Doesn't get the chance. Ronald's got a lot of pointing numbers, pick and pass, anchoring numbers. 5-2 doesn't do many any of those. Wow, what can we do with this? We can... We could get a back checker running and have to leave a bunch of directs. 
Is it worth duplicating fours to play 21, 16, 11 to 9 here? My first instinct is to just play 11 to 6, and then we could step up 24 to 22. But that must actually leave a lot of numbers that get attacked, so... Just playing behind is an option too? Okay, okay. I like that. Lots of tactics late in the game like this. Um, I think being down in the race, Sean's just got to go for a hit. Just got to find some way to hit 8-4. to four. Um, Maybe your best 5 with it is to bring another checker down. Then when you get hit, you have the chance of anchoring on the 20 as well. So we kind of like that checker parked where he was. Um, otherwise, 20-15 to 15, when you're missed helps capitalize on the race the most, probably, by getting that checker moving. So both reasonable options, but hitting mandatory when you're down in the race in a DMP game like this. And double fives fans. Okay, Sean in the driver's seat after after being behind in this game now, too. 5-2. Can't clean up the... Well, it could clean up the blot for to deuce. Can we do that this early, though? Um, our other option is just make the three-point. That looks pretty strong. Yeah. One more fan, and this is going to be really tough for, for Ronald to get back in. Really needs Sean to have trouble covering. This time, I think we can afford to lift. I think, um, what is my sixth, though? Because we're just winning this game now if we can get a home to a race. So if our opponent enters on the four, it's not like we've lost. We don't need to make it. We're not so worried about the gammons we lose by playing in pure. It's our best six with it. If we come down to the bar, that's going to help us attack the most. That's going to leave a 4-3, a 4-6, and a 1-6. We just come out, we leave a 4-2 and a 1-2. We don't reduce any shots, but we do get closest to bringing the race home by playing 20-14. to 14. Um, So that seems to be the preferred play there. Another sort of DMP-oriented thing. We can see there's quite a bit of gammon discrepancy between the two games, too. Which doesn't matter when we're cubed at 2-away, 2-away. Oh, I read backgammon stream weak as in, like, uh, not strong first, and I was offended. But okay, yes. Yes, weak like a full seven days. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good time. Hope we can figure out how to get a lot of information what it's, like, like to be in this playroom, too. If you haven't seen Zdenyuk Ziska's, uh, backgammon coaching vlog, he's doing little video recaps of his days. I hope Wilson and I will be able to make some, like, pictures and content, too. Um, but man, it's exciting to be here. Tons of players in the room. Everyone wants to be world champion. So yes. Oh, look at this shot from the bar. After all the shot reduction we've done, the four or five hits from the roof, the one number. And Sean is... Oh, he does hit back on the ace. He's got to go for this. And they're in a blot hitting contest again. Wow. What a turnaround for Ronald. Ace from the roof is, is very strong, of course. He misses. But Sean still has work to do to cover that. So he could very well get another shot at it. Five deuce is going to fix that problem. Okay, in the driver's seat again for Sean. Pending some second miracle from Ronald. The same 5-4 as last time. It's pretty strong. They get an outfield anchor for contact. No such luck. 6-3 is just going to come around and try to escape to the race again. And now we need a 5-4 or 5-deuce. is going to be huge. And a fan. If Sean picks up that second checker, it's going to feel pretty lights out. Oh, and he makes the board, too. Okay. Uh, he wants to decide if he wants to just not pick up that checker for the win, which is uh, a good concept at DMP. Usually you pick up that second checker to win gammons, but it keeps your opponent dancing in the air a little bit longer, which might generate a late-game shot if you have bear-off issues. Here he has to play deep all the way to the three-point to avoid it. Um, it could just end up making the game more awkward than just hitting wood. So I like his choice to hit there, but good heads up play to think about that even. Uh, this must just play to the five to make sure double sixes doesn't leave a shot. That's kind of our priority right now while bearing in and otherwise trying to keep the checkers high. Um, so along with that, I think you actually kind of like, maybe not when your checker's on the 11, but the five to four is kind of nice. To again have nice like playing double of sixes and double fives and he ends up with the perfect distribution or not quite perfect distribution by playing to the three but bear off looking very safe for sean and it's looking an awful lot like he's going to be our challenger for ryan rebello in about an hour from now 
What time is it too? It's 2.30. So I'm not sure if it's live, but the second stream should be showing a, a super high roller jackpot match today as well. I don't know if that'll end up on this stream as, instead. We're going to have a lot of... We have two streams going. So I'll be doing commentary on some main matches for sure on this main stream. And look at this. First shot from Sean. Game's not over. Still some work to do if Ronald hits to close out the board and everything. But of course a five is huge here to stay in the game. If he misses, still plenty of returners. With the, oh, there it is. Five up two. Wow. Double five to stay in the game. And what's the best coverage we have now? I am inclined to just come out and consolidate blots in case we're a hit. This increases covers, but you can just end up dancing so long when your opponent ends up, enters and hits with a four um, that I think it's a little too loose all the blots around. Small mistake there. Really needs to enter and doesn't. And Sean has a huge opportunity to just vacuum up blots and get home this way now. And here, yeah, he needs to hit to buy time to get that checker around. No longer are we thinking about less checkers back to avoid with bear off problems later. We need to get that that final checker to safety. And so here he's stuck leaving shots anyway. I don't think there's any reduction ideas by staying on the eights. Six one, six two, five one, five two. And he misses. Okay, gonna need double ones from Sean to stay in this game pretty much now. And Sean gets goodbye. That's going to look like the match. Yeah, Ronald's going to go ahead and resign. Wow, what an exciting one for, for one of our first matches of the weekend. We've got Sean Williams as our finalist in the Chicago Open now to play Ryan Ribello. One hour from now, super exciting match. Um, seeing the PRs and everything, of course, a really clean match from Ronald. Um, some very difficult decisions from Sean. But pretty well overplayed overall, I think, too. Definitely easier to play worse PR when you're leading a lot of the match like he was. Um, I don't know. He was trailing. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Mistakes happen in this game. He had some tough positions. Really exciting to see what, what he's got against uh, against Ryan Rebello in a little bit. We'll be back with, with more streaming of that finals in just an hour. Watch out for the second stream for for Super Jackpot early round matches as well. And check out that Galaxy app now too. You gotta go get started on your rating. Everyone's even. even. If you get on there first and you have an iPhone, maybe you could be the winner for a little while before uh, if Ryan's busy with this tournament. So I guess RF has a huge lead not being here. Um, huge advantage there. Who else is always up on top? Who am I forgetting that he was competing with for a while? Oh yeah, is Denyx here too? Yeah, this is the time to go be the champion of the mobile app. But all right, we'll be back soon, everyone. Thanks for watching. Uh, just the first of many days to come. Oh, Bill's coming over to say something. What do you got, Bill? Okay, maybe I can get in here. Next match is going to start. Next match is going to start fairly immediately. Will be a first round match in the five thousand dollar high roller event. And that will be here on Stream 1 with Nick commentating. That will be Mochi versus Sander Lyloff. So that is uh, what, what a pairing. And, of course, that's a preview of the UBC final later in the year sometime. And then the Ryan Ribello sean Williams match will immediately follow the Sander-Mochi match. So uh, we'll be on very shortly.
Are the brackets posted for the high roller? I'll see if I can ask about that and find out. But wow, what a lucky matchup that we got drawn here that we're going to get the stream. That's pretty wild. I got to go post about that or something. I don't know if someone did already. I'll share it if they didn't. <laughs> but I have to win this year too. <laughs> Huh? Oh, uh, Sean Williams. Yeah. yeah. What's the problem? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, why? No, he said the distance should be three o'clock. Oh. Who said, who said that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's up to you. You are the boss. I don't care. All right. Okay, okay, sure. Okay, we start three o'clock. You can play one more game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not the second stream on the mainstream, guys. Stay here with me. If you don't see it, we got Sander and Mochi on the board. Our plan was to put all these high roller matchups on the second stream because they're going to overlap with the finals of the open. However, um, okay, we're going to start at three o'clock, so hang out here. Um, but we decided we're going to fit this match in. We'll just wait on the finals of the of the Open. And so you'll still catch Ryan and Sean play afterward. But these, we're going to get Mochi and Sander for sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And you just use it just like a normal clock 
Right. When we start, this is the start button. Check out just uh, this for one minute. What a cool drawing here. I see it says round of 16, too. I think we weren't sure how many players we were going to have for the high roller. Uh, 16 is pretty good, though. It could It's tough to fill an 8 bracket a lot of times with this 5,000 euro entry. A lot of money up top for this one. I'm um, super excited to see this. I was just talking to Will. I know he's playing this round. Um, the round at 5 o'clock, I think, is an opportunity for people to rebuy and get back in in case anyone wants to spend... 10 grand on this tournament, of course. Um, but always excited to see more like high buy-in events like this, too. Pretty excited for them. Yeah, I wonder how the payouts are going to be, but it's it's pretty fun when they just do like a, a really top-heavy winner-take-all kind of thing for, for uh, a field like this, too. Great, interesting opportunities. You know, you might have people that want to hedge in late rounds so they can still um, figure out how to make second place not go home with zero or anything like that. But it creates the opportunity to play a, a pretty expensive match in the end, which is exciting for the fans, I think, you know? I want to see that. But yeah, I'm going to go probably catch up with people quick, and we'll be back in 15 minutes. Like I said, you got 15 minutes to work on your Galaxy rating then. Three, five, and seven-point matches are the only ones that count now. Um, that's uh, pretty exciting stuff. You'll be paired up on your rating by default, too, so you can't try to game the system by by playing either really strong or really weak opponents or anything like that. So a few changes, you'll still have the option to play against friends and things like that in unrated games. There's other things you can do on the app, but the system's going to be a little bit different. So yeah, go get familiar with it. I can't tell. The transcriber just looked at me like maybe they're going to start sooner than I thought or something. I could check real quick. Move some dice over there. Mochi's getting some practice rolls on the board. What a professional. Making sure he can get him rolling around and the cups work the way he wants. He's going to practice. Oh, hasn't lots of ones, not many sets. Not good news for him. I think he'd be preparing to roll something stronger than that. <laughs> Man, I still don't know when we're going to do the finals of the UBC either. What an exciting matchup that's going to be. I can't wait to see these two play each other again. This is where the whole UBC started. 2019, Mochi and Sander playing that long event here in Monte Carlo. And that's how Galaxy ended up involved in streaming the World Championships that year. That's the first time I ever did commentary for any of these tournaments, too. Um, so, yeah, good memories from all that. And it's what a random matchup and exciting matchup to get um on our basically our first day of streaming here um could be the best match of the weekend for all we know <laughs> i see mark over there getting an interview with uh sander too i don't know how much we get to talk about this too but we've got a whole film crew on on site here that i think is working on some sort of documentary series idea i don't think it's just about uh about Monte Carlo necessarily. I think it's about backgammon in general, but I'm really excited to see what what comes out of that. You might have seen some film crew walking back and forth behind me. No, I don't think I was on stream while they were doing that. But but either way, they're in the room kind of recording a lot of things. They've got some some setup way back over the tables to capture some other non streamed matches and things like that. Um but yeah, I'm super excited by by just new things going on in backgammon that way, you know? Uh, oh, thanks. I got another happy birthday in the chat. I thank you to everyone that said something on Facebook, too. I think technically I was born at 6.30 p.m. in Wisconsin. So my birthday is not until 1.30 a.m. tomorrow here. I don't know how that works. Maybe I just get two birthdays. I don't really know. But yeah, I'm 39 now. While here. I didn't get to do the thing where my age updated on a graphic, though. That's too bad. That was cool when that happened to Mochi during the, the UBC finals of, I think it was 2020 or whatever, against Hideaki. Look at all these dice to play with. Everybody keeps misspelling, giving me different spellings. But yeah. Cool. I'm going to step away for just a second, though, but we're going to get going real soon. Super excited about this. What a great matchup. What's a URL? What, uh, <laughs> Thank you. you have the, so L -L which sites should I refer to if I want to promote that?
Oh, okay, yeah, of course, what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. It's a very cool match this one. Yeah. Everybody very happy to see it. It's a very good random match with a lot of people. This uh, high roll tournament has turned into a, it's a quite special tournament. Uh, like we have a couple of fish, actually four fish. Yeah, yeah. It's almost the same first prize as the World Championship. Yeah. So 16, that was the last round. It's been 13 now. Yeah, I'm going to keep the lead by the very open for 10 minutes, right? Okay. I like yeah, it's I like it's like L L O F F with two Fs instead of four. Okay. Serious? Yeah. Oh, can you make it mochi? Oh, you can put mochi. Yeah, I don't like uh, uh, mochi. Mm. Mochi is my <laughs> screen name, I guess. Oh, the board's crooked for the camera? Ah, oh, I did see someone move it during the match, too. I'll go let Tara know. Right. It's a good prop. Oh, the prop? Yeah. Did you enjoy playing? Yeah, yeah, I did. I enjoyed it. Someone says your board's slightly crooked, Tara. Is it crooked? For the OCD people, you know, right? So I think uh, Roland moved it. Oh, so this is a 15-point match. Yeah. It's not going to be the usual uh, seven. No, no. I, I can't play. Tell me here. Here. What? My expectation is just this okay, little bit. Perfect. That looks very good. Look at this. You I, see this great I'm, improvement I just made I'm for gonna you? Like, I'm going to like adjust <laughs> it like every game. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> it's not even. I'm going to take a really good time. I mean, can I buy the dice like this? I'm oh, paying a good amount. I only have two pairs, one for each stream. Okay. Guys, we'll talk after can you make it? Hi. Hi. My name is Dan. Will you make nice me to meet you. Dander promises to oh, make the board crooked again later after I just uh, move that a little bit for you, but they're going to get started again. Yeah, I was just chatting with Mark. We're really excited about the tournament yeah, yeah. and, uh, and uh, turnout for this high roller men. <laughs> Great mix of players, as we always get in Monte Carlo, too. There's going to be a lot of names if you see that bracket that you're super familiar with. And a good number um, that you don't know as well, too. Like, uh, uh, So it's, you know, it's like a true tournament that way, where we're going to have people playing kind of across the spectrum of skill levels and things like that, too. Um, the top prize is probably going to end up being as much as the world championships. Uh, we're going to pay out two spots, I've heard, since we got around to 16. I think they also said they have... 13 players currently but but rebuys are going to be allowed after this first round too and i i have to imagine that whichever one of these players loses in the first round they'll be happy to enter again and we'll probably have a couple other that are willing to get back in that way too so yeah super excited for how this high roller tournament turned out um i'm not sure what uh mark said they need to brief the chart players on something i think that's him and his watch there um so he wants to stack up three for some reason? Whatever. Yeah. Showing them cool tricks. <laughs> Playing on the Monte Carlo Grand Prix board. There, yeah, I gave it a kind of half between Mark's pronunciation there and mine. But super nice wood. Like the tray layouts are similar to the earth board. Of course, they're they're actually imprinted into the board. Really high quality. The the checkers are those awesome matte finish ones from the void board. 
Um, just looks beautiful in person. Those are going to be really nice ones. I think you can get them in the Galaxy Shop too. But the winner of the, the World Championships is going to get one of these boards as well on that really nice dark finished wood. <laughs> yes, you're welcome for the board evening. Six minutes till launch, which means, by the way, everyone, that the the Ryan Rebello match and Sean Williams is going to happen after this. So small delay there. Okay, we got a 15 point match here too. I just realized I didn't ask how how long these matches were. So a nice long match between these two as well. That's exciting. We'll get to see them in some spots potentially that are. Um, significantly different than the seven-point matches we always have in the UBC finals and in, in tournaments. So they're going to get into some odd match scores potentially to deal with, and we'll see how they adjust to those spots as well. Man, super excited to see these two play. Someone's going to have to update me during the match who's number one on Galaxy for now, too. Someone's saying it was a uh, 4,000 euro buy-in? Could be right. I thought it was five grand for some reason. I'm not straight in the video. I have no idea how to do that. Unless you're commenting on something else. <laughs> yeah, I've been a little crooked here. So my setup, if you can follow my hands, I'm pointing at the monitor that I'm watching with the stream. And then, of course, I've got you guys on the comments here. Camera over here. Um... We wanted to do all that to keep the the monitor out of the picture. But I guess since we're zoomed in on me, I could actually probably move that over and be looking more straight at you guys. Huh. I'm sorry. I apologize for my lack of eye contact. Oh, I was going to tell them about the stream setup, the, the pip count too. It's not a huge deal, but we could make that better. I know how to fix that in OBS if they have a second too. Hmm. Hmm. We don't see the score up there, but that yeah, should be fine because we have the scoreboard. I'm just thinking ahead. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. How's your uh, father? How's your father? <laughs> the brackets, I think, are on draw boss. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, it was a good joke, Edward. Thank you, You're incorrect. Uh, thank you, everyone. Yeah, I can't. Okay, I always talk about how I end up doing streaming all day, every day, forever, and never get tired of it. I d it did start to dawn on me. So this is going to be seven days straight. I've never done seven days straight of this. Yeah. So we'll see how I'm holding up by the end. But I don't know, man. I, I love doing this. Thanks, I find myself already, like, the first match, just really engaged with it and excited, especially in a game with a lot of turnarounds, like uh, the end of last match. Uh, so this is going to be a lot of fun. I think I think it's going to be great. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, fine. What's <laughs> up, Bill? I guess they're they're getting ready to start. Sweet. So you know they have a uh, there's a documentary film crew here. Yeah, doing yeah. Doing some work for the tournament. And, yeah. And they're actually micing them up in there, and they're going to be oh, filming part. Oh, awesome. Of okay. I was just in there, and they're putting the lapel mics on Mochi and Santa. Oh, and, so cool. So, so it's cool. It's going to okay. be pretty cool. It's going to be a big deal. I wish we got to get the live the lapel mics for the for the stream too. Oh, you can see them in the background there. Yeah. Okay, we're getting going. We're getting going. Fifteen point match, huh? Okay. Okay. Enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> oh, what an exciting match for this, like, first full day of streaming. I can't believe we're getting this. Unanticipated. We really had no plans of of necessarily doing commentary and streaming on the High Roller event at all. We figured we certainly wanted to get the finals of the Open. Then we'd figure it out from there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, when this matchup got drawn, I think everyone just said, we got to get this one on stream. Come on. How do we not show Mochi and Sander playing? Um, so I'm super glad to be getting this. Uh, it'll be fun to see how this shows up in whatever documentary the film crew comes up with, too. I hope they all know that they're on the streaming ca uh, uh, camera, too, there. That's hilarious. Uh, does Pornick have to stand up? Pornick gets to stand up. If Pornick had to sit down for the entirety of it, then I think he couldn't handle this. Yeah, okay, let's so I I always request, I'm, I'm fancy that way, I request my standing table and everything, and I do a lot better when I've got that option. 
But we got Wilson walking by in the background too. I like we've got the whole film crew on on camera for the stream too. I wish we had their mics on the stream too. But okay, five one split to open, <laughs> and a point in response. It'll be fun to see what their attitude is in this match too. You know, both of them. It's a lot easier to like in the first round of a tournament like this. Like just the. The feel of playing it's a lot more relaxed, where in the UBC setting, of course, right from the start, you can't afford to make any errors whatsoever. I guess, theoretically, you should be thinking about the equity the same way either way, um, but I think both players are going to be a lot more relaxed and a lot more focused on being able to play their best game through a whole weekend and things like that, and so the concentration might be a little lower and just like the relaxed having fun attitude might be a little better through the whole tournament. Mochi already arriving at a real borderline cube and thinking about sending in, decides he doesn't quite have enough yet. Um, oh, and how does he best make use of this fours, too? Making the nine blocks that check around the 22 very effectively. But we can see that seven to three could turn this game into a blitz and make the best four point board. So that just looks a little bit too strong to, to avoid making the blitzing play. Is Sander already telling him what to do? <laughs> so I just missed over the board there. I hope he's telling him the best option. Uh, so if he makes this play, he should arrive at a cube almost all the time. Um, the issue with it is that I think, I think when when Sander fans and he plays this four point board play, that he's probably going to be too good and get to roll on. So it's not as simple. It's thinking about what's just going to arrive us at a cube most consistently allow us to cash the game like some other early set kind of positions. This we've got to go for more. Um, and I think I think he'll find this, but, you know, he's going to take some time early on. We'll see if Mochi does his Mochi thing and gets down to two minutes on the clock in the first two games and has to play speed gammon. Sander might just have 30 minutes for the entire match for all I know. Uh, Neil asking if there's a second stream to watch Ryan and Sean. No, we're going to delay the Ryan and Sean match, the finals of the Open, until after this match. So whenever this finishes up is when we'll watch that. This, I'm expecting a 15-point match, could easily be two hours. So maybe we'll be doing that closer to 5 p.m. now. Um, I think we're just going to be having mostly super high roller first round events for the rest of the day anyway. So those will be our most in interesting matchups for sure. And I'll be here on commentary for that. So you won't miss that by any means. Oh, everyone getting after the chat to let them know that I prefer standing. Thank you. You guys know me so well. Okay, and we got a fan, and he is indeed playing on too good by quite a bit. Uh, threes with only nine in the zone. I don't think the switching idea is the thing quite yet. Maybe to prevent the anchor. But I'm inclined to just bring two checkers down into the zone to the seven and have that five prime no matter what. But this also accomplishes bringing two checkers to the zone and possibly remaking the four point. So it looks like pretty strong too, I think. And they do, you can see they all land pretty close to each other. If the cube was turned already, Mochi's original play would be the clear play. Um, we can see that because there's an extra 13% gammons at not much win cost at all. Um, but it's, it's slightly up in the air because he hasn't, and he wants to make sure that if things go wrong, he gets to cash this game at least. Um, interesting little technical detail there. And this one looks like it's probably just gonna, I would, my instinct would just be 14 to 8 to get a builder into the zone. Um, but look at that. We can spread out even more that, than that potentially by playing 13 to 9, 10 to 8. Definitely needs a checker on the eight point in case Sander enters on the deuce there like this, though. And I think the loose hit is the priority. And splitting 10 to 9 probably accomplishes the most covers for that now in case the six doesn't cover. 4, 2, 5, 3. Um, or sorry, 4, 3, 5, 3, things like this. Okay, Mochi's got two jobs now. He's got a hit and he's got a cover. 5, 2 covers. And hits on the way. Oh, what a perfect shot. Okay. Sander enters again. Keeps his 30 minutes on the clock. 5-4, hit loose, and we're going to play down for the cover. And we're speeding off to an undoubled gammon to start this match. A little more happy birthdays. Thank you, everyone.
Thanks for all the compliments on the stream, too. Yeah, we keep learning everything, every event we do, or things, every event we do. Hopefully continuing to get better. Um, yeah. Yeah, I really like the production we're doing, too. I think in the past, a lot of the streaming and, like, and social media things have not really been a priority of this tournament. More come show up live and have fun if you want to. But with new staff in place, we're going to try to change that and uh, make that more of a focus. So I hope if I ever get off stream, I'm going to run around with Wilson and maybe do some player interviews for y'all and things like that, too. We'll see what I have time for. But the streaming schedule today has gotten really busy really fast already. <laughs> This is interesting. My first instinct here was just uh, 13 to 11, 9 to 5. It looks like it keeps all the spares off, but okay. This must leave a shot on double sixes, but for some reason the distribution of the other play was a little too ugly. This fixes things a little bit. We love to have that spare on the 5 instead when we're bearing in. Sixes play nice, fives play nice, everything's good here. Uh, near perfect distribution, getting a play to the... Oh, interesting. I would have went 6 and 3 instead. Um, but he stacks up the five instead. Yeah. I think this is just, uh, oh, he's got a... Okay, quick transcriber thing. Yeah, it was five straight. <laughs> I kind of feel like Mochi's sharp enough to know that, that this means he made a mistake. <laughs> Albeit a small one, if one at all. On the lower analysis setting, too. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, and now three in. Yeah. There we go. And now he has a double fours to think about. And I think this is probably just going to clear from the rear. If he can avoid leaving a shot, he's going to win a gammon for sure. Not a lot of backgammons, only two in the air. Not the role he was looking for by any means, but uh, safety is definitely the priority here. Uh, interestingly enough, if he'd played the other play, would he be taking any checkers off here? No, it transposed, being about the same thing. So he's going to look at three off here, which I just we can see from the distribution a bit of an overplay and probably going to cost him gammons just in uh, in potentially leaving his shot. I expect Mochi will figure this one out, but um, of course, first match of the day and everything too. He's taking his time getting his. Is heading to the game, making sure he doesn't make any crucial mistakes in such an advantageous position. Getting warmed up. I think the entry is 5,000 euros. Uh, someone in the chat was saying they heard 4,000 for some reason. Oh, he goes with the peel play. Wow. Okay. A uh, bit of an overplay, uncharacteristic overplay from Mochi there. But the 6 1 cleans up very nicely, so likely to get away with it. Distribution looking a lot better now. 5-2, going to stay nice and even on the end. Just big sets are going to cause him problems on next roll. But Sanders likely to enter with a 6 or a 4. And doesn't. Gets to stay in the air. 6-3, okay. Mochi dodges leaving a shot. One more roll. Yeah. Sander enters. Yeah. Loses a gammon. Does he resign a gammon? Sure. Okay. Nice start to begin here. Yeah, everyone asking where the draws are. I don't have the link available. Maybe someone else listening in on the stream can post that. But I, I think we might have them in Draw Boss. That's where we've been doing all of the brackets uh, for the Open, for example. So you can go look in that software if you have that link and see if the super high roller is there. I, I expect that they would put it there. The one thing they might be waiting on is to initiate actually putting that into Draw Boss until, until they they have the full set of like rebuys and everything. Um. <laughs> I don't know what was going on with that 200 start. <laughs> They're joking around here or something. Um, but yeah, since they only have 13 players, they don't know who the rebuys are going to be yet. Maybe it'll be easier to enter if they just wait. But either way, we'll, we'll have that there. Um, if I get a chance, maybe I'll take a picture of the draw sheet that we have currently so far. Okay, even though it's two back to three back, fighting for that five point anchor is going to be strongest for Sanders. So he's going to go ahead and hit and send a third checker back, probably split along with it and bid for an anchor. Not really a more effective deuce available, so 24 to 22 looks strong for Mochi. Yeah. People saying too much money. Yeah, yeah, it's uh 
They're calling it a high roller for a reason. Yeah, I think Sanders going to enter on the 21 for the extra contact. And I like that. 13 to 8 makes a lot of sense too, but I guess just getting... The nice thing about playing out to the 16 is that a lot of Mochi's rolls are going to end up playing a checker to the outfield potentially from the back. Um, and so he covers the outfield when he does that. Um, I think Michi... Maybe this is Michi's fight with 13 principle. I don't know for sure. Common theme to get that third checker running, though. Small advantage for Mochi in the board strength that Sander just neutralized. Sander has the anchor and Mochi does not. And Mochi still cannot make the anchor here. I think he can just run one of the back checkers to safety, though. I guess the question is which one? I mean, my first instinct was to keep the better anchor slotted, but he's down in the race. And maybe he's just likely to be hit loose on the 20 if he stays there. So running to the 11 looks like a nice candidate as well. Creates more diversification for making the bar and outfield point later. And he's going to find that best of plays. Uh, 22 to 13, a strong candidate as well. Very close. But you can count on Mochi to generally find the best play there. Uh, what do we have now? This looks like he can just set up up to the 20 and either play down to the 11 for a builder. Or 6 to 4, I never want to do early. I'm, I'm surprised to see that so high up. Feels strange to dilly a builder this way. Uh, he sees the double hit advantage or option though too, and he's going to go for that. I think I remember from the UBC that Sander likes some some of the higher aggressive gamma-ish plays. Tendency of a lot of players that have been around the game for a long time. <laughs> very close though, so very viable too. Maybe plus plus even favors his play. I'm not sure. Uh, with three checkers back and not many in the zone though, that does reduce the value of a blitzing play a little bit. So, probably the lower plies are fine. Yeah, Mochi has an interesting decision here. It feels strange to give up the 8 to, to point on head. But he's going to see it. He gets to put a checker in the air and have the better board and buy time to escape his back checkers. So he's going to go for that board advantage. Something to be able to hang on to for probably at least a roll or two here. The 5, no real great 5 for Sander either, so I'm inclined to just get a... Checker moving from the back now, 20 to 15. I don't like stripping the mid anymore. But now actually prefers that because of the board advantage that, that Mochi has here. So encouraging a little bit more comfortable of a play. Uh, okay, draw sheets aren't in draw boss yet. Sorry about that. How many of the 13 entries are recreational players? I think I heard we have uh, maybe like four names that we're not as familiar with, which is like pretty good draw for such a like high buy-in events, which is a nice thing about Monte Carlo. We have a lot of people that, that actually just like to play backgammon here too, that aren't necessarily like the top pros playing UBC things. Um, it's, it's the only opportunity in the world I'm aware of for, for those kinds of events and draws. 5-4 is going to remake the 8 almost for sure. And then, sure, we'll step up and try to escape, have an anchor. And yes, these two players are the two players for the UBC Finals. Haven't determined when and where that'll happen. But so we're getting a nice preview of that matchup. And of course, Sander and Mochi were the two to play in the first UBC event ever. So they're very familiar with each other, with each other's play. Um, this is going to cover the five nicely. But super excited to get to watch these two play and get such an exciting matchup in the first round of this event. I think there's going to be a lot more matchups like this to come too. Two six. Sixes are awkward for entry. We're going to break the 8 or the midpoint. It's a bit of a disaster. The 8 feels more, or the 13 feels more pure to me. So that's my first look, but it's a double shot. Both are double shots. It's a triple shot. Do we even, we don't want to make the bar point that much either. We allow our opponent to escape from the 24 with tempo. Um, and we unlink from our checkers on the 23. So just all the tactics of the, this position require us to break the eight instead. Um, but it just doesn't fit strategic concepts very well. So it's going to be a tough one for Mochi to find and make. I expect he still, you know, tends to find the right play and going through the roles and seeing how they're going to work out. Um, but for me, it gets to be very difficult when tactics trump strategy. And he's going to take a look at this other play. I think he's going to, and he's going to make it too. I am not too surprised by that. I feel like it's very counterintuitive here to, to just bury a checker on the deuce. 
this at least feels like things are in play when they get hit. And, wow, I didn't really think about whether or not Sander might have a cube here. But he stopped to think about the advantage with the better anchor, the better board, shots everywhere, likely to have outfield control after this. And even with four checkers back to two, he's very likely to change that to three checkers back each with just a dominated position. So, yeah, he does have a sizable cube here, too. Okay. And he's pausing to think about it and think about how it's going to play out, but it's a fairly unusual position, which which makes it one that you have to spend some time thinking about to find for sure. I got Ryan Rebello next to me. I don't know. Did you get the news that you're playing your finals after this because Mochi and Sandra are playing right now? And of course, we're going to watch that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're playing Sean Williams in the finals, Ryan. Yeah, you haven't heard of him as well. Excited to see that match, man. You know this guy, Sean Williams? He's, is he a good player? Is Sean Williams a good player? I played against him. He played, like, okay in that. I think he played around, like, a nine and had, like, a few gaps in the semifinals match we played. Um, but, yeah, he's been playing for a while. Pretty sharp. Can I bluff someone like I did last night? <laughs> Can you bluff Sean Williams? So <laughs> that was the best thing I've done all time. I don't know, but it's possible. It's possible. You go, go ask him if you can bluff him. <laughs> and so he takes a roll instead of sending the cube. Tough to fault him here. I mean, now that we see the XG analysis and I can kind of talk through it, I see the value for sure. But again, very strange position. Four, five is pretty much a whiff. I guess, are we just going to clean up all the shots? I kind of like that idea. Um, even though it reduces contact, I don't know. Yeah, my first instinct is just this 20 and 8. But okay, he can keep a little bit of extra contact, still create another builder, gets a checker moving. They all look very reasonable, yeah. And this is the value of his position too, I think, is that like like all plays are options where mochis are very stiff and he had that problem with the, the six from the bar to play last time specifically because of that. But he's cleaned up and survived this last uh, iteration. Oh, I'm instantly looking at 7 to 6 and cleaning up 13 to 11, but clearing the 8 is an option too. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, either way, I think outboarded and against the better anchor, he just wants to clean up blots and find a way off that 23 point as fast as possible. And Sander needs to roll anything that's going to let him play from the 20 point next roll. This is the value I can see now of having played 20 to 11 instead, is that he's got some awkward rolls next time. Um... Maybe a 3-6, like, I guess a 1-6 could force him to bury to the ace or something like that that he'd rather not do. The 1-2 might feel like it would have given a shot that it didn't need to. But I'm not even sure it would have benefited Mochi so much to have that. 5-6 will work. That's just going to come around. Only one play there. And with all the blots cleaned up, he doesn't have too much to think about with the cube. Yeah, Mochi's just looking for any chance to run, instantly reaches for that checker, realizes he could make a point and not risk being attacked, and so he's going to consider it. But this is a good example of having your strategy in mind before the roll, and he sees a number that can escape, so he just instantly reaches for the 23, and then considers alternatives after afterward. Neil surprised by the miss cube. I think that's a tough one to find. Three three is going to get the opportunity to attack. Mochi is going to need to perform. Misses and is this? Can we think about playing on? He's got a small racing lead. If Mochi enters, can he take this cube? I'm not sure he can. I guess with three checkers back, maybe. But it does kind of feel like the time is now to send it while he has threats and that bad things can happen. I, I don't think we can play on for a game. But I think that's more the decision. And I don't think Mochi can play this one. Yeah, and we're very close to too good, but Mochi's going to pass it easily. And 2-1. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's on the screen. Uh, no, this is first round. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That's fine. No, no. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. I just wanted you to know.
Oh, they did. They had speakers over there before. They'll figure that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, nice start for Mochi in this match or in this this game. Ooh, but this four three doesn't do much. What can he do with this? He either cleans up eight to five and just sits on the position he has with this split. Yeah, or I mean, hitting loose on the deuce just doesn't accomplish enough. So yeah, this makes a lot of sense. Um, does Sander get to go for a loose hit on the five when outboarded here now? Yeah, because he's got this nice, I mean, the out to the bar point with it was my first instinct with it. But he has this nice option of protecting that loose hit with an extra hit on the ace. Um, putting two in the air and leaving a double shot. But Mochi's going to have trouble. At least it slows down his, his development, right? It's a very scary position if Mochi can make another point and board. And he's going to look at least at just button it up. Very reasonable option here. Um, but it's just so stiff. It's like, it's going to be hard for Sander, I think, to find a play where he puts six on the eighth point. It's just not like a uh, backgammon player style, right? <laughs> I think if you play with the bot enough, you can find those kinds of things. Um, but I don't, it's, yeah, I, do, I don't see someone that appreciates purity like Sander making a play like that. Maybe though. Okay. He comes back to it. He makes it surprises me with that one. Sometimes the position calls for it. Yeah. The 23 sees the light here, kind of freezes all Mochi's checkers. It's just, yeah, what, what can you do? And it feels very strange and stacky to unstack the 6 while still having a stack of 5 on the 8. The double hit looked nice, though. What is this? This is 6-5. Uh, Oof. This is the problem with the last play is how do we, what do we do next? So if we, is that the only five? We're going to leave a shot no matter what, so we might as well put him in the air. So we're going to come off the anchor with it and hope that we've bought time to potentially escape and make the 17, but geez, this looks risky. I, I bet he's regretting not having double hit before. He's going to get the cube for that one. <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> what can he do though? Mochi's gonna enter and hit. Okay. Normally, they just throw like double threes. It is pretty funny to go for that play after uh, after dodging the six, the uh, after dodging it for one roll before that. I wish I could hear him. Yeah, the second hit feel. Oh, you can just make the four point. Okay, this looks very strong to just make the next point board point in order. Uh, Mochi's considering continuing the blitz by hitting loose. Um, but you don't want to make the two point that bad. You don't have many checkers in the zone. If he does make the two point, you still win plenty of gammons in this position with Sander so overrun. Finds the best play there. And another fan with the two qubit on his side. Uh, Mochi in good shape to win uh, four points and go to a 6 1 lead in this game already. Oh, people are asking if the board's called? Yeah, it's the Grand Prix, the Monte Carlo Grand Prix. And the winner of the open will win this board. You can get a uh, your own board like this in the Galaxy Shop, but it's it looks super nice in person too. Some of it's got those. Uh, I think Ryan got to play on it yesterday. He's it's got those Voiboard uh, mat checkers too that look really sharp on the stream. Um, super nice wood, great inlays, of course. I mean, same FM gammon ideas. Yeah, and Mochi's gonna break the bar point and focus on closing out now that he's got the deuce point as well, and the blitz is going well. I think he's basically won two blitzes for Gammons will be after if he gets away with this game. Of course, just anchoring on the ace is huge for Sander, creates winning chances and everything. Uh, 13 to 7 actually feels like the best way to... You get sixes and... Well, you already have sixes, but threes seems nice. Um, but okay, he wants to get a back checker moving and bring one in. This seems fine too. Oh, you get threes this way too. Yeah, and you get an additional 6-3. So this is actually a little bit better in this case. Um, what are we doing with this? Maybe just around from the back, because you're not really creating builders yet. Um, okay. Fine as well. They're all real tiny technical things about how do I get one extra roll to close out and make sure that I don't lose to an anti-joker or give chances yet. Things like that. There's a giggling schoolgirl on commentary? I'm not sure I understand who that is, but okay. Appreciate it. <laughs> I 
And he gets the opportunity to switch off the ace there. Okay. Yep. That's going to prevent the anchor most effectively when there's one checker in. Uh, looking for lots of switching plays in a situation like this for sure. Um, okay. 5 2 enters. Yeah. Mochi's trying to just figure out, or sorry, transcription thing real quick here. And a 3 1 for sure going to hit loose. And then what's our best ace? Maybe just 14 to 13 to keep all the distribution we have already. I don't think we need to think about lifting. Yeah, I guess seven to six must be fine too. They're all little technical things. Five two gets to cover and come around, but it's gonna leave double sixes. Is there a way around that? I don't think so. I think they're actually letting transcription catch up real quick here. But uh, yeah, yeah. So I think you're just gonna play 14 to nine, four to two. Does leave the, he's going to think about it for a little while, but again, just no way off it. So we're making this play. And avoids leaving it again. What's the best way to deal with it now? I guess we have eight to five looks a little awkward. I don't see anything better. Usually you like to have a gap and checkers on the six and the four instead. Five in, I think we just continue four to three typically for, for most uh, long-term safety. That's interesting. That's twice now that I've seen Mochi make this five, uh, six to five play instead. Um, I wonder if he's studied this and has different ideas about it or just like a small gap in something that he's uh, learned. I can't imagine him having a gap and just not having seen that before, especially when it's like a concept that Michi talks about in his book. And I know they're in contact quite a bit. Um, very interesting to see that twice. Yeah, I'll have to ask him about those plays. That's all you can come up with for asking Mochi about errors. So, right? <laughs> it's just this tiny little technical thing in, uh, in the late game bear off. And I have to assume that he has a reason for it. It's pretty crazy. That's how good these players are. This is definitely the best of the best in this matchup here in the first round of the high roller, too. Only going to get harder from here. 2 1 is awkward. I. So I guess our options are to peel one and clear from the deuce, but then our opponent can enter on the deuce and stay for contact forever. So just clearing from the rear and trying to solve the long-term problem, it's probably better. 75% of the time your opponent just enters and you're fine. Um, but this is a whole third of the time that Sander can roll, not quite a third, but very close to it, that he can roll a two, enter deep, and have a little bit of extra contact. And I don't think you really gain a whole lot. It does look like you gain a few gammons out of it somehow. Um, the only nightmare sequence here is Sander fans, and then we're kind of a favorite to leave his shot. But he doesn't. Obliges. Loses a simple gamut again. And we're off to 6-1. Good start for Mochi in this match. Take it easy. <laughs> Catching up on chat here. Nothing too crazy going on, huh? I ready? Maybe Mate's going in with some advice or something. Who knows? I just saw Mate sprint to the room. Thank you for whatever you made to do, Mate. <laughs> okay, we're opening with a 5-2. Um, so in a 15-point match, 9 away, 14 away, this might be enough to adjust some cube action, but we're so far from the end of the match that like, you're still going to get value out of the recubes as Mochi. So I think he's still going to have a fine time taking. Um, I wouldn't expect too much on the adjustment side, but maybe to decide the most borderline of cases. Uh, the 4-1 was awkward. I guess he could play down. Oh, he would have had to play in front of that checker. Yeah, now this 4-5 follow-up, I think just to the outfield makes the most sense, too. Uh, you don't want to be parked on those high points against nine checkers in the zone. Let's get attacked a lot. Um, are they going to play dice on checkers? Okay. Didn't realize they were doing that. I know in general in the tournament it's not valid, but of course players can always agree to their own rules, too, and and add in legal moves and things like that. I had that come up in one of my matches and just chose to play that way too. 
the tournament needs to have like clear standards so that they can make a ruling when something comes up but then it's always nice when the players are like understanding enough of each other and is this adjustment already 17 is like eight and a half plus so maybe those numbers looked like this was probably a cube for money that mochi is not sending at this score um already making an adjustment the six one is a whiff but that's interesting yeah I think a close early game cube it makes sense as the kind of place where where you would choose not to to be as aggressive with the cube as usual and just play on until you have a difficult or like just a stronger position in general. Especially a gammonish position is where you tend to adjust quite a bit at these match scores as well. Those go down in value with the lead. Um, and now fully escaped, he kind of has nothing here. At every game I have these big stacks. <laughs> And yeah, with some of these simple things, players can agree to different rules on their own. I guess the, the thing about it, the tournament director is not going to come in and respect the rules that they agreed to, right? So I guess you ought to trust your opponent. But these two know each other pretty well. I think um, we're not going to have any rule discrepancies like that about dice and checker. Like, no issues like that that I foresee. Yeah, Neil, I think I expect that dice on checker must be a private agreement because it's not the rule in the, in the tournament, but... We'll see. Might differ match to match. 5-2. What does this do? I guess the 5 must be down. And then... Yeah, what is he thinking about best? Just, so these are all tiny, tiny things, but... I think Mochi tends to spend some time there when he thinks he can figure it out. But he makes fun of me for thinking about stuff like that, too. Okay. Whatever. 5-1. <laughs> we have to leave a shot. So maybe our best way to reduce contact and play our favorite game plan of a race against the three-point board is to just hit. We, of course, weren't thinking of hitting loose, but not presenting a lot of options. This is also, I'm going to have to ask Sander if this is his new style, to have five checkers on as many points as possible, maybe more sometimes. And Mochi, once again, has to think about, I would probably cube this for money because the twos are going to turn the game around entirely. I'm still in the race when he misses. Um... But, okay, no, this is actually nothing for money, too. I'm surprised he's singing so hard for about this. Um, it doesn't seem like much, because he hasn't won the game when he hits, necessarily. So maybe that last one wasn't a score adjustment, either. I didn't see close enough. And he does take the roll wisely. Okay. And... Slight racing lead. I guess we want the contact, so we enter on the 21. And then any five you like, and it feels that way. Interesting that three ply the preferred play was just to come out to the 16 and maybe lose all your contact. And okay, it's starting to get threatening where you might want to run and be able to play the race. Uh, there are some numbers that are going to... Okay, he gets, uh, Sander gets to cover the deuce here. Interesting that, that it's even an option to not do that. I, I love being able to cover the dudes because now I can threaten to attack and I force Mochi to have to run. But the merit of the eight and the five is probably just race distribution. And in such a tight race, and this game being so likely to go that way, um, I guess there's a lot of value in just playing for your best distribution. You don't want that second checker on the deuce with gaps all over the place, being forced to play kind of weaker later on for the race when your opponent escapes. Close plays, though. And he does find this racing play instead. That's pretty sharp stuff. Even be thinking about that. And is glad now that Mochi makes a natural escaping play. And whoever can roll a set first is likely to have the big advantage in this game. Maybe if Roj Mochi... Okay, double fours is going to put him in the driver's seat for sure. Um, Sandy is going to need big set to kind of stay in this game. And I'm not sure seven pips is enough. Yeah, it is. Okay, 11 in this race. It's almost exactly borderline. Um... Might have a little bit of... I don't see much wastage for either side, so I think that's pretty similar. I think um, maybe Sanders' check around the... It's, uh, the check around the deuce is fine, too. Somehow there's a lot more crossovers for Sanders, so maybe you punish for that a little bit. But 
Yeah. I think Mochi's going to find a cube. I don't see usually score adjustments that we make. They they don't occur in end game races like this on the initial cube. Certainly on recubes and things like that or at really specific two way scores. But um, okay, he needs to take this back. Oh, he does get back to it. Okay, yeah, we find a double and still a fairly not a clear take, a close take, but. It feels like it should be right on the borderline with 11 pips in a in a 95 pip race. That standard trice formula would add round up to the next 10, which is 100. Divide by 10 is 10, and add one is 11 um, as your point of last take. And sure enough, Sanders right there. Is the open final being live streamed? It sure will be live streamed, um, but right after this match. We ended up, we were planning on streaming that at 3.30 local time, which is what time it is now, I think. And Sander passes that. Not too big of a mistake. I think that's fine to let one like that go. Um, but again, yeah, we will catch the final of the Open between Ryan Rebello and Sean Williams. And But we're going to do that as soon as this match is done. Um, because we, we did the draw for the Super High Roller. They were supposed to start at 2 o'clock. They started later than that, but we... We saw that we had this amazing opportunity to get a UBC Finals preview in this match. So decided to just adjust the schedule to allow us to do mainstream of both. Eventually, we will have a second stream, too, um, where we can kind of accommodate more matches that way. But I, I think we're still working on setting up hardware for some of those things, too. Someone asking if Hossein's still part of the Galaxy team? I don't know. I, as far as I know, he's not here this weekend. Um, so not that way. We've got uh, an Aviv that's like uh, working on the tournament, part of Arda's staff, and also helping out with transcription. I think it's his first like live streaming gig like that, so I'm sure he'll keep getting better as the weekend goes on, too. Doing a good job in there. I think you can hear me talking, too, if I talk on the headphones. Or you have that set up for the for like after-match analysis. So five three. This is awkward. We have to enter on the five. Can we? Uh, can't really afford a triple split. I have a hard time playing nine to six. Can't leave a double shot. Yeah, this uh, nine to six is probably what I'd end up finding. It feels so strange to break a point, one of our only points to to hit loose. But just tactically, there's so little else going on here. Um, all of our other options are fairly destructive too. That stacking to the six, being down in the race, we we give our opponent the full roll to attack us on the twenty as well, and maybe point on us. So there's a little bit of tempo value too. Um, but this feels like the natural, the usual play is to just clean up nine to six for lack of options. Where can you find that timer app? I'm not sure where it says exactly. But it's the Tempest Clock. Maybe instructions come when you actually purchase it or something like this, too. I don't know how that works. And, okay, so after the cleanup play with a clear advantage, trailing many points in the match, 8 away, 14 away, Sanders going to send a nice aggressive cube. And we can see this is basically a double for money, too. Um, it must be really close, but just a clear cube of the score. So even with a six point lead this far away from the end, we're not adjusting the take pass decision too much on Mochi's side. Um, I'm sure he probably knows long match adjustments as well as anyone, um, but is a bit tricked by this position. Doesn't like being given the decision here for sure. Trying to figure that out. Um, I'd love to hear what they're talking about here. <laughs> I know Sanders talk over the board is pretty strong. Gets people to think about positions differently. So I'd love to, but he's going to scoop it up. Not too surprising. Too much game to go in a checker back, all this stuff. Man, it's fun. I really enjoy seeing them having fun playing this match, though. And like, I don't know, just like good sports about everything. Look at that five to three cleanup. I, he looked at it, reconsidered, decided to play with four blots instead. That's the play I find for sure. Mochi's going to enter and hit. Very strong response from him. The tactics of this position are pretty wild, though. 
Okay, Sander manages to clean up all four blots with one roll. Very great shot from the bar. 2-1 is going to anchor for Mochi, and now they've got a very reasonable position. Mochi feels good about his cube take. Sander has way less gammon thread, unfortunately. And the 6-3 is awkward already. What can we do with it? Our only safe play would be to clear the 9. It feels way too early to dilly builders that way. So the pure play is to just put a check around the 4 like that, but we hate risking our, our race. Moji's going to give him a little, a little for that. 6-1. Oh, this doesn't really do much for Mochi here either. Can we really afford to put a 6 checker on the 6? They're both hating it. Um, maybe before we did that in a position like this, you, you really prefer your checker to have 6s out from the 24 points. But... This is one where the alternative is destructive enough that I might think about playing 24 to 23 with it. I don't think we come over much more attack. Our opponent has to give up a point so often that maybe we're going to get something about that. Puts a little pressure on the 8 to cover in a different way. Um, but man, these are just these plays where you don't do anything you want to are very challenging. Oh, clearing the 8 is a very interesting option here. Um, but it gives up one of our last bits of structure, but at least it doesn't stack up things awkwardly and force. I, I get why he found it, but unfortunately he found a play that was weaker than all the other destructive options. Um, very natural clearing the nine-point play for Sander. Got a lot of flexibility. Mochi hoping for a six just to run that back checker, I think. I don't think the contact's helping him much here. Oh, wow. I'm off here. I would have instantly been reaching for that checker on the 24, thinking I need flexibility to move but 13 to 7 and start the four points just works on having a board for contact a little bit faster and we've got lots of options to play after that interesting it's a bit i guess it's not so scary to be back on the 24 point yet once sander makes the the deuce point then he needs to he'll have regret maybe not having played it maybe this creates too many productive fours that sander didn't have otherwise as well but yeah, a lot of these, like, very tactical decisions and situation-specific, Moji's been getting dealt a lot of them here. And navigating them pretty well, but but missing a couple, understandably. Six threes. Ooh, look at this. A chance to just run off while your opponent has no board. I would have just been playing the quiet play for, for Sander, too. Oh, look. Sander suggests that he just leaves his anchor. That's very kind of him to help him spot plays like that. Um, making two points seems very strong. I don't know why we want to leave an ace shot here to block double sixes would be the idea, but I think just uh, covering the deuce point and preparing for contact, which is what you need to win this game, feels a little bit stronger here. I think, I expect Mochi will find this one. Yeah, the name of the clock and app is Tempest. Tempest game clock. Oh, the app is free, but you need a code to activate it. Okay. And it comes with a uh, code in the box. I wonder if the code only works for one. Maybe you shouldn't. Four five. I immediately don't see any safe play. So hitting in the outfield looks pretty strong in that case. And then do we want to clean that one up or play thirteen to eight? Keeping the checker on the 13 would keep a little extra pressure on the outfield in that midpoint blot. It feels like it's getting us closer to home, though. And 9-4 to four plays behind the anchor, so I don't love that very much either. I Once again, I think it feels like a very natural play that's just for some reason the tactics of the position requires something else. Um, very tricky games they're getting into. 4-3. Four, three. Uh, yeah, I said eight, but... Uh... And what does he got? A 4-3, so he's going to cover for sure, and then the 3 could come in, or he can start making progress towards getting home. With his 4-point board, he's not too worried about being hit, uh, especially with the extra blot that Mochi has in board right now, too. 6-2, uh, doesn't hit the outfield checker, can't move the 20-point checker, so it seems like it's just going to link up on the 9. Uh, what other play do we have here? 9-3, to 8-6, to six. what is this? Oh, we could keep pressure on that blot again. Okay. This is so... All these little tiny finds, they're very close. 
Very close. But I'd feel kind of happy to have made that play. I don't think we can afford the loose hit with the blot and board in four point board. We got to wait more. Um, Mochi's going to look at it though, going for the win and consider it. And it does win more games as we can see, but at the cost of a few too many more gammons. Um, so I would be just thinking about playing quiet and hoping to generate some contact wins with the checker, um, back on the, uh, with Sanders checker that he was considering hitting. Um, I'll just wait and see if that can get around safely or not. And meanwhile, I'll be able to save a gammon almost every time by not hitting. Um, but Mochi's really considering going for the winning play here. Thinking maybe he's going to save enough gammons with his anchor anyway. Um, that the upside is very strong here. When he gets missed, he has sixes and ones to cover and make a four prime. It looks like it can work. That's for sure. So when the game, when it looks like you can win more games with a hitter like this, a lot of times you just have to go for it and try to win and not worry so much about the downside. Um, but we can see it doesn't win that many more games. There's still quite a bit of work to do here. Still has to cover that. Still has a blot on the deuce to contend with. And all those things are going to buy time for Sanders to scramble around to home. Sanders somewhat blocked by the three points as well when, when Mochi doesn't hit. So he can still have trouble escaping. I think Mochi has the easiest time finding these plays when he can spend some time calculating how the game plays out a little bit after each option. So he's still going through sequences and numbers here and seeing how different roles will play and comparing them to just the quiet play and trying to figure out some estimation of gammons and wins and all these things. And it's a fairly pivotal play, so fine to spend some clock time on it, I'm sure. And he finally does reject that and just play down. Good find. Six two can't move again. Sander keeps finding, finding difficulty escaping the three prime. Prime. Okay, perfect hit and cover for Mochi. Six one. One of Sander's worst. Enters deep where he's primed and forces him to break a point. Four for Mochi is going to put him very well in this game. 6-5 is, wow, I would have thought just 29-2, but he immediately goes for the blitz on the ace, even though Sanders primed it already where he wants him. Um, so a small game plan error there. And I cannot imagine Mochi finding any recubes here. We look at these numbers and see that it's a fairly very clear recube for money. But when you're eight away and you send a four cube, uh, Sander can be pretty trigger happy in sending that back and canceling all your gammons. And this is the kind of game where a gammon could happen either way for sure. Um, but with high gammons, Moji's also considering that if he can get the cube on four, he can potentially win the match um, just in one game. So he wants to think about it, but thinks better of it. I get tempted by those plenty and tend to err on the side of sending massive errors, but wisely waits. Good decision. What does he get? One more fan and Mochi's going to think more about it? I really... I can't imagine how he's going to get to something cashable. He's just going to instantly be too good as soon as he's good enough. But he's going to think about it every decision here. I don't... Like, two points is... With this giant lead, do we really want to be to claim our six away. And look at that, it is a double pass, wow. He knows his stuff. I would not have dreamed of trying to catch this and just assume that it's too good to try to get to four away, but he knows that XG favors catching. He knows that he needs to be thinking about it in each spot and that the threats are better to just claim the two points. And it is not inconceivable that Sander would just decide to take this on the leverage of the cube. If he can enter with the three still ahead in the race, very likely to clean up that blot. And, you know, Mochi's going to win a lot of games when he rolls a four, but he's not a favorite to do so. 
he's been a favorite too over the last couple sequences, you know. Um, but he's missed a couple times now and still in a spot where where he just might not. And there's not really a lot of gammon threat in this position if he doesn't hit that blot. So when you're trailing this much and you get such a potent weapon to maybe turn it to eight and get a lead in the match, you gotta think hard about about just taking that up and trying it. I really have no concept of what exactly the take point would be or the gammon value. I just know that the recube, like Mochi's gonna have to be close to a favorite to take this eight cube from from Sander if it comes back. So Sander might be thinking about that as well. Maybe he factors in that and Moshi probably has a good idea of what's going on with this cube and does that mean that he's only sending it in a passable situation? But geez, he just snapped that over. He had it figured out. I I don't know. I don't think many people have studied exactly this kind of a four cube at eight away, 14 away kind of situation. But I have a strong sense that Mochi's one of the few people that knows this pretty well. Has played enough long matches and intends to win in these too, having been a world champion for so long. In these long match formats um yeah i think a lot of our ubc players someone someone like you know ryan rubella that we'll see in the final probably has no clue here and a lot of players don't they're just there's most players in the world have not been in this exact situation where you're getting a four cube at eight away 14 away um but i imagine mochi's seen this before <laughs> and studied it before might be one of the few ones and yes, I think I think humans just play for gammons here. That's absolutely what I would do. I don't know if I could find another person in the room that would consider sending this. Honestly. This is really amazing stuff we're seeing here. And I mean, frankly, it's really amazing that Sanders even thinking about it. It might be the kind of cube that that a lot of players would just snap take for the chance to get back to eight and try to play for the match with such a huge deficit. So it's something that you can find for sure. And it's not so far off, but it shows that Sanders got a pretty good sense of the game to be even thinking about trying to play out this game and whether or not he might have a take. And he's got a lot of clock time left. Left him room to figure himself out uh, a very difficult decision like this should it come up. That would be really exciting if he did take this, though, for, for a 15-point match to kind of go this quickly on such a decisive game. Six away is kind of an awkward score anyway. I I mean, I would probably pass this pretty quickly, too, though. I, I feel like I'm pretty dead. I When am I going to get a recube in? All these kinds of things. Um, I guess, again, like I said, though, if he gets missed and then enters with the three that cleans up, I think that's going to be a really strong cube with the with the racing lead and not pleasant to face an eight for Mochi at all and can potentially get in the lead in the match and just calculating how often that happens like it's a decent chunk and maybe enough and he's going to pass. Okay. Good find. Good find. What'd you say? I'm not sure what theoretical knowledge Sander has to figure that position out, frankly. Because I um, I had a sense in some of the UBC stuff that he didn't have a specific knowledge of some match score math. I really don't know. I really don't know what he knows. I, I thought um played a lot on intuition and kind of money reference is my assumption. Um, is UBC 2023 announced yet? Neil's going to show up? Oh, that's exciting. Uh, no, we don't have the details. We haven't even done the final yet. So after we do that, we'll probably figure out the rest. Um, but it's likely, you know, we've done it in Istanbul a couple years, kind of in springtime. So that is the most likely outcome that we'll be doing that again. It's been a pretty conducive tournament to do that in. Maybe in conjunction with the Stavdu again. I don't know. Two enters, can six just hop the prime with only four in the zone, not even leading the race? Yeah, you really just can't afford to slot in front with when outboarded and all these things, get another blot back potentially. All he really has is running. And Sander, now Sander has some pretty easy cubes to send. Four cubes coming back are very unlikely. And so with this advantage, he already has just barely enough to send. Uh, misses a small opportunity there. But again, if Mochi doesn't perform on this roll, it can be pretty easy to lose your market and have a pass. 1-6, for example, this is 
probably a monster pass. Maybe Sandro will consider taking a roll, trying to figure out how he gets back in, but I think Mochi will have an easy time just letting this go as well. Yeah, close to the borderline for money as well. Is this board for sale? Yes, not this exact board, but the Monte Carlo Grand Prix, the same model and everything, is on the Galaxy Shop. And the winner of the World Championship will win this exact board. Um, so yeah, it's a really nice setup. All right, better start for Mochi this time. A little bit for everyone, fairly even game so far. This looks like it should just make the five point. Great improvement for Mochi. See if uh, Sander can follow suit. He does not, but he does have the 11 point. Um, can't do anything about the back checkers. I think he's just stuck playing to the six like this, but small advantage for Mochi now. Double threes is going to improve that and make a five prime. Huge shot. Uh, he's thinking about the attacking play, with, but with only eight in the zone, it just seems like the clearly inferior game plan against two checkers, not at the edge. And if he can get his back checkers advanced, then maybe he can start to think about a cube. I think for money, we have fairly clear cube coming up here. But at the score, it's a little too potent of a weapon to be given away. With game left, your opponent has such strong recubes. You can't really afford to let go of it. Even if you get in a very gammonish position, then you end up just, it's better to play on for the gammon very quickly. So hard to find something there. With the prime, the priority should be to get the back checkers moving, I think, here, 23 to 18. But again, he wants to think about this blitzing plan. I'm kind of surprised how often he is. Um, seems to be like considering game plan positions like this, like the real strategy of the game. Um... I think I think he knows that having this five prime with three behind it is just huge and wins so many games. Um the eleven to six I'm not sure I follow either. This just feels like timing issues. And and really all we need to do to bring this checker home is play twenty three out to eighteen. And if we're hit, it's not so bad. The the nice thing about it too is that we still have that checker on the eleven to play with. But he's really concerned with winning a gammon and getting to four away, I guess. I do sometimes in long matches get into these um, thinking about how I'm going to get to the end and that I don't want to like claim a game and get to five and have to deal with more games there. It can be like frustrating in a way to have to, to play normal and play so many games to bring this patch home. So maybe it's something like this, just thinking about how nice it is to win a gammon, but just for like money games, I think 23 to 18, maybe that would be fairly instant form too. Interesting he hasn't even looked at it. It would be strange if he just didn't see that he could play that. But goes for the blitzing play. I guess assumes he's going to be it into to the end or something like this. And now he's going to think about whether he has a cube. This position, I feel like with an anchor, like it should be easy enough to take. But maybe, maybe it's passable just because of the even score idea. Yeah, no, no, we still have an easy take. We have... Something that would be uh, a clear pass for money that is just barely shy of a double at the score, and Mochi's going to find it. Again, just like knows these situations so well. Six away, 13 away. I don't know what's going on at the score. I know that I'm going to be very careful with the cube. Probably the simplest adjustment to me is just to basically get to the end game where nothing can change too much and you don't have swings and play from there. But here, Mochi could just have immediately a bad roll and put Sander in a spot to think about sending a four cube and making him play something awkward. Um, this is really, I feel like, counting on covering the three. And with an anchor at this sort of trailing score, is it really, it's passable for Sander. Okay, he doesn't know and is going to let this one go. A lot of times in these kinds of positions with work to do in the back checkers, uh, might not cover all these things. We can 
he maybe used the even or odd kind of scoreline thing. Doesn't want to let Mochi get to two away or something like this. And five away is not so much different than six away. Uh, found a reason to pass there. We're on a small break now, too. But again, that 28% wins should not be too surprising, given that Sander has an anchor and Mochi still has two checkers back to deal with. That just generates wins. Even if there's a lot of gammons, there's going to be a way to win eventually, and you're going to be able to take advantage of those with recubes so much easier than you can for money or something like that. Uh, oh, we got someone asking what time it is. Hey, Penny. It is 9 a.m. here. 10 a.m. No, it's not. I'm sorry. 9 a.m. is what my laptop says. What time it is here is 4 p.m. There you go. You got the adjustment now. 4 p.m. here in Monte Carlo time. Ooh, I'm catching up with happy birthdays, too. Man, this... uh. This has been a clinic in long, like the technical aspects of long match play for Mochi. I'm really impressed with this stuff. Haven't gotten to see so many matches where he plays this way. I gotten to see so much of his UBC stuff, but he's just finding everything right now. They're both walking around taking a small break here. <laughs> hey, Mochi, you want to come talk to people in the middle of your match? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we allowed to talk about like decisions during the match? What are the rules on that? All right, all right. Maybe they're showing things too. I think too. I played okay anyway because Sander drops the cube. You know? Yeah, Mochi I'm thinks he sure. played okay because Sander dropped the cube. Yeah, that's good instincts, but I, yeah. I think the last one is okay. No? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was just amazed that you found a recube at 808 too. That's wild shit. Uh, no, yeah, you got that one right too. No, that one was a pass. He was right in that one. Yeah, yeah. But they're all just, I don't know. I don't know how you know. <laughs> you know, like, no, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Just, yeah. But, uh, did you do like uh, win and gammon estimations and things like that to kind of, or uh, how did you decide maybe you could claim that game instead of playing on for a gammon? That's my feeling. Yeah. Just your feeling. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's five point ball. He has a block. You're getting a huge pass. Yes. It's like two good things. But yeah, yeah. He's four. It could be take guys. It was my mind, you know, but uh, yeah, uh, practically it's pretty hard for him to take it because it could be the last game, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> say I miss and he enters. But yeah. Like, okay, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. This one I wasn't sure. Double. So you did think about if he enters and um and you, you miss and he enters. I was thinking about that as well. I do. He might have a recube really quickly there, but but if you're still a favorite, yeah, 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 that's very interesting to have to consider through. But but I guess as part of it, you're just trying to give him problems and decisions. Then, like harder for him, you're probably close on your cube decision. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If you don't double. He's not gonna make a mistake. Yes. <laughs> if you do double, sometimes you get a long pass, right? Like, yeah. Like he did in the last game. Yeah, yeah. Very true. Very true. <laughs> Well, good stuff. It's been an amazing match so far. Still plenty of room to go with five points to gain. So, yeah. Very lucky so <laughs> yeah, it's been it fun down. to watch. Stay lucky. I recommend that. That's good. That's my All advice. Right. <laughs> cool. Get interviews mid match. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah people are worried that we're discussing in the middle of the match um i'm not sure that's an interesting we don't have like really strict tournament rules like chess for sure i have seen what they've implemented to deal with situations like that is that you're not allowed to look at software even have phones in the room all these kinds of things to make sure that no one's getting answers from engines in between um here it at least theoretically doesn't you know it doesn't impact his decisions going forward in any real way it's not like he has additional knowledge of the game he could easily on break go look at a laptop and get answers to a couple of key positions if he wanted to um, or someone could just tell him if he wanted to call up anyway. So 
And it's just, it's, that's the neat thing about backgammon is that even though they're still playing this match out, all those decisions are perfectly and entirely in the past. You can learn from them, but they aren't going to change any future decisions whatsoever. They're still at this new match score. They're still going to have different board positions, so not as big of a concern as other things, and, and I don't think it's like worth really accounting for or having rules around. I think it's better that you can just talk about it. Um, and really, for a player at his level, it's just not going to change anything either. But yeah, did how did I fare in Monte Carlo? I got to play the Open. I won three rounds in the main and then lost to Sean Williams, who's in the finals now, actually. And then in my one round in the consolation, I played Kazuki and lost to him on a four cube at eight away, eight away. That was a lot of fun. It was a scary one. I took like a break even gamanish position. That was weird. Maybe I should post that one. But uh, yeah, yeah. So I did all right there. I think I played okay too. But it was really nice to get to show up here and actually play an event. I came planning on doing all commentary, um, but got here early enough to play a little backgammon too. So that was a lot of fun. <laughs> is Mark playing or Dirk? Oh, um, Mark is not playing. This is now that he owns the tournament, kind of, I don't know exactly, or like runs it. You know, Art is the director here, but he's sort of the the guy putting all the teams together, putting Art's team together, and all the the content and streaming and all these things, like he's the organizer. Um, so, I mean, he's too busy to do that job in general, so he definitely can't play. Um, I haven't seen Dirk around yet. So I'm not sure if he's shown up for the World Championships or not, but he hasn't been here for any of the preliminary events yet. Um, a lot of other players in the room, though. A lot of uh, American players that we haven't seen at some of the other UBC events that we put on. Um, I think I've seen Steve Sachs and Wilcox Snellings is here playing. Um, a lot of top guys in the, the Super High Roller. Victor Ashkenazi is here, too. Um I don't know, just about all of the usual faces you'd expect to see. Chris Trencher, we've got it. it was on commentary with me yesterday, too. Posted, but we need transcribed, too. I don't know what we're talking about, but cool. Yeah, I know. I think people like those interviews quite a bit. There's actually all the documentary crews are doing interviews with Sander and Mochi to make something out of this match, too. Um, this should be good lead up to the, to the UBC finals too. That should be good content for, for what they're putting together. But it looks like the players are getting back in the room. Uh, always love to get to talk to Sander about backgammon too. Such a laid back dude. Uh, always like, you know, I don't know. But I guess like very humble about talking about backgammon skill and how much he knows about the game, but then just plays lights out all the time too. So, uh, very interesting stuff. Mochi forgot a drink or something, and then it's going back. Whatever. We'll get started really soon here. At uh, 5 away, 13 away. Tough start for Sander, but, you know, it's backgammon. You're always in the match. He's going to say to send aggressive cubes and can win a lot of games one point at a time pretty easily. Oh, more happy birthdays. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate that. interesting people running that cube too that's another fascinating thing about these score kind of situations when you're leading it's um almost never a sizable mistake of any sort for mochi to send that cube so it really is a pretty easy way of dealing with matches to just never cube with this big of a lead um but he understands it well enough to know when he's close and it can be okay and like he said in that little interview there um, you do present your opponent some opportunities to make some very difficult decisions and mistakes as well. So, I mean, you got to be the best in the world to handle it well enough to not potentially make a mistake of your own too. But we can see, you know, it's a consideration for some of the players at this level too, which is really cool stuff to see. Definitely not how I'm thinking about the cubes there. I'm probably just uh, playing that one on in all cases. I I have way too many gammons. 
Ah, are the colors the official color scheme? I, I assume so for this Grand Prix, Monte Carlo Grand Prix board. Yeah, the orangish red and the green, it does look really nice. I like it. It's different than anything else that, like, schemes that Galaxy has out too, so. Man, they put a lot of work into coming up with exactly how they want things to look too, so. <laughs> it's always, I remember him talking a lot too about usually whatever color checkers they have, they like to be offset with the points just a little bit. So it's like almost like a cream white or something that they have while the checkers are like a very bright white. So they stand out that way. Oh, is that the match equity CMC? 8614 at the score? I suppose I could look that up here. But yeah, when you think about it that way, it's like, it seems like a huge disadvantage in one way to be down so many points. Um, 16%, I mean, especially in back end, I don't know, 16% happens all the time. <laughs> you know, like uh, we'll see a whole bunch of 16% things occur before the end of the match. And so 16% winning chances in the match seem like a lot in a way that they don't always in other games. It's very strange. I love that about backgammon. Things just change a lot. How about uh, we do the UBC final maybe October? Yeah. We got the players at the board. Maybe we're waiting on the transcriber to get back in there, something like this, but... We should be getting going with more back in and quickly here. Oh, thanks for the happy birthdays in the chat again. Uh, World Cup starts. Mm -hmm. So you want to you wanna do it in I, October? I, it, well, actually, beginning of November could also be good. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But um, I don't want to miss uh, one game of the World Cup. Right, right, right. So right. Just it's a good place to be for my birthday. For that yeah. In one month. Yeah. I think uh, like end of the October. If yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. You, uh, so you're happy to do it in Japan? I love to. I wonder what they're chatting about over the board here. We, we discussed with Mark too. Yeah, we mm -hmm. visit Kuni and uh, yeah, it will just be fun, you know. I, uh -huh. I'm gonna go two weeks. And we play. I am slightly board. curious what their PRs are overall too. Sure. Um, of course, not relevant to this well, format or anything like that. But they've both been playing pretty sharp. No one making any giant mistakes. I think. Um, you know, the big thing I noticed is just like a tendency towards blitzing for Mochi for some reason uh, in some positions, just some strategic kind of questions. So a little off on that, but then just this extreme sharpness with the cube decisions. Crazy stuff. That could impact it too if somehow he feels more confident in what the cube action is after he makes that attacking play and just less clear on having any sort of decisions like that after the quiet play. Maybe that's incentive in some way to... <laughs> To try that play out. How is Hugo? Huh? Hugo? Yeah, yeah, he's he's great. He's okay. How old? He's ten. Oh, someone in the chat has I have three. inside information about about when the finals is happening. Apparently, okay. Maybe. I haven't heard end of October in Japan. That sounds right for some reason too. Um. Oh, the turnout. How many people turned up for the tournament? We have last I heard thirteen. And we expect enough rebuys to fill out this bracket of 16. We'll fill it, figure out exactly what that looks like. Um, and I think that's more than we were expecting. I think um, yesterday when we talked about it, like 8 to 10 was probably a good target. So filling out a full bracket of 16 has made this a pretty big tournament with a top prize comparable to what winning the, the world championship will be. Um, so this has turned into a really awesome event. Really excited about it. Um, I think we have more recreational players in there than usual too, which is really cool. I love seeing like a, a spread of skill levels getting involved and maybe we'll see someone that we don't know get into the finals, something like this. Um, a lot of exciting things that can happen in this tournament as a result. Um, but as you would expect with the high buy-in tournament too, we're going to have the absolute best players in there too. And they're tough to get through. So we could have some really interesting matchups that way. Hope we get to stream a lot of it. There's not a lot else going on in the tournaments um, here in Monte Carlo than the super high roller today in the finals of the Open. I think tomorrow might be when the World Championship starts. Um, and then some other like doubles and things like that on Wednesday. Um, but so we should probably still have some high roller matches happening tomorrow, things like that. 
But but yeah, we've got time till we start into the the main matchups and early rounds of that, and that should be a pretty large field as well. I think we're running qualifiers too, which are always really cool events to get in if you've never been out here to Monte Carlo. Um, the thousand dollar or thousand euro entry fee for the world championship, lower than it's been in past years, but still pretty steep. Um, so it's nice they run like eight and sixteen player or eight and four player brackets, I think it is, where I mean effectively you pay like very little vig on that and you can get into the main for cheaper too, which is cool. I, I would love to see more events with like higher buy-ins and satellite options like that happening kind of across the board it's a it's a cool way to get more people involved yeah the buy-in for this event was five thousand euros so with 16 players um whatever that's a high number <laughs> for the top prize um and i think they they take some small, like six percent out of it too. So relative the the fee on it is as common with like you know um, higher buy-in events. They don't have to take as much to make the same same kind of vig on it. So they're getting a decent amount by doing that too. Ooh, they're talking about the checkers. I wonder if they like them or not. But that matte finish on it is super cool. They're nice and weighty, super flat. Um, really cool equipment in there. But yeah, so five k euros for this tournament and. Uh, if it was less than the full 16 bracket, it was going to be winner takes all and let the players figure out if they want to hedge in the finals or something. But with a full field of 16, I think there's going to be a first and second place payout. So there can be deals made if you get to the final round of four, but it'll it'll depend quite a bit on who the players are and all these things like that. And sometimes there's hedging, sometimes there's not. You never know. Yeah. Oh, okay. I promised my daughter, you know, I, I win it for her. And if I win, I have to buy her a dog. <laughs> oh, okay. They were waiting for someone to ask what they were waiting for. I'm glad. Thank you. Thank you for that, Van Diesel. Now we're going. Threes is going to unstack the midpoint for sure. And then I guess just make the three point. Oh, it's not going to unstack the midpoint for sure. Wow. How do I leave six checkers on the midpoint? Okay. My default play is usually to make the 10 and the 3 anyway. And so with the 6 checker on the mid, I would do that for sure. Or 3, yeah, looks like it's just going to bring two checkers down because what else do we have? We could clean one up to the 5. That's a reasonable play too. Maybe it doesn't gain you that much. Um, and it leaves a lot of fly shots in a, in a game you're otherwise leading pretty simply. Actually, yeah, playing two down looks pretty big here for not enough of an apparent gain. Um, but it does look like slight favorite of that play on the four play, at least. Very interesting. Okay, they're both playing right around a four as well. So not like UBC clean kind of matches that we've seen from both. They're capable of other things, but both playing very well top level backgammon, of course. Thanks for the happy birthdays again. Uh, buy in smaller than poker. Yeah, yeah. We don't have any like million dollar events like poker or anything like that. Maybe someday with sponsorship and stuff, but okay. Mochi's gonna look at starting to escape here, which is a little bit further behind, simplifying the game. Um, but this really just you don't run with so many numbers. You probably give your opponent a better opportunity to split, you get attacked and pointed on more often. So this, it's a fairly safe place to camp with one checker on the 24. You you take away that that risk of being attacked and pointed on. So he just plays down, finds the best player. Really incredible. Sander says he should have played into the five. I kind of agree with him, but okay. <laughs> he insists it's much better than duplication, I guess, with making the five or something like that. Oh, it's fun to see these guys uh, be able to chat back and forth a little bit and have fun with like such a high buy in event too yeah best we can do now is clean up a blot and not create more shots and does sander have enough of a lead after that sequence to consider okay interesting he goes with a pure play and leaves more shots this should i think with this big of a deficit in the score draw a cube we're like right on the borderline okay not quite enough not quite enough but you can see even with just that 53 47 advantage 
that that we need to be pretty trigger happy with the Cuban really close already on Sander's side. I can't tell if Sander has a beer or just a water. Maybe he feels like he needs to loosen up a little bit. That's probably why we waited. So you could get some beer flowing through the system first. It takes a while to take effect, you know? Okay, Mochi has survived this sequence okay. What are we doing with this? Just making a blocking point. Great. Yeah, leave the four slotted. Wants him to hit, maybe. Okay. It's an idea. I would have thought about that as well. What is this? Is this a 4-4? Four, four? Getting a little glare on the dice. Doesn't escape the back checker, which is kind of the nicest thing for a Santa to do. I doubt there's going to be a huge positional improvement that he can make with this either. Um, this leaves a shot on the mid and disconnects from our back checker, which is why I think I prefer making the bar and the 2, which interacts with that goalkeeper on the 24 strongest here. Um, even though it makes a bar point or a board point, I don't think making the five point puts quite as much pressure on the back checker, strangely enough. And it doesn't leave the blot on the mid, so but when you have an option to make the five point, it's always a strong candidate. So it, it, it's a hard one to pass up. Such a huge improvement to your position. Gonna feel a little bit stiff to to play like this, but finds the best play. Very well found from him. Now, what does Mochi have? Is he lifting four to three here yet? Um, he could also improve his anchor and play. I don't think the the contact on the 24 is really benefiting him anymore. I don't see any other obvious quiet plays. Maybe 13, 9, 4, 3 is my, my preferred play tactically. Or he could just step up 24, 20, 4, 3 is an option too. Maybe that has the most mobility in it. I think I kind of like that best. Puts a little pressure on the outfield. Um, of course, if he wants to leave the blot slotted, he could just make a better point or a better anchor out of the 20. Um, but I don't see that as a sizable improvement here. So I think just avoiding the shot seems worth quite a bit. Oh, we're getting all kinds of updates on who else is playing in the pairings here. Awesome. Thanks for that, Jesper. And he does improve the anchor. Okay. Sanders got opinions about his place again. <laughs> He's going to tell him about <laughs> And now Sander feels like he has to think about the cube. And it seems like XG's recommendation is to play on. This is going to hit in the board for sure. And then we have to figure out our best way to, uh, to presumably hit the checker on the four point as well. The six to four switch feels premature. Hitting loose. Oh, we could just make the four point and ignore the the blot on Mochi's four point entirely, but I think making progress towards escaping is just too big. So I don't think we can do that either. So we don't want to hit loose and leave the checker there necessarily. I think this is worth looking at. But yeah, the pick and pass just plays a little bit better. It's very close though. Interesting. I really think this uh twenty three to twenty one has to be a piece though. I like that he's looking at the switch, though. It's just tactically very nice quite often. Again, like your biggest problem, back checker. So I, I think I want to rule this play out. But it does look pretty weird to find this 8-6-4 to six to four to deuce uh, lifting play. It feels like he still have a bit of work to do there. But I guess the other thing is that we, we don't have to make this position quite as uh, long-term stable as usual because he will be able to cash this game if like the next sequence goes well for him here we go he's looking at the 23 to 21 and realizing there needs to be part and this is a very close second uh place play very understandable risks nothing in the board doesn't create massive impurities so very understandable cubes coming and is mochi gonna even think about taking this um very interesting for money it feels like it should be I guess it's actually close to the borderline, but yeah, it gets a clear pass out of it. But it's one of those positions where I, I kind of enjoy that 6-4 to four switch because it, it should look less familiar to players too and make it harder to evaluate the position. Not going to work on Mochi, but he's going to try it. Try to give him problems to figure out. Thank you. 
Yeah, the name of the clock app is uh, Tempest. Tempest. You can buy that in the Play Store. Okay, great loose hit and cover the 11. Nice start for Mochi. 4-6 doesn't do a whole lot. Probably just runs is the best we can do with it. Um, duplicate some numbers that would cover on the five point. Get some freedom when your your opponent improves their board anyway. Doing decent in the race. Oh. And double sixes must cover the five points, I think. And then making the bar point looks pretty nice with that. And then we have to leave a blot somewhere. And Mochi's got to decide whether that's going to be... be um, on the midpoint or the 11 point and the midpoint is a double shot and the 11 point is a single shot feels very strange to give up the midpoint entirely here though but you you of course have to start by covering because you're not going to leave a direct four and so he's going to find these first three and i think he'll eventually arrive at the la the best play but it's a very unintuitive looking position not very normal to just give up your midpoint this early but confirms there's nothing else available and goes for it what is this? A 1-5, it hits, and then so what's our 5 with it? Without the midpoint. Yeah. Maybe it's only a 5-4 and a 3-6, so I'm tempted to come around for the distribution to the 9. I think this makes sense. And maybe Mochi would be thinking a lot about a cube in a position like this too if the score were different. I think he's going to be waiting at 5 away, 12 away for quite some time. But he's got the way better structure. And those four fly shots are worth quite a bit. Once he enters, if Sander doesn't do something very strong, um, he's going to be threatening to turn that into a five prime as well. Yeah, these plays are very close. Giving up the four numbers is pretty huge. Uh, but the distribution and, and Sander's been tending towards the stacks today. Mochi's going to go for the wide open split and maybe a six to five, or he can just make an anchor and be in this game to the end. I probably get tricked into making a big play here, just thinking my board's so much better that I'd rather have the distribution. Um, but in front of those two stacks of five, making the 22 has a lot of merit too to make sure double fives don't blow you off the board or something like this. Three six is a great escaping number for Sander. Keeps him alive in this game for sure, even leading it now. And Mochi is going to have the race lead. Oh, he gets to hit. Didn't even see that. Just uh, improving to the bar point anchor is pretty strong too. Gets a back checker moving and clear command of this position again. For two, we don't have a good four to play anywhere. It's coming into the under the gun under a lot of pressure to enter on the 21. But entering on the 23 is just voluntary priming ourselves and also creating a bunch of direct shots. So something like this is our best. Playing around 14 to 12 is a little better to avoid creating a stack of six. Um, but very reasonable choice. And now Mochi again knows that he would have a money cube for sure and has to decide whether or not it's worth sending out the score. Sure enough, he had a tiny cube there that he misses this time around, um, but decides to play on again. And okay, Xander anchors up and leaves himself pretty okay in this position, somewhere where we probably wouldn't even be thinking about sending a cube for money. But... Um, Mochi can consolidate this into a racing win or situation kind of thing against the uh, anchor game. Um, then the cube doesn't behave so much differently. Then he can definitely think about sending it again soon after this. But I think we take a step towards escaping, probably just step up under the gun. Why not? Okay. Going to consolidate the prime and make it ready to clear instead. That's a very reasonable play as well. And Sander with a 2-1 is going to play for the win by hitting for sure, apparently, here. Okay. That's quite scary to have a blot sent back. But, yeah, you're fairly dead in the game if you don't make some play for it now, and you at least still have an anchor. So he's got to find his best ace with this hit to buy a tempo. It's only a two-point board for now, too. So, okay, finds a 13-12 to 12 switch. Sure, sure. All very similar. Mochi misses, but enters and runs and is close to consolidating a racing game again. Sander misses and is just going to cover. 
And so Mochi should have a fairly easy cube with so much racing lead. And Sanders just going to let it go. No adjustments to be made at the score in simple racing games. It's more when there's gammons and recubes that, that we have to be very careful. And that's going to bring Mochi to four away now. Getting there one point at a time. Can you give me one minute just to get a beer? Okay. Yeah. Walk, take a walk. <laughs> take a walk. <laughs> no. I need energy. For vodka? Champagne. Oh, I thought you said water. Uh, no, 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 no. no. Oh, I think he probably needs another beer. Stand here real quick. Okay. Short beer break. I I imagine that uh, Mochi's not going to complain about spending a minute or two <laughs> to let his opponent go get that. Should be careful, though, because it certainly might help. And returning to the board quickly here. Yeah, four away, twelve away. Now Mochi's just one doubled gammon away from winning the match. Twelve points is a lot to make up for Sander. Maybe I went on time. Simple split. Three one, I think, just makes the five point anyway. Even though we volunteer the six, the structural improvement's so great. Five three is gonna make Mochi's first points. And now with a fairly clear structural advantage for Mochi, it's tempting or for Sander. At this kind of score line, it's pretty tempting to send a cube. I think it's reasonable. It's hard to see the exact market losers, but what they probably look like is just an improvement for Sander, followed by no improvement for Mochi. He's gonna hold off correctly. But again, we're very close to a cube. Um, just goes for a distribution with this uh, two ace instead of thinking about splitting, not leading the race. So fine to just play offense there. No rush for him to split against the structure that Mochi has. 5-3 could maybe start converting to a racing game plan by running one of the back checkers. That seems like the best strategic thing we have, given that we've already made the three points. I would be inclined to run from the front for some reason. I'm not really sure why 24 to 16 is better to run from the, the back instead. There's some idea of duplication there. Sits on fours on both sides. What happens the other way? We give threes. I'm not sure I see the difference there. Yes, fours must be like a pointing number. Threes less. Eh, they're about the same. Okay, not much has changed in the position, but Sanders is going to think about it again now that he has. Um, could just hit in the outfield and a fan could be a fairly clear market loss. So any of these moments, it's fine to send a cube. Um, always tough to be quite as certain at such a dramatic score difference, but he's going to give it a think. Probably just to try and decide, is he a favorite? Are there gammons in this position? Um, using some some heuristics like that to, uh, to decide if it's worth sending the cube. Again, it's going to be super hard for, for Mochi to find a recube to four when that's just automatically going to come back to eight from Sander. Um, so it's pretty safe to send early cubes at this score. You don't have to worry about recubes at all. What can he do with this 6-2, though? If he was racing better, it'd be tempting to just run from the back. But given that he's down, it seems better to keep the anchor and bring a checker into the zone. It's just unfortunate that it stacks up on the five like this. No reason to leave shots for Tempo to escape, though. So logical play. Mochi can finish escaping a checker. And does he want to play for distribution down to the 11? Or just clean up the blot? I think with the racing lead, probably playing safe makes more sense. The fly shots hurt quite a bit. And if you get hit loose on the deuce, you have a liability to deal with as well. And now Sander being down in the race is going to play for his structural advantage by hitting loose on the two. Bring another checker into the zone. Mochi performs and hits back. Four comes down for building. And he is equalizing the position, staying alive. 
And a fan from Sander is really inopportune here. 4-3 from Mochi makes the best uh, available board point. Sander fans again. And now Mochi's got a clear lead in this game. And he, against three checkers back, is going to think about the cube. And once again, this is going to get at least more similar than usual to money play in that the recube's really scary. He hates giving this kind of weapon to Sander. Um, however, his gammons win him the match, and so Sander has to be careful about that side with so many at stake. And I think with any wins available, you just need to play this out and play for the recube again. But we're in exactly the same situation where Mochi generated a pass earlier in the game um, at the... Forget what it was. Was it a recube at 8 away or something like this? Um, where Sander spent a lot of time thinking about that. We can see in the numbers there that it's like a clear money pass, but just shy of a double for at this score. Mochi, I think, knows it with that little smirk on his face, hoping to create a pass out of that one again, but gets taken. Probably knows that it's pretty clearly a take as well. Um, doesn't succeed in getting a bluff through on that one. But still in a good position to win the match, not too sad about it. And when is Sander going to send a recube here? Just a situation like this where he's canceling gammons and has some real winning chances can be enough to threaten and send that cube back. It has to come back very aggressively. Any market loss is going to be intolerable. Very potent cube that he's got coming. So what is... This doesn't do a whole lot, though. Can we just play to the four point? 11 to four is a possibility, or getting a back checker moving seems nice as well. Um, yeah, 23 to 18, six to four. Keeping the contact is not one that I would expect to find. Duplicates aces, I suppose, and makes a bid at a stronger anchor. 23 to 18 and, and 11 to nine feels like a pretty logical play as well. All your checkers on the front side are ready to build points. You don't have three ch uh, checkers trapped behind structure. Maybe you improve your anchor. Lots of good that can come from this. Mochi finding quiet plays, which are a bit scary to, to be dealing with against this two cube. He could run into trouble and, and get recubed in this game for sure. This I don't I don't understand dealing a builder. They're they're very close. But I guess you get some aces that play nicer and make a deuce point here. Um, but I'd be just thinking about clearing the 8 point coming down to the, or sorry, clearing the midpoint and coming down to the 8, even though it makes a stack of 5, progressing this towards a simple race. Um, but finds a candidate play, that's fine as well. 4-3. What is this going to do? Again, doesn't naturally make a point. I guess the deuce is the best we can do with it. Um, we're happy to keep the contact and keep trying to generate wins, even though Sanders... Afraid of gammons, it's more important to play for the wins and the recube here. Um, running looks pretty natural at a normal score, probably to to reduce gammons and just sit on your ace point game that's well times. But this controls the outfield. It's going to make a lot more of uh, Mochi's rolls next roll awkward, and there aren't so many like numbers that point on your head or hit on the or anything like this. And so, like, this would actually be, like, probably simpler for Mochi to play if there wasn't a, a checker to taunt him on the, on the bar there. Now making the bar point while hitting looks pretty strong and has a different candidate move. Maybe just to the 7 and the 5 for distribution with this looks pretty strong. Yeah. I think this is going to be his best play now. But, of course, had he just ran around, he would, Mochi would have been very happy to just make the 4 point there. So a little bit of why he could get away with staying on the bar point there for Sander even when he's hit. 6-4 is not the best there. This plays to the 3, yeah. Okay, and he's got some problems coming home. Sander still sees a lot of the outfield. Which is very nice. Um, I think he's still... Ooh, I would have thought he was still playing on the front side here, but I can't see how. And so he has this nice tactical opportunity to play out to the 17. What numbers is this going to create? Sixes are forced to come off of the midpoint. And so now he's going to get a double direct shot, or at least a direct shot on like a 6-2 instead of indirect, 6-3, things like this. So yeah, there's some tactical advantage to doing this. This is a tricky play to find, to play out to the 17 and just volunteer a 5. But all the 5s are, most of the 5s are pretty well duplicated with numbers that make the deuce point anyway. Um, 
very strong play to even be considering for Sander. I think part of what's going to get him to find this play is the lack of alternatives as well. None of the fours play particularly well. You don't want to give up the midpoint here. You don't want to play to the three. Um, you don't want to not slot and have to play two down and give up contact to the midpoint. So I, I expect he's actually going to find this play for lack of options. I think... I think it's it's a little unintuitive, but these kinds of things come up late in the game very often. Good find from Sander. And now six is our Mochi's Nightmare here, the six deuce. This is going to generate the direct three. And will the shot be enough to consider just sending the cube for Sander? He's going to lose a lot of gammons. No, he's saved most of his gammons, so maybe there's not a lot of stake that he's canceling here. But even with these like high 30s numbers, you can consider a recube already at a score like this. Making sure that you're always cashing on the opportunity of, of the shot and winning and not losing your market. So again, he can't close the four point though, which is really frustrating. I think giving up the contact could make a lot of sense here now. But again, we have the bot recommending that he stay there for awkward numbers that would maybe create a point otherwise. Ah, like this, once again. Mochi would happily be making the four point, but is forced to deal with that blot outside now. And this is interesting too. The DMP play is fairly clearly to not hit and just pass and try to play an ace point game. One would think that you want to play for a gammon because of the four points to win the match. He's going to think about just making the point too. And I think this is quite a bit of ways off. But um, yeah, when you hit, you kind of preserve... Sanders timing in his wins in a way by doing this too. And so the quiet play of just playing pass without hitting is favored at the score. Very surprising. I would have trouble to find that. They're, they're very close. Maybe they're close for money as well, just because of the difficulty that Mochi has bringing this home. Sanders gotten a lot of value out of this extra contact, though. He's made some very important plays for winning the most. Well, Sanders going to help him rewind a little bit. Very nice of him. Looking for more candidate plays, too, and options. There's so many very comparable ones here, but volunteering a shot immediately seems like quite a bit, especially when you increase the, the gammons. You know, the more I look at this, too, this it feels like that could be the... The DMP play in a lot of ways to just make the five prime and good luck to your opponent rolling two aces and two sixes to escape it. But the hit's worth quite a bit, especially if you enter on the ace. Um, four three. He's coming in there for sure. And then we want to keep the ace point in the long term contact. We get to make the board. Great shot for Sander. The four, very awkward distribution. Mochi again, going to have a lot of trouble bringing this home and very unlikely to win a gammon too. I think, oh, he wants to leave that and avoid being pointed on. Yeah, I don't see any gaining rolls of staying there. You run out of time a little too often. Okay, good find from him. And he's sharpened when he needs to keep the end game contact and when he needs to, to start running and just preserving his timing. He's doing really well in this game. Getting all the crucial decisions right. I think it's the beer. 4-1, I expect we clear the bar point, but he wants to find some other play that doesn't create this 5 stack on the 6. I mean, these stacks are very awkward. There's going to be a lot of shots from here, but at least we're taking checkers off next roll. And he's still going to have shot leaving rolls if he plays both off the 6 point. So, and we might have like real disaster rolls after that too. So he's going to realize that he can just clear. Okay, it's a nice play from Ochi. Ooh, the high roller is full already. That's exciting. I want to wonder who all the rebuys were. 6-2 from Sander. I don't think he's going to think about coming off the anchor. What is the thought here then? Because if you're not, then 7-8 to eight seems pretty standard along with 9-7. to seven, So just 9-1, to one, sure. And then you're prepared to close your 6-point board. at the back of the prime slotted if you want to think about it that way too. Everything's looking really good from that play though. So is he hoping to create some additional number that Mochi doesn't have by coming off the anchor? I have trouble seeing it. Double fives leaves a shot. 
if he leaves the anchor. Okay, so he's considering whether he should just play both in to consider to save a gammon later for the crossovers. I think that's the real decision, and whether or not he wants to risk being pulled off of his anchor with a six more immediately. That's a decision for sure. It must save more gammons to bring two in. Well, I guess it must not necessarily. If pulling a six off or getting if leaving your anchor with a six gets you pointed on a little more often, you could lose more gammons that way, but but you get the crossovers. And that's kind of a key to saving the gammon when you when you run with one from the back as well. So yeah, trying to decide between wins and gamming saving a little bit already. And he's going to come off the anchor and make the 6 prime. I'm surprised. Um, feels early for that. But again, I guess he creates some... I'm not sure how big of a deal this is. How big of an error it was. But again, it does create that double 5 shot lever. And it's probably... What is it? Just like 5-2, two, double 2s. Yeah, he creates... Uh, double 2s are pretty different. There's a huge swing on those ones. But okay, goes for a little bit of balance in gammon saving. 4-2 is going to close the ace and ruin the uh, contact. This is why you don't like to leave for sure. But he's saved quite a few gammons. There's maybe like 10% available here, something low like that. Even less, okay. Less than 5%, okay. With a closeout, maybe it'd be 10%. And Mochi has to think about ripping to try to win more gammons. But again... Most likely, just winning is going to be more important at a score like this and when the gammons are so low. There are a few more at stake and more pips outside. Then we would think again about playing more aggressively for the gammon. I don't see a lot of it here, though. Yeah, CMC pointing out that there are bad twos in general after keeping the anchor. Um... Small oversight, he was doing really well at the contact and missed that one. But it's interesting how many of those tough decisions he got presented in a row there. Uh, oh, we got to die to land on the outside of the board. 2-1 is a fan. All right. Sixes is going to leave a shot. And, wow, this is a tricky... He's just going to roll and try to save the gammon first, I guess. Okay. Because he can still save the gammon after he misses. So he can't give the cube away quite yet. Now the gammon's getting more real. Okay, we had a slight misplay in the transcription on the bear off. That's, that should... What'll happen? Will it transpose? I don't know. We'll find out. Don't worry about it. Maybe they're... Uh, four, three, okay. Needs to save the gammon to stay in this match. And how many are there now? Yeah, the transcription's slightly off of the position we can see, but it shouldn't impact anything. Yeah, not a huge deal when it's... Uh... Oh, this'll save all the gammons? Yeah. Okay, we're playing another game. Rolled well enough to keep it, and now I'm going to face Mochi at a two-way score line. Two-way, 12-way. Lots of work for Sander here. 13, three. Might have a... Uh... We're taking a small break here, it looks like. Okay. Maybe I win three gamuts. <laughs> Unlikely. I 
3.75% from 12 away, 2 away. Okay, okay. That's not one I had memorized, but I believe it. I found out it's probably not a mistake. Probably like 20 mistakes. You have to oh, nice. Twice. Guessed four and we're that close. That's pretty good. Very small mistake. You know, the I high roller is full of 16. I can't wait to see what that whole bracket looks yeah, like. This is such an exciting event. Um, 5,000 euros to buy in, which means 80,000 in prive pool minus the 6% big is, uh, what is that? 800 times 6 is like 4,800, so like almost 75,000 in the prize pool. Yeah. Whole prize will go to the top two. Um, what will that? It would be like a 2 to 1 split or a 3 to 1 split, something like that. Um, so I don't know exactly what the payouts are going to be, but they're going to be... Close to as much as the world championship on its own, just for this small 16 player field. So it turned into a pretty strong yeah. event here. I like that a lot. Oh, did the transcriber? Oh, he might have resigned from Ochi or something like this. And so they're just fixing it so they can continue the transcription at the right score. Okay, good. Mark's going to help him clean that up. Yeah. And now we're ready. Oh, I didn't even notice Mochi's PR explode either. Yeah, yeah, it's small, small mistake to. Uh, well, actually, I don't think PR always accounts for resign errors, so unless they have that setting on specifically. All right. After making the four point, then Sander can make two board points like this. Three two is gonna split right away. Okay. Yeah, against only eight in the zone, it's kind of safe now and about to get a lot worse. So now's the time. Sander already has to, with uh, board advantage, think about cubing at this 12 away, 2 away score line where the cube's actually dead now and never coming back. And it looks quite reasonable to me. If he hits loose and gets away with it or makes the four point, he'll have gained way too much. Hitting in the outfield as well, pretty strong. So again, these numbers, so just a tiny favorite. With 20 percentage gammons is plenty to send at the most sensitive scores in backgammon. When we're right at the end of the match like this. And yeah, we had some potential last game for redoubles. Uh, never saw one. But I think towards the end it was better for Sander to not give Mochi the match on on every every time he, you know... Well, exactly what happened. It's possible for Sander to not hit the shot and then still save the gammon. And so hanging on to the cube hangs on to that big a little bit. <laughs> Sander asking him if it's a cube or not. <laughs> 12, 12, 12 singles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're both doing pretty reasonable on time, too. You know, they've spent plenty of it thinking about decisions, but not really likely to be under pressure by the end of the match. Uh, eventually could be if they play enough games out. You know, it's going to take a lot of games for for Sander to get to a win here. So if he can keep hanging on, it could happen. Oh, someone thinks he should... I think Sander plays very well when he's drinking the Heineken. Yeah, I wonder... I wish I knew Sander's game better, too, to understand exactly what he's thinking about with the cube decision here. And trivial take for Mochi, he knows that. And uh, hit and split seems quite reasonable. And this is the sequence we talked about. This would probably be a fairly easy pass for Mochi now. So he's glad he got the cube in in time. Four covers. I think three makes a bit at escaping. Oh, it can play down for offense too. Okay. Does give your opponent some sort of six to play from the bar. But picking up that other checker is very nice too. I'm sure that's the idea that Sander had. So now either one or two down. We could play to the eight and see the deuce point. We don't have a 10 checker to cover it anyway, so seems prudent. Two six hits. And Sander hits from the bar. Keeps the blitz going. Nice. Mochi's helping him out with hits now. I love it. They're just going to play fast style. Okay. Yeah, so Sander chooses to keep the checker moving instead of leaving returns from the roof. Okay. Would have had pressure on that blot too. That's an interesting thing about staying on the 20. That would have been nice. Makes the fry prime still in the driver's seat here. Mochi needs to do a lot of work to uh, get back in this. Okay. Hits and steps up to the edge. Very strong. Aces is just going to... Those are the only ones available. Only one more that he can play safely without destroying position. 
Five two doesn't do too much. What can we do with this? We can make the nine point, and then what's our five? And I, it is hard to to find playing behind the ace. This is a pretty <laughs> give up play, but for one roll, it must create some awkward numbers that could turn into a prime later. Even though we've we've done a very destructive thing in dumping a checker to the ace. And yeah, Sander just wants to get his back checkers moving before he runs out of time on the back. 4-1. What can this do? This can just cover the ace now that we've slotted it, I guess. Probably your best chance to deal with those back checkers later. She's so lovely. Yeah. You won two times world championship, right? And she won two times. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wins two years in a row. 3-1. Okay, the prime holds against the back checker, so I think we're just going from the 18. Uh, interesting. Okay, I'm not sure what the difference is between the 14 tactics and the distribution 7-6, to six, if that's about the, the checker in the in the board being stronger, or if we are duplicating some number. Works out well, though. 6 out, I think, has to be the start. And then we don't want to break any points, so sure, just keep it going into a double shot. That's a little tough. Well, you asked. <laughs> oh, Sander makes a suggestion. Thinks out and... Oh, duplicate fives. Yeah, okay, okay. Sees an option there. Yeah, it just gets going. I think that makes a lot of sense. Eight to six is close, okay. Six, five. The five's going to hit. The six can't escape yet. So I think keeping the midpoint while we still have a block back makes some sense. So just playing into the four is fine. Two four is gonna enter and yeah okay we want to keep our the back checker primed we got a volunteer shot somewhere Mochi sees that really quickly six down and then five could play the ace or can volunteer directly on the edge of the prime interesting that's a tough decision now six is escape with tempo uh, okay five four I think is just playing quietly to the four point what else do we have. Once again, it's our only way to keep structure in front of that blot. And still hoping that this gapped prime of sorts holds. And it does for one more roll. All right, Mochi finding a little life out of this. The six is huge. Uh, three, two, I think is just going to be safe again. Nine to six and four to two. And just hoping that Sander can't roll the two or four and finally escapes as was expect expected. Six is for Mochi, still pretty strong here, I think. Any single six to get that third checker on the 23 moving in part of the battle on the front is strong. Yeah, this 5-4, you could slot the 5 instead of making it. The 8's likely to go to the 3. 4-5 it was. <laughs> 2 one it's not so urgent to cover the ace. If we move the 14 checker, it's going to come into indirect range, but there's a blot on board. So, yeah, just getting closer to safety makes a lot of sense to me. I like this play. Or two could cover or could play indifferently, but yeah, sure. Mochi's going to choose to be ready for the fly shot again. And still really needs that six out. And rolls the double fours to crack first instead. That is worst case scenario for Mochi. It's going to be very difficult to win this game with a shot now. Um, Sanders still making an awkward job of coming home. And the five one, okay, not destructive at least. I think, I think you want to leave your your blot in place. Oh, we're going to have a transcription problem with this one now. And six five is going to leave the double shot. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, is the transcriber going to try to fix this position? He's off by a whole roll here. So he, he missed an earlier play. If he can figure out how to enter an illegal move, he can solve this. But um, yeah, unfortunate. He has to go back a couple moves to do this. To fix it. I might go. Uh, yeah, here we go. He realizes the fours got played differently. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I think if you hit you win. This is how it goes, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bro. 
Well, no, nope, that's not the one. Uh, Alright, we'll get caught up on the transcription real quick. Huh? Oh, you wanna... Steve's offering whatever these crazy, like, 20 to 1... Well, it's like a million in this game, too. I guess he's likely to win this one, so I don't know what the odds are. You're from Denmark. I thought you were from uh, Portuguese. Oh, he does not have a Danish passport. But... Uh-huh. <laughs> you heard so much Danish in your life. It's Mark getting me. Hold on. He's like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Six fire. <laughs> Basically, you know, he, he rolled 5 1 before. Yes. And he plays like this. Maybe, maybe they put 4 1 or something. Aha, uh -huh. uh -huh. okay. By the way, don't roll, don't roll 4 1. How do I do that? I don't know. Backgammon book voiceovers? <laughs> Sure. I should talk to you about that. Okay. Sure. <laughs> oh, we're on a short break here while they try to clean up the transcription on this, it looks like. The players left the chairs. I don't know where they went. What a perfect time for it, too, after Sander rolls the 6-5 and leaves the double shot in the bear off. Pretty brutal time for it. it take a couple moves to fix it. Um, oh, I think they got it wrong here again. Yeah, so they got to get the 4-4, right? Yeah. Five two, yeah. Oh, we're almost there. Four one. No, five one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just to clean up. I thought he would have wanted to leave the blot active, but maybe you interesting. And now the six five and they're back. They did it. They needed Mochi and Sanders help to remember what the plays were, I guess, a little bit. Shot. Are you alright? Yeah. Okay. Good. We're good to go. Well, everyone wants a sign back. I'll let them know. <laughs> okay, the 4 6 hits. Mochi's back on his path to trying to win this match. <laughs> Thanks, Mate. You helped him fix it? Yeah, everything's fixed now. Hooray! <laughs> and now. This is interesting. Why is the two out stronger here? I might have gone to the thirteen, but it keeps uh keeps double shot at that checker. The can it doesn't contain the outfield as well. Very interesting find. But I guess he just really needs to pick up that second checker to buy the time to come around with all three of these checkers, and that's why it's so important. Now he can these are very difficult plays. It's hard to figure out what the tactile advantage of any of them is. I, If I'm coming out, linking up seems nice, but this is obviously better coverage. 6-1, 5-1 aren't such great shots really anyway. So this is going to see the most of the outfield when Sander rolls some escaping number. I don't think he's too worried about saving Gammons against this position anymore too. So Mochi's made quite a bit of this position. Both of them playing really well, we can see overall, too. Someone asking why you can't just remove move. You can, but the issue that would happen in the transcription there 
is that they had the incorrect move a couple plays back. And so getting to the position to exactly where it ended up was a little bit tricky. Uh, there is a way to do that too, but um, found it easier to just kind of correct the plays along the way and get it right that way, I guess. Yeah, I think the players are pretty patient because they, I don't know, they understand the value of like getting this out to people that people are watching that it's nice to have the transcription thing and I don't know, it's not a big deal to have to wait a little bit. 5-1, small five, swing on this. <laughs> Sanders teaching him a lesson about why he should know left that plot there. Oh, if that's the reason that Mochi gets gammon in this game though, that would be pretty wild. Even after finding the best play. 2-1, okay. A little bit for everybody in this play. And now, again, how on earth do you decide between shuffling outfield checkers or checkers in the board 4-3? to three? They all look the same to me. <laughs> Oof. Staying as far back as possible. You love the checker on the 17. Yeah, 4-3 to three seems like a logical play to me. I probably would find that as well. Cleans up, makes the points, and it should, fortunately for Mochi, even though he's got two checkers in the outfield, even when he doesn't enter here, Sander doesn't really have the time to pick up all of them. So he's going to advance here, and he can duplicate on double sixes, I guess, is part of the idea of thinking about staying back instead of giving a 6-5. Maybe it gives him more ways to hit as well. But he has to roll the six immediately, basically, to hit the first checker. When he misses that, he ends up just, uh, yeah, he can play five to two one more time. But this is his last chance to pick up either checker, and it's only going to be one three pretty much. It picks up both. The board distribution is going to be very weird. So it's harder to pick up three checkers than it looks like in a position like this. And he doesn't have the closeout when it happens. <laughs> and six five misses but saves a ton of gammons by consolidating those two blots and once again even even if mochi gets hit with a four here with only 16 pips outside and not of pure closeout. He's going to still save a ton of gammons. Um, this play, I think, just gets hit a bit too much more often with with roughly the same number of pips outside. Maybe more in some iterations. So I don't think it actually gains the pips that it might look like otherwise. So I think he'll find the best play here. Keeps more contact. So it could be that it wins slightly more to stay back. And he's considering that aspect of the play. Down to two and a half minutes, though, so if the uh, Vander keeps hanging on here, he's going to need some of that clock time, potentially, to make decisions later. Um, so he's got to start thinking about that for sure. 6-5, okay. Very likely, Sander will come out of this game with a two-point win. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> Someone kicked the camera. <laughs> <laughs> who did who did this on purpose? Who wants a break right now? I have no idea. They, they always they what happened? Single, single. <laughs> yeah, of course, single is like there. Tell me when it's perfect. Which way did it go? So Steve's looking for nine to one bets. That's always fun. This way? Is that the right way? Yeah. Tell me when to stop. More? I did not like that six three. Good. Yeah. Well, do small. I'll take ten to one on the Canadian dollars I have. <laughs> I, I do some, I Wait, I get to pay in Canadian. I don't know. <laughs> oh, close. Maybe we could even it out a little more. Three one. Three one. And two are guys off. Yeah. And then what you also five two. <laughs> I don't know, did you play it or did you not? No, no, I didn't play it. 
You did not play. Huh? No. Oh, okay. okay Good. Yes. Good to go. Okay. We got Tyra in there too. She'll be able to straighten it out a little better. Maybe after this game or something. It has to go that way. Uh, Mochi could still theoretically win this game. Very unlikely, but he saved the gammon for sure. That's a huge first step. So they'll roll it out and see. Sander doesn't find an extra miss. And Mochi resigns the game. Okay. We're on to 10 away, 2 away. And I think Tar is in there to fix up the camera a little better than this, too. We're going to stay crooked for now, though, I guess. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh. There we go. That's a lot better. <laughs> Four one. What can we do with this? Just 13 to 8 looks like the... Okay, he finds this, this uh, more flexible play instead. And again, Sander trailing 10 away, 2 away with a small advantage and threats of pointing out ahead and such, I think has a fine cube once again in just a fairly one-sided early game position. Never has to worry about the cube coming back. These are super tight, but he's finding all these borderline cubes pretty much with ease. It's, uh, so his understanding is pretty good at these scores too. Good stuff from him. And he gets to hit twice. Amazing. <laughs> The documentary team caught the camera with the boom. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> That'll happen. All right, Mochi anchors. Huge improvement to his position to not be under the blitz threat really anymore. But still a solid advantage for Sander. Um, off to a good start to claiming another two points. I think Mochi's got to go for the win here and hit. What else? I mean, he has to leave... Uh, only other option is to enter deep and play behind. But, you know, it's with the anchor, you can still, you're not going to lose so many gammons when you go for this, and you can still win the game. So, feels worth trying. So, this double ones, wow, this is not, usually this would be a very strong roll. Not so big here. Maybe just stepping all the way up and trying to escape seems fine. You don't love when your opponent rolls a number that covers and also hits, since that is where they'd like to hit loose. But for lack of better options as well, it seems like a nice ace to spend. 6-2 either covers or hits in the outfield. Gives some nice choices there. I think covering feels a little stronger here. Yeah. Mochi finds that play. Pretty easy. 5-2 is going to cover and come out. Try to escape to the winning race now. And if Mochi hits with the 3-1, he's got to give up his midpoint, so... Nice to challenge a stripped midpoint like that as well. 4-1 enters and hits. And the gammons are shown back up in this position on a fan. Two even numbers looks that way. The five picks up the second checker. And will bring a bunch of ammunition into the zone. I think 12-7 uh, to 7 for diversity of uh, builders too. And I guess we can remake the 11. This looks pretty nice. Finds them all in order. And Sander looking good to win four points maybe in a game like this too. Yeah, just make sure the position is right. Thank you. 
And entering one pretty strong for Mochi. Being able to make the ace point uh, is going to increase his, his wins, and Gammon saved quite a bit here, so Sander's going to fight hard to keep him off that point by hitting loose. The switch is going to bring more checkers active to closing another point, so I kind of like that idea. Um, it does start to remove the prime. Oh, he could switch and prime that point by playing 8-7 to seven as well. Yeah, all these look very close. Um, very reasonable actions. The 13 to 12 and just like adding in a blot actually seems the strangest to me. I, I can't quite find the value of that one. I guess you have more indirect covers for something. You just leave everything placed the way you want. But yeah, the hit's going to be for sure. I get Sanders' confusion about which ace is going to be best here, though. So he's going to spend a little time trying to sort out between many good competing options. Tricky play. And they're both playing cleaner and cleaner as the match goes on. Might both be under three by the end of it. That's really impressive stuff. Oh, were people really upset about the crooked board for a bit there? <laughs> I didn't see it. Uh, I didn't personally fix the cam, but uh, someone did. Okay, so he got to hit away with the loose hit. Got to hit loose on the five again. Mochi does not hit back. And now Sander, I think, in the driver's seat for a gammon, especially after covering that five points. Yeah, check her in just to get closer to bearing off. Makes a lot of sense with that final deuce. Mochi would like to roll a bunch of threes very quickly to uh, to save the gammon, to start getting to play tips around and play pips from his anchor, get his board ready for contact, and maybe even win the game. Um, but he's in tough shape here, under a lot of pressure. 3-1's going to enter one. Very nice roll for him. 4-4 four, four is going to make a lot of good progress for Sander. Just brings two checkers in. Yeah, it's that or make the nine behind it with the last one. All fine, though. Usually you like to leave the blots around and not create points to clear all your opponents on the roof in one-sided positions like this. Three and then five in would leave a shot on double sixes. So um, playing 10 to five at least avoids that. The distribution sure does look cleaner when you play 11 to 6. Uh, very understandable to play this way. Sometimes you can overthink that uh, double 6 is leaving a shot kind of concept. 3 enters, 4 is going to start a point. And gets a crossover for the gammon saving too. Pretty nice. And okay, Mochi just needs to get those checkers. He definitely doesn't want to lose a backgammon here. So taking checkers out of the inner board is very strong. Getting him working around. Um, takes the crossover into the board. Okay, 8-5. to five. Um, Wastes a pip already and doesn't look very good for building the board either. So surprising that he wouldn't just play 16-13 uh, to 13 to me. Okay, Sander finds his first two for sure. And then has to decide if he wants to start to clear the six. And leave himself stripped on the outside or just take two checkers off for gammons. Um, goes for the gammon slash backgammon play. But... XG like safety there, okay. Fairly sizable inaccuracy. That's a tough one. I don't know for sure there either. This looks like it could be very easily be safer, but the next three is a real problem. Maybe there are maybe the, the swing on threes is the biggest piece. Ace five doesn't leave him very nice either. Okay, I think Mochi needs to yeah, I think parking on the twenty looks very nice. And then I he's gonna get his board ready because he could have the shot now. Otherwise twenty two to seventeen looks very nice to make sure we don't uh lose a backgammon in some freak occurrences here so do we need to go to for distribution or take two off this leaves standard with an even number of uh checkers so reasonable to since you don't get a roll closer with the x winner off to solve a distribution problem instead i think that play makes sense six two finally clears nicely <laughs> and what do we have 
Double twos. Yeah, Mochi can afford to run one more off the back end to make sure once again nothing too crazy happens. This is a six what? Six three. Six three. All right, and it looks like the Gavin's going to be pretty much a lock. And that's going to take Sander to six away, two away, really turning this into a match. Exciting stuff. 3-2, we can only get one crossover. Perfect to the six, so we'll take it. I'm not sure if it's possible. To okay, there's some like 0.01% chance of saving the gamut. They're rolling for it. Sander realizes that, or sorry, Mochi realizes it's over and resigns the gammon now. Let's take a small break. And it looks like they're going to take a small break again. Okay. Um, getting to be a long match. I'll probably go take a quick break as well and hit the restroom. But we'll be back in a six away, two away match now. We've gotten to that like standard seven point match kind of score line. Um, and Sander clawing his way back into it. Let's see what he can do when we come back. Be back shortly. Hit the dance floor. Don't work too hard, my break a backbone. Return to the Mac, the king is back though. Corvette and cash, I never lack those. She saw the stone, you know how that go. Fatality, my diamonds that cold. Versace trunks, I hit my backstroke. Knock on the door. She at the back, bro. All I really take is a little taste. I like girl blue eyes with a little bass. Here for the thrill, I don't need a chaser. Wanna vibe it to get away. Shimmy, shimmy, y'all got the semi four way. Don't step out the line like this a probate. You hit the line and try to locate. This for the time, got time for no day. One, too many, I'm going. Two, too crazy, and I got three. bad ones and they ready. Four. A good time, so now it's in new it, we left that. Six. Can't remember anything, but I know we got late, 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 late. Good times. Living in the moment, feel like summertime. Obsess the nation, not a world of mine. The room is spinning, but I feel The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app. Star membership, high analysis, 
Blunder Database, Private Games, Coin Games, Rating Games, and much, much more. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market, available on Amazon. Links in the description below. Hey everybody, I'm back. Got the players still working their way back into this, doing interviews with the camera and stuff. Lots of fun things like that. We should get to the tail end of this match pretty quickly. It's been a wild one. Oh, we need some mat dice, magic mat dice for the glare on the stream. Yeah, we had some transcription solutions to that too. You can always look at doing something with that. I could probably show them how we did that in OBS if we're going to have transcription all weekend. That was pretty convenient. But so we'll keep mentioning things you guys are seeing. We'll work on them. As, uh, I mean, we've got a whole week to keep getting better at this, right? Um, that's one that we can add in pretty easy. Uh, Steve, if you can't find the Galaxy app in the App Store, well, it's, it should be in the Apple Store. Um, but uh, Android and Play Store kind of stuff, that's not till I think, probably next week when we'll get to that. But yeah, just released in the Apple Store today. <laughs> they're walking back to the room mochi getting a nice snack Ah, still not at the top. I think as more people download the app, it'll probably drift towards the top too. But I always notice that too. If you type backgammon into the Play Store, you don't get extreme gammon first by a long shot. So we got Mochi back. What's up? Back. Yeah. How are you enjoying this comeback that Sanders put on? <laughs> I don't enjoy it so much. You don't enjoy it so much. That's surprising. Yeah, very surprising. Still a well played match from both. You got the grinding down in like the just around a three or something like that. Yeah. Right? I, yeah. I, I mean, last game I didn't have shots. Right? I mm, yeah. Make yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I don't know what what what, uh, what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can talk about whatever you want. I'm trying to think of what the game before it was. That was the 12 away two away one. So the game before uh, you got was the early that, cube. Uh, um. And were you playing uh with like the thousand checkers on the three point or was that last? No, game? No, no, no. That last. That game. was last game. Two point game. The deuce point game. I was hero six five. And uh, he yeah. left the double shot. I hit. That's right. The endless the game because we had to fix the transcription sure stuff. Yeah. Then, um, yeah, you had challenging containment problems, or like what you needed to do to, like challenging the blot to bring all of your three checkers around was really important, but, but not intuitive. You yeah. Know? yeah. 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 It was a tricky game. 
Yeah, I but wasn't sure about all six that I left, uh, you know, two blocks to get in another checker. Yeah. Then yeah. Uh, in the end, I had a six five from the bar. Yep. I play safe, like safest. Yep. But um, I think those were all accurate as well. They're oh, yeah? all tricky okay. ones. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to think. I mean, there are some some different kind of the game where you got in the the cube. Yeah, I mean, I didn't see a PR at all. You, yeah, yeah, you know, then, yeah. Then people telling me, "Amon, you play well." Then I, I just saw the PR. And I played two point nine. Yes, two point nine <laughs> yeah, is yeah. not good for Mochi, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, there were some game plan things in some earlier games, though, yeah. where you're like going for blitz when you just had really nice yeah. priming positions and things like that. But, but yeah. it's getting more exciting, you know. Yes, it's yeah, like, for sure. Uh, for, Thank you for good, putting good on a show. Good for the viewers, <laughs> for sure. We're gonna. You know, get down yeah. to one minute, I guess, you know, then two away, two right. away, maybe. You're starting to think about the clock time. It seemed like it was going to be yeah, totally yeah, fine yeah, for a yeah, while. We but... stopped talking bullshit anymore, you know. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could hear what you guys were saying in there, because you look like you're having fun. Nothing, uh, it nothing, seems like he's giving you a lot of free nothing, advice. Nothing important, nothing valuable. <laughs> no? Okay, okay. I see him pointing a lot of plays out for you, which is very kind of him, you know. Yeah. That's, but you're not really doing that for him. You don't feel like helping him out, too? <laughs> Maybe you can help him out when he gets to two way, two way or something, right? Or later on, if it goes that way. For now, let him do it on his own. Well, I'm not going to have time to do that anymore. So. <laughs> well, cool. Good luck play. to you in the rest of the match. Thank yeah. You. We'll see you soon. What was this even? Oh, you guys can't see the match clock right now. I bet. I think they'll put it back on the Tempest thing. Maybe they're moving it because it's a cell phone between games or something like that, but we'll be on in a second. <laughs> Unfortunately, his PR is displayed on the screen right here that I can see as well. Yeah, that is funny, though. It's easy to forget that, like, when I see both PRs right around a three, that feels like a really well-played match. But that really is significantly above Mochi's average. It's not a great match for him. <laughs> and well above Sanders as well. Ugh. That's very sharp play from both of them. Well, I can't tell how much time on the clock Sander has there, too. Is that 139? Does he have less time than Mochi somehow? That doesn't seem possible. <laughs> Opens with the 4-2, and the cube could be flying early again with a nice point advantage. 219 for Mochi. Yeah, he's going to split. And maybe not quite enough, but it's awful close. It's another one where it wouldn't be bad to send it. Here, I think we're probably just going to... Yeah, the major splitting down seems good. I don't know if we need to go for something as big as hitting loose. Look at this. At the score, it's okay. Um, feels not that productive with not many builders in the zone. This is a play that I would find as well. The 6-2 to two just doesn't do a whole lot. Okay, gets punished with a shot in the outfield instead, and that's going to keep the cube off for a while, most likely. And what is the best way for Sander to split now he's got to figure out? So he can keep one anchor. Oh, and slot with it is a really neat-looking play. I did not see 22 and 6 to 5. But yeah, being able to bring a builder down just past the, the blot in the outfield seems pretty nice. 6-1, I think. Oh, we got choices here again, too. Just making a piece of structure against that 24 seems very nice, but you hate leaving the blot in the outfield. When you have one half escaped and your opponent has three back, seems like a likely game plan to just escape to a race at the score, too. Yeah, this is a natural point on head number, and some unfortunate fans could make for interesting cube action, but instead Mochi will hit from the roof. Very nice return. Thanks, Phil. Making the 20-point anchor is going to be great for Mochi, but having four checkers back is still a concern. A fifth now. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's for Sander. He's fine to stay in this game. Mochi's never having a cube. Hits, makes a point, and cleans up. Seems like a pretty natural play as well. I think Sander, he could hit here. But can he afford the third checker on the 24? It also looks very nice 
the first play that I saw was just make the 23. Then I realized he has a two to hit too. Okay, Sander has 420 on the clock too. So that's uh, plenty to work with for him. This is quite a dilemma though. The the 20 and 24 points as a back game don't work very well at, at all. But the 20 and 23 is pretty strong. Um, so he could just commit to the back game and make that play. Or he can still try to go forward here and hope that he has time to escape those checkers. Chooses hitting and buying time instead. I wouldn't have known how to pick on those ones for sure. Got to give up your checker on the midpoint as well. 6-3. What is this going to do? Can't move anything on the 24, which he really wants to do. So next best is maybe slotting the 5 point and then the 3 down. Do we really need a checker on the, on the mid? Seems fine. Just start building our board. We want the, yeah, the 5 point made as soon as possible. So I like this play. And... Doesn't like having the 24 and the 20, but Mochi doesn't have a prime to punish this in front of him yet. So still plenty of play in this just as two separate anchors happy to leave one when he gets the opportunity, creating a lot of problems for Mochi in the outfield with this better board. And Mochi's got to decide if it helps him to hit now and possibly create opportunities to make a third anchor or retime and decides he doesn't need to and can just play back, play around quietly against five checkers back, let... Let Sander risk cracking his position. And Sander's going to make his first bid at solving that by running a checker all the way. 2-5. Does it buy him any time now to hit? It's not hurting timing mean, he hit as much clearly. This is this is a lot less certain to me. And so Mochi's just going to, when in doubt, go for the hitting play. That It was a small bank of timing to have that checker out on the 14, so I think it makes a lot of sense. Four one, just gonna step up to the twenty. Try to get that checker mobilized again. Three one looks like it can make the blocking point in front of that twenty. Do we want that point of contact though or not? If not, then we should just clean up somehow. And we can clean up both blocks by playing eleven to eight and fourteen to thirteen. That looks pretty nice. And instead he makes the point six away, that'll be hard to clear later. This is a small tactical opportunity. Five out for sure, and then uh, three can be sure. Sure, just make the bar point. Much rather make the seven point with that five, but um, there was no three out after that. And getting the checker mobilized is worth too much, so he goes for that. Five, four, I think just plays from the 15 for sure, and then whatever the other piece of it is. Maybe we can slot the three, break the bar right away, sure. Five five is going to make the three for sure, and then clear the point. I expect, right? Yeah, making the deuce and opening up the seven to do it doesn't seem worth much, but it's a little awkward distribution. So Mochi's trying to find some better option. Sander, I think, can make the. Oh, he can advance to the twenty three again and create that contact. Is that helping now? The sixes look like an absolute disaster the way the position is set up, but. Man, blocking that point, making him play behind seems quite valuable too. Yeah. Yeah. You can end up still primed by the bar point when you stay back on the 24. I think this is too big of an improvement to pass up. I think when you look over this and try to go through sequences and figure out logically which, which point plays better, it's very difficult. I'm not sure I could solve that. But my instinct is just that the... Uh, the 24 and 20 game together is just so bad that we need to fix it somehow. 23-20 is very good. So I'm just going to take that opportunity as soon as possible. 5-4 clears a point safely. Wow, that's a really nice roll for Mochi. And almost never going to have a cube in this game. I think as soon as... It's going to be hard to win a gammon in this too. But at 2 away, you just have no leverage trying to claim with the cube. I think this is going to take a checker off the seven, stack up the three, and it's getting awkward. Sanders always going to have enough wins to hang around and play this game. Seven to one seems like we got to keep our anchors for now. And look at this. Okay, you can actually come off already. I would certainly not find that play. Not sure what the tactical merit of that is. Six, four. Okay, now he's probably, of course, going to leave one of the anchors, preferably over destroying his board. Now, does he gain anything by staying on the 20? 
or should he come out with both and avoid aces that might like pick and pass something like this and look at this xg's telling us that mochi has a double and pass i don't find that at all and he's gonna pause to think about it doesn't have enough clock time to figure it out so i definitely i think he's just gonna make the safe play and play on those are very difficult to find uh, I think maybe Sander's ready to come off and not give up aces that pick and pass, especially since the the ace point is covered now. 6-4 takes two off. Again, not a lot of uh, gammons for Mochi, but some wins for Sander. He's going to think about clearing, claiming this again, whether or not there's any gammon threat in this position. There's some awkward numbers. Could Sander find a take here? I wouldn't think so. So if you can claim it, it feels pretty reasonable for Mochi again. And okay, these mistakes are like decent size too, but those are difficult positions to figure out. Five two is gonna clear from the rear. Very nice shot. One of Mochi's best fives is gonna save all the gammons. And so now maybe Mochi will just clear or claim. This feels like the the best and most clear opportunity to send a cube we've had. Uh, and Sander just clearly can't take it. And we're on to the Crawford game. Even away Crawford game, so gammons are going to count for Sander. And six away, one away, things just got a little harder. I think the match equity is around like 11% or something like that. Yeah, it drops down to nine at seven away. What a fight. Sander managing to just keep hanging on. <laughs> and at an even away score, you can split. Is he going to spend his delay time thinking about it for some reason? Oh, he's going to slot instead. Okay, this is funny. Optional, very close. The three down for a builder, very nice shot. By four anchors and six two. What is this going to do? It can make the four points. It can hit. It can lift. It can make the bar point anchor. Tons of options. Running low on clock time. Has to just find one. Enter and hit on the eleven. Oh, four one. It was. Thought it was four two. Missed it. And with four checkers back, even though he's risking some gammons. Mochi's got to play for some wins, too. And so going for that slotting play makes a lot of sense. Four checkers back to one. Fifth checker back isn't going to change too much. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. All right. I got a chair that I can use occasionally now, too. I might have to adjust the uh, mic when I do that. Hmm. Oh, and he's... Okay, I didn't even think about this dilemma between the double hit and making the points. Um, yeah, he really doesn't want to give Mochi any opportunity to create offense. The fanning numbers and things like that seem like so advantageous and keeping your, your single checker back advantage is very nice too, but okay. Three six is going to consolidate and Sanders got a pretty natural game to bring home now against the double anchors too. Clear lead, but Mochi's got a lot of play with two anchors hard to gammon him or, or crush this one. And okay, does for some it seems like Sanders considering whether he wants to keep Mochi from making the ace. I think making the twenty four is totally fine there. Uh or yeah, or it's not so bad if he lets Mochi. And making the bar points very valuable. Mochi finally has an offensive point, first offensive board point. And what does a five four do? Probably just clears from the fourteen. Mochi wants to leave one of those anchors to hit. Fine, but it Makes a priming point, starts progressing towards home. It does make the 10 point that we want to clear later, but I think we need some improvement. I'm not sure this really fixes anything. So the simple play looks like the best play to me here. Yeah. We don't like being hit, but it's not all bad. Still plenty of ways to win from there.
Yeah, pointing breaks a priming point that you had against all those checkers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, finally decides to just come around. Um, spending all the spares from the 6 doesn't accomplish enough. So we can hit and make the 23 looks pretty nice here to me. Um, oh, and look at this. It's also an option to just not hit at all. But but we love making this. We're doing something with the checkers on the 24 and the 23 when we make the 23 point. Leaving ourselves plenty of options for back games later. We can decide between the 23, 21, 22, or 23, 20, 21, 20. All of them are going to be good. But with the better board and risk of being primed further. Okay, Mochi goes for mobility, though, instead of making the long-term asset in the 23, which I think was also okay. I'm not sure. A um, little riskier for Gammons, for sure. And isn't punished quite yet. Okay, it looks like he's going to get to remake the 21, I think, or one of these anchors. Probably part of it's going to be hitting loose on the five point for the wins, though. And then find any ace you like for the last one. And sure, why not have another anchor back to uh, create some counterplay? Gets a fan on a sander and has some opportunities to improve now. Um, it's not the purest play to have to make the three point, but it does seem like an offensive. Oh, he finds that he can make the 11 and guard that slot on the five. That looks like a pretty nice play. Interesting find. 6-1 is going to cover. And the ace, sure, sure. Why not slot the next point in order? 5-4, I think, is going to hit and escape with tempo. Oh, he can just escape without hitting. I did not think about that. And Sander is going to look at, hey, maybe I have an opportunity to ruin his timing and uh, just play this game around quietly. And it's a pretty big difference in these positions. It's hard to see this early whether or not you want to start messing with your opponent's timing this way. And he's down to a minute and a half on the clock now, too, feeling the pressure of it a little bit. Finds this double hitting play instead, hoping to generate some additional gammons. Uh, not sure that's the idea against the back game, but okay, what do we have here? 4-3 is likely to make the three point. Unless we want to hit another blot in the outfield and put it behind structure. I guess if we do that, we probably hit twice, but Moji's outboarding us, so we got to be very careful with some of these contact plays we make. Um, both almost equal. Four six is gonna enter, and how do we, okay, we get to hit on the bar. Pretty nice response. Three one, this is gonna ruin some timing in the outfield. And they're playing fast under time pressure now. This is kind of exciting. Fives, that's gonna mobilize a check on the 21 almost certainly. Or does it links up and then our last play not behind, so probably just to the six. Yep, finds it, hits the clock. And under 59 now. He's starting to feel worried about it in case he has to play enough games, I guess. Uh, six four is going to hit? I don't know again for all these. Dis so once again, he has the opportunity to just run. If we hit, I love the second hit to make sure that we don't make the 23 as well. Being hit on the 24 or 23 is not so bad. Um, but that 23-point anchor is pretty strong and it generate a lot of wins. And this is going to generate a lot of gammons when he gets away with it. So it goes for it again. Um, happy to have his checker taken off the ace point in some sense. A little bit worried about Mochi's offensive structure. Sander links up blots, looking very good for him. 4-3 for Mochi is just going to hit on the in the outfield, right? Yeah, okay. Going to think about his three for a moment, but any chance to mobilize those extra checkers on the 21 and 20 points is going to be really crucial. 6-4. Um, so we can play all the way from the 24. Okay, and he's going to make the bar point instead, but I think maybe the mobility was... They're super close. Okay. Having a four prime is very nice too, understandable. Or three though, he creates some problems. Okay, he's going to make the board point. Once again, I'm thinking about stepping up a little bit, but... Um, what do we have now? Double threes. Now he's finally, he's run into this cracking number. Oh, that's why. I um, uh, mobility would have avoided this. But what can you do? It's still survivable. We've got enough of a board that Sander can, can dance for a while. 6-3. That's going to come off the, another option than to come off the 20. Nearly forced. No better three along with it. And okay, Mochi's got chances of making a forward game, is actually somehow slightly ahead in the race after this play. Okay, does he get any duplication by staying back? Not really. 
that link with the 21 would have been nice to make the 17 points, so he could have tried for that. Mochi enters one, very strong. 6-1. Yeah, so he can link up and make the outfield, or he prevents the five-point anchor. A little too strong to let his opponent make that. What do we have now? 3-1. I think maybe tactically we can lift, but he's going to come down and try to cover. Yeah, with four checkers to bring down, he really needs to make that point. And with two anchors, he doesn't get punished too bad if uh, Sander enters on the five anyway. So the risk reward is just there. Sixes are huge to cover the and make a perfect five point, five prime and five point board. This will work though. We can shift and make the ace and tactically back to this attacking uh, plan where we're trying to keep Sander fanning. And Mochi just needs something that gets a checker moving. Double fives is going to be okay. It feels a little fast sometimes, I think. Why not just come down with it? That feels like the most mobile play, and we're looking for sixes and fours to escape. Very nice shot for Mochi. I don't see a lot of value in creating three blots instead by playing into the six, so I like his play. Six three comes around and links again. Um, okay, he's going to stay in the outfield instead. Interesting, and try to find ways to build that five points. I would have just think, been thinking about safe plays. Oh, rewarded for his play too. And in the driver's seat to win this match after all. Um, still has a four prime to hop though, so and not a ton of timing for it. So needs a four or a six soon. Four two is almost perfect. And a huge favorite to win this match now. Exciting fast finish. I love it when they get playing fast. I got to do a lot more to keep up now. 3-1, okay, yeah, I like this play, avoiding double sixes issues, clearing nicely. Um, we're going to play 10-5, to five. yeah, yeah, okay. Finds a way to stay even on the outside. Doesn't care about gems at all, just needs to find a way to clear safely. What's most even here? I guess maybe clearing 2-5 to uh, 3 makes a lot of sense. Could have played 4 off, just realizes now <laughs> that was maybe a bit of a silly play, but that kept it even as well. 5-2 is going to take one off. And he has a whole minute to play with, so maybe he's stressing out more than he needs to. But hasn't played on the Tempest Clock either before, so if that plays a little different, has to worry about it a little. Double threes is going to clear from the rear and take two off, and really wants Sander to just enter. And he does it, and he's going to win the match. And congratulations to Mochi on an exciting finish. This first round of the super high roller jackpot. We'll see if Sander gets to get a rebuy on this. Hoping that he'll stay in the tournament. That was a long match in the end. About almost three hours we got to. But uh, pretty, to me, that looks like a really well played match by both. To both of them, it feels pretty sloppy and below their average. Super crazy stuff. Um, Going to talk about the decisions a little bit in there, but... What an exciting match, too. Mochi out to a huge lead to begin with. And and Sander made a real run for it. And with a ton of checkers back and not a lot of time to play, that last game got pretty wild. A lot of, a lot of fun decisions in that one. We should be coming back with Ryan Rebello very soon, as well as um, playing against Sean Williams in the finals of the Monte Carlo Open. Almost 6 p.m. here, so I guess we can. that'll take us straight to dinner break. Um, I presume we're still going to play right away? It's a good start, by the way. Yeah. Cocktail party at 7. Oh, we got a cocktail party here at 7. <laughs> nice. Maybe they'll be done quickly. You never know. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, so we'll be coming back with Ryan, and oh, this is nice. We've got Mochi and Sander discussing some positions and options here. I like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wish I could hear him. Yeah. Safety. It's safe. You have one point. Oh, you like double four? No, double four is protected. Double Okay, maybe it's five. I want to, you know, connect. Uh, oh, how's my voice holding up? It's actually kind of tough in the, the hotel room is really cold here. And so it's a little bit scratchy. Hopefully it'll make it through the week. I just have to get out and get some sun and some beach air and I'll be okay. <laughs> I could use a snack too. I'm excited for that cocktail party. I hope there's snacks.
Okay, we've got the matchup on the screen if they want to look at any plays, too. I think this is a difficult thing to organize. Trying to communicate between, like, the commentary place I'm at here and and the transcriber going through plays is pretty tricky. But maybe Mochi and Sander can just go through that. If they're mic'd up, oh, it would be so cool if they were mic'd up and they could just talk about it themselves while actually looking at the transcription, too. I got a nice little sit break there. That was nice. Yep, someone's... We like this. Oh, are they going to look at that play that they were just discussing? That'd be really cool. Again, I just really wish I could uh, hear what they're talking about with these. These are such interesting conversations. Someday we'll figure this out, but I my instinct is really that the only way to... Uh, to get these like post-match analyses is to have a camera on the transcriber computer so we can see Mochi and Sander there, get the microphone there, and then let them actually run the computer and look at plays themselves. Ah, uh, yeah, this double hit here too. They're looking at all the interesting stuff for sure. What a, it was just a pile of decisions in this last game. That was a crazy one. Such an exciting end of the match. And they played it pretty well, too, for the amount of time pressure they were under. And this was apparently a blunder to step 23 to 22, okay. Seemed in the ballpark. Uh, playing quiet seems like a pretty surprising... I guess he's got enough timing already. Okay, I can kind of see that. That's a tough one to find. I'm finding the second best play. Yeah, these timing plays for Sander were very difficult to find for me. Surprising. I mean, hitting on the ace is almost never the answer in these kinds of positions when they have already have a back game. So it's easy enough to, more possible to rule that out. What's up, Bill? You got news? Well, I was going to say, we're, you know, the Sean Williams, Ryan Rebello will start yep. soon. Yep. Now, also, what we're going to try to do at night, tonight at 10, there's a first-round high-roller match of uh, Wilcox Snellings and Martin Frederick Khan. Oh, okay. It'll be an awesome match. So yeah. We're going to try to work that into the streaming schedule as well. Gotcha. So most likely after Ryan's match with Sean Williams, coming up at 10 p.m., we have another first round super high roller match between Wilcox Snellings and Martin Frederick Khan, which are uh, both very strong players. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun too. Yeah. So I guess that means that Wilcox had to rebuy. Okay. Which means, I think he was in the earlier round, and I think I didn't know the his opponent that he played, so I think that means that uh, probably one of the like recreational or lesser known players has moved on to the round of eight, which is exciting too. You about ready to start, Ryan? They had a wild finish this. <laughs> That's the plan again, Sean. <laughs> yeah. Nice, okay. Oh, he's good to mix things up in the middle. <laughs> I don't know why we have those, yeah. You don't like those? Oh, no, no. Why not, man? <laughs> They're offering a service. <laughs> they get in the way of what people are talking about. All right, we'll be back shortly.
Started at the same time, but he finished in maybe 45 minutes. Yours, I don't know. Uh, I won't have an opportunity. Yeah, I won't. Let me know something. I lost the uh, PR, yeah, but, but it didn't come. Yes. Ah, cool. Mochi's looking at some of his missed cubes in this game now, too. Those were difficult claims. And after all the the fines that he found earlier in the match that, like, were break-even cubes and really challenges for, uh, for Sander to deal with, I think he just ran out of clock time to know that he needed to send that. If he was more comfortable with what was left on the clock, I think he could have found those ones pretty easily. Um, but that time pressure starts to make a difference. And he's mentioned before, too, that he's well aware that that when the when he's playing speed gammon he's much weaker than otherwise he used to think that it was no big deal that just being low on the clock he could always play well enough at speed gammon um but there's a difference so he's he's realized that he needs to make efforts somewhere to to conserve the bank to make those kinds of decisions when he has those opportunities he used to just spend a bunch of time in earlier games way more often. I think he's starting to kind of finally clean that out of his game. Something that he's been known for is being in time pressure for a long time. Did I grab some snacks? No. I have to wait. I'm pretty good at waiting on snacks, though. Mark suggested I bring a bunch along for the room and stuff like that, and I figured, oh, I'll have time to go get food somewhere. Um, and if I can't, I don't really mind waiting anyway. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry enough right now to eat something. <laughs> I'll be okay. I really like uh, like dietarily intermittent fasting and finding like opportunities to do that anyway. And so my body's pretty used to that. I run, I feel good when I'm in that space too. So it's not really a big deal to to miss out on opportunities like that. It's fun to like keep that fresh too and keep feeling good that way. Sometimes it feels like it cleans you out. who are making announcements about the finalists. There's Sean behind us, walking over to the playroom. Do I want an interview? Yeah. No holding up the tournament if Ryan's in there waiting for you. No, but yeah. he's not. He's, uh, he's just about to come. Yeah, what's your plan? Ryan uh, wants to know if he can bluff you at the queue. Yeah, probably. I'm, I'm hoping, probably? <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping to stay under a double-digit PR. If we do That's that, the plan? roll well. That's it. You know, okay, kind of okay. Like, uh, so, yeah. so, so, so we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to it. So, yeah. as I say, kind of, uh, I mean, yeah, I feel like waiting to start for a while. Yeah. I wouldn't, if you feel like you've been in double-digit PRs for the rest of it and you're trying to get that, it's been working, so why would like, you do it? Well, right? exactly, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, really, you know. it's really easy to win a tournament playing well. You play as bad as I do, it's tough, right? You know, kind of. Anyway. You get, okay, you're of the <laughs> Carter School of Logic, yeah, exactly, huh? Yeah, I like it. Exactly. I got I'm ready it. Yeah. to go. Thanks awesome. for all the work you're doing on this. Yeah, no, you've been playing great, though, Sean. Best of luck to you, man. Oh, thanks, guys. For all the compliments, too. Really, my biggest problem, I'm not like hungry isn't so bad. I'm cold. I just want to be in the sun. I'm in Monte Carlo, and I'm freezing in a hotel room. It's tough to do. I'm going to have to get up earlier and go lay out on the beach before noon or something like this. I can do that. But then I have to not sleep into 11, which is tough. <laughs> so, so hard. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> I see Ryan walking in the room, too. I think they're getting like... 
pictures of handshakes and stuff like that for the finals match. So we have nice stuff for our social media. You can follow us there too. I'm not sure. I think you might be posting most things to the Monte Carlo Facebook page. So if you're not watching over there, um, you can get a lot of updates and cool stuff over on the tournament at that location as well. If we have other places that you should look out, I'll share those as we're going through the weekend too. But I think that's the main place right now. <laughs> I don't usually eat cake. So I don't know about a birthday cake. I need my sister to make me some sort of paleo cake. Or my mom to make me a nice paleo pie. Those are good too. Uh, paleo being like gluten free and stuff. That's more important in the US though. Here I do okay on all that. Whatever. I'll eat some stuff. I was craving some Macrons. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce anything. I hope I butchered that well enough for being in France, but I couldn't find any late last night. Everywhere closes around like 7 or 7.30, and you can only go to a restaurant to get things, so maybe if I can get out earlier or something, I'll find some treats. Yes, Sander was dramatically unlikely, but he got lucky in a couple games to claw it back from 12 away, 2 away to 6 away, 2 away. That wasn't so bad. Nick is the Vin Scully of backgammon commentary. I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult. I'm going to have to look that up before I say anything about it. Who's Vin Scully? Let me know. Yeah, plus 6.9 is a pretty dramatic luck factor. I don't I don't buy too much into those since it's evaluated at a pretty low setting and um I don't like luck factor isn't super accurate or useful. I mean it measures something, but I don't know, certainly if you if two great players and one of them wins by that much, the one that won was certainly lucky doesn't mean that like didn't deserve to win or something like that but i don't know it's i think the hardest thing to discover is like if it's ever possible to determine that someone won a game on skill it's not always very clear um what can you do i don't know backgammon's about getting lucky too oh a dodgers play-by-play -play guy i don't know who that is macaron yeah sure I probably did it right then. <laughs> then that's, I, I would think of Bob Euchre. I always listen to him announcing the, the, uh, the Brewers games I'm from Milwaukee area originally. And Norm McDonald always had the funniest stories about him. Norm and uh, who is Artie Lang? That cracks me up. I love some Norm McDonald. Oh, cool. You guys like all the background stuff, too. Yeah, that's like, uh, I think we're getting that right. This is actually, if you can see me pointing over, I'm pointing at the screen. There's a big screen and then all the chairs behind it for people to watch. And we'll eventually have speakers over here, too. So anyone that wants to watch the stream matches and listen to them can sit there and you guys will get to see all that. And yeah, hopefully you get a nice idea of what it's like to be in the playroom from this, too. Um, so the production, you know, it's kind of, it's like a different goal than the UBC stuff. We're trying to, uh, I don't know, I, like present something a little bit different there. Um, focused on like the PRs and how they're playing and the, the result of that tournament in general. So a lot of these, like other tournaments, it's nicer to just show you what it'd be like to be here. Glad you guys are enjoying seeing all that. Oh, it's nice of you guys to not call me Joe Buck. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Say again, Here we go. Looks like we're getting started. And 11 point matches through the open, 13 point final. Okay, so we got a little bit longer match here, too. It's going to be tough to beat the excitement of that last match. Surprised that we even got to have that one streamed and commentated. And then really just turned into a very dramatic match in general really exciting oh the monte carlo grand prix board isn't in the shop yet interesting i thought it was i'll ask about that my impression that it was for certain 
Ryan told me before the match that he's going to keep a running pip count this time around too. Hasn't been doing that all tournament. Maybe conserving energy, who knows? But uh, how exciting for him. I, I presume this is the first finals of a tournament that he's ever been in. Um, super young, super strong player. And okay, after they both rolled double fives, I think he can afford uh, to split and avoid the prime now. And down with the four seems very reasonable too. But maybe not. Maybe what else can you play? Some sort of slotting play? I'm not sure. I couldn't see what was best there. That's interesting. We're getting like a little bit chopped off in the screens here. Oh, the OBS must have gotten moved around. I'll talk to him about that as soon as I can if they can't hear me. We're, we're missing some of the screen. Um, but we'll get that as soon as we can. Oh, give me one second. Yeah, I think that happens. Just probably someone resized the window to uh, be able to see more play options. And so I think all Terry has to do is drop down the XG piece, but we'll get that fixed in a second. <laughs> Ooh, I'm getting commentary jobs in the chat. That sounds fun. Send me a message on Facebook or something. I would think about doing that for sure. Yeah, I always love having the XG feed in for all the commentary stuff I do too. Um, sometimes, I don't know. I guess people worry that that folks will be too reliant on on just like stating what the best play is, but it helps me kind of look at options and talk about interesting things. Uh, we're going to fix that sizing thing real quick. I might run in there and make sure that that we get this pretty easily, but I, th I think it's just as simple as dragging down the... Yeah, there we go. She got it. Okay. Cool. Looks good. This is the problem with letting Sander and Mochi touch your computer. Might be doing something like this and ruin our whole stream setup. 401 looks like a pretty natural point-making play. And I wish I could see all those earlier ones, because I, I think that split was a confusing play that was a mistake by Ryan. Not sure, though. Tara's asking, it's okay. All better. We got it all fixed. Looks like this makes the four for sure, and then two down. Not a lot of options here. Unless he's thinking about switching to the ace for a tempo, something like this. Um, but this seems like pretty standard to me. And Ryan's come out of his splitting play with an advantage, so it's worked out for him. I guess you don't have to introduce a blot. You could play five to three, but that just feels unnecessarily stiff. And the two down actually helps you contain that checker on the 24, as I've been saying quite a bit in these single checker back games. <laughs> I don't know what these gestures are about from John, but I like it. Some spinning and some scratching the head. <laughs> Double fives, okay. Ryan doesn't get to escape like he would like to, doesn't get to make any new points. The only thing to do really is going to be just play to the three. Um, unfortunate role for him. Now Sean Williams has some really strong containment and board advantage, and Ryan under a lot of pressure to, to roll a six to escape. This time, oh, do we need to hit loose on the ace? Yeah, to take away the escaping six, okay. And I like this slot from the back, too. A little technical inaccuracy duplicates the sixes as well and leaves a shot when things go well for Ryan. And Ryan gets to hit twice. Very nice response for him. Um, Sean, under a lot of pressure to perform here, doesn't enter. And is Ryan just too good now? I think he doesn't always cover. He can get hit against the four-point board, but this feels like a lot of... Okay, yeah. So he loses the game often enough that he needs to claim here. Um, pretty easy pass for Sean. Good find for him. Yeah, without spending some time with that position, it's hard to guess that he only has 63% wins, um, but makes enough sense. It's nice that they get to play in a side room where they don't have to like do anything with headphones or anything to uh, 
Uh, I mean, the playroom's really noisy, so you have to account for that somehow with earplugs, headphones, whatever. But it's pretty quiet over in the streaming room, so you don't have to deal with that and can just like play more naturally. But it's more comfortable. Sure, Ryan appreciates that. I'm not sure. I think Sean's probably fine with the noise. I don't think he had headphones when we played or anything like that. In fact, I think he was chatting with a buddy while we played. <laughs> it was funny. It's on the bar. 5-3, what is this going to do? Um, it could enter high and clean up. Struggle to see many more options. And Ryan, with three checkers back, needs to be on the attacking side. Hoping to roll something to improve that way. But this, I think, not so bad. But I think all I can do is make the bar and split and vie for an anchor. And get more contact with the outfield. Looks pretty strong. And neither has made a board point, though, so he can still get attacked by Sean for sure. 3-1 is perfect. And at least Ryan now has the next best anchor slotted as well for when he does get attacked here. But he fans instead. Okay, huge lead for Sean then, and I think a cube should be coming. The next to checker. Checker back. Potential some point in making numbers, but the market losers are probably just hitting loose on the four point and getting away with it somehow. Should be a fairly clear cube, and Sean's going to roll past it. Okay. Um, the two, I think we're hitting loose. And the six can be down for offense, sure. And on a fan, I don't think he's too good or anything like that, but he's definitely getting a pass. On the two on entry, this is probably even too strong behind very nice priming structure. And sends the cube, and I think Ryan will find the pass here. But he just has nothing offensively. Sean split, everything like this. Yeah. Probably feels thankful that Sean didn't get a cube in the roll before that. Sometimes players are happy to just be able to claim that point and get to the point where they lose their market too. Not always clear exactly how that works out. Um, if you think your opponent's very strong, anything like that. So I think an okay result for him. 4-3 is typically going to bring two down. I know a lot of players like to split as well. They're all run very close. Six four. There's some score adjustment there too, but since they're at even scores, I don't think that any of that's going on. Six four, I would think, makes the point, but look at this, you can run past. This is a nice thing about splitting too, is I don't always know these, and maybe Ryan doesn't either if he's used to people uh making the two down play. Two one is either going to make the anchor, which is way more valuable now against the deep point than the bar point. But of course, yeah, it's a very nice offensive point to have to start. Um, and he's going to go for the offensive side of the game. I just, the anchor, both are very nice points to have. The bar point on its own is probably better, but it goes up in value so much when it's past two of your opponent's checkers like this. I'm actually surprised the plays run so close for how valuable that is to anchor past the made two point. Six one, once our opponent has an anchor, we're under a lot of pressure to split ourselves. And he's going to slot along with it, which I guess duplicates some aces. That's a quick and nice find. I probably would have just played both from the back. But you don't prefer to move 24 to 23. You'd rather stay on the 24 if you can, so there's value that way. 4-1 is probably, oh, we could hit and make the 9. We could just make the 5 point is always going to be a candidate. Um, I don't see any other quiet play. Okay. Yeah, finds the hit and make the 9 play. Um, don't need an anchor as much against seven in the zone, so it, it's gone down in value there. I think Ryan is happy to hit loose here and prevent uh, Sean from improving his possession further, especially with a better board. Uh, he's going to think twice about it because the follow-up is not super clear with only seven in the zone. Only the three to cover has to break the eight to do it. And Sean's wondering if he has a cube on a hit now. Okay. I don't think... He hasn't made any board points, so it's hard for me to see that there's a big enough swing on hits here. The It's probably thinking of those as whether or not they're market losers and trying to make that decision. Um, and he's going to send in an early cube. Okay. This could be a strategic adjustment too. Um, he was joking about playing in the double digits, but this is a thing that when people play against players that they rate as better than them in general, sometimes getting volatile cubes in feels like a nice strategy for countering their skill advantage you play the volatility a little more 
Uh, the anchor looks really nice, but the three isn't terribly productive. It introduces a new blot somewhere. Our other option would be to enter on the 22 and play down to the nine. Um, I might find that play just again, again, seven in the zone. We're not so desperate to have an anchor. The blitzing potential is pretty weak against three back as well. So maybe I'd like to keep it just to two blots back and not introduce a new blot. And Sean's, oh, he's going to look at the loose hit. Okay. Oh, and this is very close in a play that I didn't consider either. Just to slow him down and take a tempo away. Two six from Ryan is a great response. Hits and makes the anchor. Neutralizes the position. Sean should be pretty sad he sent the cube now. Um, sends another checker back, though. Decent response. Fortunately, Ryan's position is very weak here with the made two point and only six checkers in the zone. Very brittle. Needs to get things moving somehow. I don't think it's going to be worth breaking the eight to hit loose. It's, it's a decent option, making the 22. I might go for flexibility here instead. Enter on the ace and step up to the 20. Um... These points don't communicate with each other so well, but it allows you to leave the bar point if you need to. Um, ace and 20 is not something he's looked at yet, but reasonable option too. Decides those are the two plays that he liked best as candidates and goes with it. Consolidating blots can never be too bad. Um, here, does Sean just need to take the opportunity to make the five point? We always need to consider that as an option, but it unblocks the 22 now. So making an anchor and playing down seems stronger. Get good distribution to make more points later. And you are still outboarded, technically. 2-1, I just, yeah, I just see 13-10 to 10 for distribution, but even breaking the anchor and trying to move that way is decent. Interesting. 5-2, he's going to hit. Okay, I'm thinking about 6-4 to four a little bit as well, but just go straight for that. We do really need to make a board point at some point to bring this game home. Uh, Ryan can enter and hit, so why not? Brings a checker into the zone as well. Nice response. Four two. What do we need to do with this? It can. There's no real other. Yeah, hitting loose is kind of your only. Not a lot of risk. And fights to make a new board point. 8-6 to six is just a little too stiff. They're very close. Doesn't feel like it plays into the game plan exactly. Um, I think as Ryan here, I'm just going to make another asset of the 10 point. Um, but of course, we would have much preferred to be hitting somewhere. Best we can do with the roll, though. This is a very strange-looking position. Ryan just sort of has random feeling points all over the place. The 4 must cover, and then the 6... The 6, I don't know. What do we do with the six? I guess we could leave the anchor, but that feels kind of big now here too, but I don't see a better six. Uh, against five back, I guess we're really not worried about being attacked, so sure, we can go for a 20 to 14. Definitely going to take some time to convince himself he should leave the anchor so early, though. Okay, he's going to look at this loose hit. Actually, he's decided that he can't leave the anchor, and so this is his six. And so he's going to find the best four to play with it, which he might settle on six to two then. Eight to four looks pretty strong too. Okay. And the two's going to hit, the five's going to hit again. And Ryan's managing to start to turn this game around. Small advantage now. 4-2 makes a second anchor, which is going to keep Sean in the game for a long time, at least. Has the purest structure in two anchors. So tough to be in a cr crushing position against that. What can... Ryan's got too many points. Real problem there. Maybe releasing the bar point is the best he can do with this. Something like uh, both from the 18. Oh, he's got a 2-1. My bad. In that case, we could just advance. Yeah, I guess, why do we want to let him hit 9 to 8? I like that play. Going to button up another blot, too. Okay, I think this works. 6-5 is just going to get a checker moving. Ooh, trying not to yawn on mic. <laughs> okay, we got a... 
It looks like the only checkers that I can really see that move are are like 18 to 15, 10 to 7, unless we're just going to play 13 to 7, which seems like it releases too much contact somehow. But I feel like we see so much of the board so well when we play 15 and 7. That's my preferred play here. We see the 22 kind of looks on all the way out to the 9 point. The 15 now covers the rest of the board. We keep a priming point in front, so this has got a lot of nice merit to it. This is a good find from Ryan. It's outside of our usual backgammon for sure, though, so a little bit tricky. 6-1 can just make a point. Yeah, why not? It's the these many checker back games. They're challenging because they're so different, but um, they can be pretty simple if you keep them that way. I mean, a lot of times just making points and seeing a lot of the board like this is always going to be pretty good. Yeah, and so I think Ryan, again, just advancing that point seems fine. Now, he doesn't control the 15 point, which is a little bit bummer in uh, in such a strategic position like this. Ooh, what is our best? Yeah, making an outfield point looks really neat here. We're only against eight in the zone, so we're not too worried about being blitzed. Uh, we'd have to give up the outfield completely otherwise to play like two down from the mid. So this is a nice opportunity to make an anchor of the 16 point instead and create two free checkers to run around next time. And if our opponent wants to hit us loose on the 20 or 21 uh, when they're outboarded, we don't mind so much. It's kind of okay. So we'll see if he does see this play too. He sees that he needs to mobilize somehow and that this is going to be his best option to control as much of the board as he can too. I like this play a lot. We'll see if he can pull the trigger on making it. With a dream stream team. Thank you. It's a tough tr play to make, to give up both anchors and leave yourself kind of feeling wide open there. Um, so not too surprising to play two down, and it's very close. Not like he's losing a lot. He's always going to have a very strong game, be able to play from the 21 and 20. Good that he considered it, though. 5-1, not lucky enough to make another point yet. And he still really needs to just give up an anchor at some point anyway. This, this is interesting that now we find a one-blot way to do it. Um, so he goes for it here. That's another piece of the tactical merit of going for it last time. And look at this, Ryan with a small race lead. If he has the running pip count, then he's going to know that it might be a really strong option to run off the 22. Um, we have to volunteer shots and give up an outfield point otherwise. And we're so primed from that point right now that just reducing it to one against the two-point board as well is a nice time to do it. Sean's very likely to improve his position at some point. Once he has a five-point, it's a lot scarier to leave. So we'll see if he finds this. I imagine he's actually counting the race and double checking. He's thinking about what par, uh, numbers are going to play how. This is a nice find by Ryan. Playing pretty sharp. Like one small mistake in the first game and cleaned it up since then. I can't even remember exactly what it was. 5-1 looks like... Oh, never mind. Yeah, hit for sure. And lift the blot. Sure. What else can we do? And Ryan holding the cube is getting into a decent lead here. Ooh, and uh, Sean manages to dance on the two-point board. 3-2, okay, he's going to need to step up to the edge. And the three is not so good. So maybe, maybe not. Wow, okay. I think I would still do it and just like play that two first and find my best three, and I wouldn't like my three. But it's it's so unfortunate to leave uh, an indirect from the bar against this strong structure. We're going to get hit so often that he realizes that's his three. Okay, it's a good find. And so do we, I think I would find this play as well and try to go for the win. Making the 11 is a candidate as well that we find there. Five and hit loose. And if this works for Sean, he's right back in the driver's seat. Ryan can hit with the five. He's dominating. 
one six. So I consider this working for sure. Ryan under a lot of pressure on this roll. Six is hit. Most things are going to cover and make a five prime. Yep, and so I think we're covering from the nine and just, or from the eight, yeah, and just lift it. What other deuce do we have? And now Ryan's primed with that single checker again in a little bit of trouble, but he gets the opportunity to clean up his blot at least. Three, two, I think, and just play into the six. Sure. Oh, you need to step to the edge and see the light. I almost didn't see that somehow. Yes. He needs the opportunity to be able to roll five. Sixes are not duplicated exactly. He'd like to, Sean would like to escape a checker from the 20 and would rather not break the nine to hit, but probably would if he got a six. Um, so, so Ryan's got to figure out best game plan there. So you want to step up and invite the attack or stay primed and risk getting stuck back on the 24 forever. And my intuition was just to play in the six originally, but. But yeah, I think escaping and controlling the outfield is a good plan. Puts pressure on that nine in some ways. Maybe? I can't think of any plays. I don't think it has much effect there, yeah. Finds the best play again. 2-1's going to hit loose off the edge. So we created something to do with that play. Maybe kind of unfortunate. 1-4, uh, okay. Enter play behind. Sixes are going to cover and extend a five prime for Sean. Four, three does not. Is it just, what do we do with this? Yeah, I guess we just play from the back. We don't want to open up the six to escape for Ryan, though leaving seven to three is tempting for sure to cover our board. But if, uh, if Ryan hits on the 22, it's in the same position as last time where he might be leaving shots in board, first of all. And second of all, he's still stuck behind that five prime, only fives to escape. So yeah, we can take the chance to just go for mobility from the 20 and solve the biggest problem of this position for Sean right now. Five, six is not a good shot for Ryan. I think it's just going to... I would have probably started two more points with just releasing the mids worth more. We're not actually creating a prime out there. Okay. Interesting. Very close. I really want that midpoint to connect to my back checker. Double fives can cover from the midpoint. That's really nice. And then one out from the back for sure. And then the last, sure, why not just around? Keep our anchor, cover some outfield. I don't see anything better. I guess if nine to four didn't play so deep, I'd like that. But can't be too bad. But it's just you like your, your spares higher on the prime. So that big numbers are playing well, as well as combinations that can hit loose off the edge. Um, not that many numbers that work well from the four point offensively for Sean. Three is going to cover. One's going to step up to the edge. Needs the chance. Take the chance to escape the prime. Still ahead in the race too. And five one. What can we do? We either rely on our prime, or we hit loose and go for switch to the attack. And they're very close. I'd have a difficult time deciding between these two. We can cover the outfield pretty well. Not that well. Ryan can hop out and park on the 17 a lot of the time and give Sean a lot of trouble in the outfield. So I feel some pressure to hit, but you never like to break your five prime to hit either. Um, so these are very just difficult decisions. I to pick out which one's going to... Sometimes Gammons can swing it too. And if Sean manages to close Ryan out before he can make any other progress, um, you know, they're going to go up quite a bit. So that's some additional value to attacking. I think the prime must tend to just win the most often. No real score hints at an even score here too. I expect myself that I would end up finding the attacking play. It's just clearer how that leads to victory in... I just have an easier time with that game plan. And I hate just leaving the six to escape. It feels like leaving him a lot. But, but the game's far from over if Ryan does escape with a six. And the five prime feels a little more permanent. We might get better opportunities to attack later that don't leave so many shots. So lots of upside to just playing quiet as well. Ends up going for the hit, okay. 
Ryan enters. So he gets away with the hit, and 7-4 to four is his only play there. Now is Sean looking to cover and likely... Okay, he gets to... Oh, 5-2 is a decent roll. That was probably going to hit and cover. 2-1, I think, has to cover, and then we can play 15-14. to 14. Oh, look at this. We should hit and take away the opportunity. That's not what I was thinking about, necessarily. Yeah, I'm thinking about making the board and covering the outfield, so I'll probably find Sean's play there, too. 6-2, wow. What a roll from Ryan. Rolls a miracle, and with the pressure on the blot, I think he's going to have a recube on fans. Uh, enters with the five, can't hit with the deuce, can reduce shots. Is this enough in the race with the shot to think about recubing? I think I like the redouble here. A three's going to lose your market a lot of the time, and just escaping with an eight, nine, ten combo, 12, is enough to win the game too. So I think this is generally our last chance to send the cube and enough wins to warrant it. And the less clear part to me is actually whether or not Sean can take it, which apparently he can. Um, he's got the perfect five-point board. If he gets hit, he might get to enter deeper. And he still might hassle usually five-point board or 20-point games or takes when your opponent hasn't gotten the blot to safety yet. So you can still get some shots later. So he's going to have to find the contact value in this position to generate a take with his perfect board. But this is not clear, and I would not fault a pass here at all either. It's easy to feel like the gammons could be higher with four checkers back. But that's a real key to this position is that they're only 5% anyway. Um, so we'll see what Sean does with this one, but he's been given a really difficult problem from Ryan. And if they... <laughs> They talked about bluff cubes. Maybe that'll convince them into taking this one or something like that. We'll see. Harder yeah, find from which side? The take side, I think. First, I was going to say, it's not like a trivial cube to find as Ryan, but I think easy enough once you think about it. I expect him to find that one very often. And again, Sean's got a pretty challenging position here to decide if this contact can possibly work out for him. It might be that every little detail this position matters too. Like there's no spare on the six or the seven in this awkward stack of five on the eights, which can create barren problems later. Um, and he's just going to pass it. Uh, I think it's reasonable close enough that he won't worry too much about that decision. And Ryan off to an eight away, 10 away start. Been good for him. Five two to open. Double threes is gonna attack, and on a fan, right? Um, John's gonna have an easy cube. Ryan should still have a take even at the score. Two six hits back though performs much better. Takes the eighth checker out of the zone, which greatly reduces the attacking potential. Uh, five from the roof, but with the six, so he's got to enter at the five. The six, where is that going to move? I think I don't really like being hit double hits often with the 24 to 18 play. So 13 to 7 feels like it's got some merit here. Why not try to slot the prime with three back? What's a fourth back hurt? Okay, he's going to get four primed and hit for tempo while we do it. And and Sean's going to be a lot in a lot under a lot of pressure to perform on this to stay in the game. And 1-6 enters poorly, but at least creates a prime. So this might be takeable, but that um, third checker on the 24 feels like a big signal to be sending the cube. And look at this, just borderline. So Ryan rolls on, which is fine decision here. He's just going to play the checker around. Respects Sean's offensive position and only nine in the zone that he has himself. So Sean needs to split immediately, maybe twice. I think both from the back is pretty reasonable here. Um, six to five doesn't really improve your position at all. And we have more ways to cover that anchor at the edge, but he decides to keep the safety of, of the 24 point to make sure he's not blitzed in this position. Three, two, it's going to point on head and we'll proceed from there. I guess he sees he has a loose hit and step up, um, or maybe even a uh, step up and cover. So that's a different game plan, but I think you've got to go for the attack a little more here. You have the bar point slotted. You can have a five prime. Um, and you put your opponent on the roof. 
it's just a little too valuable to do that. But he sees there's lots of returns and a three-point board to respect on Shad's side. And so he is going to consider this more solid play. Sean has a lot of really great rolls if he just lets him play too, though. Okay, now he's required to hit on the ace or just play down. Ryan's got to think about cube action here. This is looking pretty good now. It's not primed anymore. Either he hits on the ace and is primed, or he enters on the deuce or four. Lots of ways he's going to end up with a five prime in front of Sean. V fans, he's sad, but um, definitely very likely to just take over this position completely in the next sequence, which makes it urgent to get the cube in before we lose our market. And yeah, he really only has that one blunder from the first game and otherwise playing pretty lights out. Uh, shows up with his A game and Sean's going to take this even though it's a fairly sizable pass. <laughs> shows how bad it is to have that extra checker back on the 24 point. Four one, and now he's stuck with a fourth checker back there too. Very tough game for Sean to play here. Ryan is still primed, but very likely to, there we go, close out the five prime at least. And we can slot the back as well. Why not? Go for the six prime. Four's cover here. Still needs a three to step up sooner than later. And that's going to be a lot to overcome for Sean if he ends up with four checkers stuck behind a six prime. Five, four doesn't get the opportunity to move either of them. So it's just going to be two down from the mid for lack of options, I think. Ryan is going to hopefully get to step up for his side. The ace is good to do it with. Oh, perfect. The ace sees the sees the eight point, so of course we want to step up with that. And the four covers the six prime. Very nice shot for him. I'm not even sure he prefers to be up on the on the twenty one point over the twenty three here. Only if Sean shifts nine to eight somehow. With a six three he's not doing that. So does he need to go for a loose hit or something? Like it's hard to figure out how we're winning this game as Sean. Maybe damage reduction of just playing quietly out of direct range is reasonable too, but going for the win can't be too bad. Enters with the deuce and five down. Pretty simple stuff for Ryan. One is going to make a second anchor in her board for sure, the 23. And then we got to figure out our last ace, which maybe just thought, oh, we can break and hit three to two. That's a lot of fun. Maybe just nine to eight to make sure we get some timing on escaping sixes. And okay, he goes with the the bigger split all the way to the 22. I see the play on the list. It's not too bad. And six, five rolls the prime home, reduces the chances for another anchor for Sean. Sean rolls the deuce anyway, though. Saves his position. Nothing else to do with the five but slot the four. Doesn't have timing for this, but this can work. If he gets hit with this deuce, maybe he can fan for a while. And Ryan is going to hit him to work on escaping, I think. Oh, no. He doesn't have to. He can just let him roll. Yeah, the timing is so much better uh, for Sean when he hits. I'm worried about being priming, so I was hitting, thinking about hitting pretty quickly here. Um, but I see it now, because our opponent has to play their role after we don't hit, and they're so likely to break down their position that we can actually afford to just play quietly. This is that tactical opportunity, very understandable to me. Uh, difficult play for sure. The the deuce is going to enter, and the five is not going to be something that Sean likes here. No, no. Oh, never mind. It's uh, He gets to re-roll it. Fortunate. One. Ace four isn't much fun either, but it keeps our structure at least. Plays the deuce. And pretty much impossible for Sean to time this. Really just breaking the board and hitting loose and getting hit is maybe his best opportunity at this point to win. So we can try something like five to four. But then we have to play seven to three with it, which is a little ugly too. The ace is nice 24 to 23 too. So then we could just play six to two or seven to three with it. Yuck. Not a good roll. Obviously, we're going to lose less gammons if we leave the shots. Um, this is a fine find, I think. 
to one. Is he going to send another checker back now or just play quiet? Now it's a blunder to time him up. We just need our opponent to play and keep cracking their board. And he's going to go for the hit anyway. Okay. This can be tricky. Uh, the four out, of course, six to five seems like a nice little distribution thing too. Sure, sure. Two one is going to enter high and start the six point again. Oh, five to four. Why that? I don't know. Six one. I think we just play simple. Playing to the eight kills our sixes too, which is going to slow Ryan down even more and allow Sean to crack even more. Um, this is interesting. I think two to the five point preserves your five point for the longest, so that's kind of a nice looking play. I like it. Kills his fives too. Two one. I don't think we're ready for trapping off or anything like this. Yeah. So just bringing a checker in and keeping our prime a little longer. Hoping Sean continues to crack. Four is a nice number. We're happy to get him to unstack to the ace. The deuce can just play six to four. Simple. And one more shot at four threes and the like. Two one, not a great number by any means. Should play two off the five instead. Yeah, that makes sense. A checker looks pretty dead when fours occur, so. But he's not ready to give up another point, understandable. Ryan's going to clear from the rear. Sean needs a six urgently. Five, four. Only one dead checker, so this can still, a board can be rebuilt. Six, two is just going to play simple. Five to three. We do have an option of playing seven to five, though, huh? That's relatively close. I guess while the board is weak. Um, would have let someone out on a five like that, though, which would have been a bummer. All right, has to leave a shot now, and Sean misses it. So Ryan in good shape to win a gammon in this game. 1-6, check her off. Hard for Sean to win with the board kind of trash late is, and the aces is going to make things worse. Maybe he could have left the checker on the three to try to remake it later. Killed an extra that way. Uh, five's coming off for sure, and then... Because that's our only play, and then our two is not so pleasant. I guess we just clear from the rear some more. Why not the six point? Good. Six three. Sean's actually got some work to do to save a backgammon here with six back. He's got to be careful that he's peeling quickly. Yeah, I like six to five, three off instead of you get a checker off. You keep a spare on the five and can rip one from there later. It's going to bear off better for longer. Um, but he might be thinking that he doesn't want to put a checker on a point that he wants to clear anyway. And could run into a shortage of threes quickly from this position. Yeah, Sean, I'm running another out and around the bend with the two would be fine. Order the 15. Double fours. Oh, nice. He had a six checker on there. That's pretty nice. Doesn't leave a shot with it then. And aces, once again, Sean's under a lot of pressure to figure out how to save this gammon and backgammon. Can't move any of those five checkers in back. Ryan putting a lot of threat to win a six-point game here. Four off, five to three is your only play. Um, in the teens on backgammons. Okay, not infinite, but they happen here. Scary. Five, six. Yeah, we're going to get one from the back at least. And then maybe 12 to six with it, but looks like just running to the 12. Oh, making the 12 as well. That's a nice blocking point should you get the hit. But he breaks an anchor right away instead. I think you don't want to give up this 2-1 that Ryan got to find instead. Just no real gain to doing that so early. Maybe it saves some backgammons. I'm not even sure, though. Um, getting to enter on the four is pretty nice. And then I feel like... Oh, interesting. Now we really need to go from the back to make sure we don't lose a backgammon with three checkers and board. That's uh, surprising to me. 
probably playing for outfield control somehow myself. Making the 12 makes a lot of sense to me. 4-3, only a 3 is playable, no 4. And we have the same question here. It's hard to be pointed on if you run with one from the 24, so it's pretty urgent to do that. Um, when we stay, though, we get backgammon way more often. We need two rolls to get them out. Two good rolls, too. Ryan clears naturally. Okay. So the backgammon's dropped quite a bit again. Taking two off would have done a lot for that. So at least we need to go 24-18 now. And he's just going to run and get off the backgammon completely. Okay. Finally gives up on the idea. 4-2. And wins a gammon to go. Aid. And un oh, did he only take two of his points originally? Six away, 12 away. Six two just runs past the stack after a five one split open. Three two misses, makes an anchor though. Nice balance game for everybody. Double ones is definitely gonna make the five point, and then I guess we can sync up with the outfield blot by playing twenty four to twenty two. Um, Sean's going to prioritize escaping around the bend instead. Threes is going to make two nice board points. I guess he considers making the 18 as well. Three five can safety the blot. It can run again. I think safety in the blot makes the most sense here though. Even though he's down in the race, why do we want to get hit when we're outboarded? Try to keep things simple. 5-3 looks like two down to me. Could run, though. Feels premature to run against uh, the five point and nine checkers in the zone, though. It's a pretty decent structure. Six one makes the bar, of course, and primes the anchor a little better. Uh, six one of Ryan's own, it's less clear, but maybe it makes the bar. You hate volunteering the ace. Everything else is very stiff, though. Not sure I know how to play it from there. So he's gonna go for the pure play. Okay, I think I like that. Six five. Okay. Just gonna bring two down. Don't have other options. Ryan could make the mid again. If not, I think he's just playing to the five. Needs to keep his anchor. And putting Sean under a lot of pressure to step up and escape himself. So no reason to give him like a nicer plan. Two, four. Can't make a point behind. So what are we doing with this? Maybe seven to five, six to deuce. Mm -hmm. Six three doesn't make any points and doesn't run very well either. So this is a pretty bad six. Um, maybe it just has to hit loose on the ace, but that's where the where you want the checker. So you don't want to do that. So quiet play makes a lot of sense too. I guess against so many checkers in the zone, I don't think we can consider coming out. And for lack of a better option, he's gonna just gonna convert to attacking by hitting on the ace. Okay, play makes sense. Um, Sean rolls a nice return to hit and cover. Still has work to do to escape this prime, of course, but leading the race now. Four two. Ryan's gonna slot as well. Huge improvement next roll on aces for him. Six four doesn't do much. 
Maybe it just clears the seven. Slotting the four seems okay too. Going to give up nines in the outfield. Ryan rolls an eight instead. What do we do with this? Do we just get running? We could hit on the ace as well, but again, that's where the checker is, where we want it. So, yeah, I think just moving makes a lot of sense here, too. And now Ryan with the, or not Ryan, Sean with the racing lead, threatening to escape and play a holding game and 31 pips in the race. This looks like enough to send it. I see the market loss here. I don't think, even though he's going to hop out to the outfield and still have two blots to deal with, I think his prime is good enough and enough in the race that he can afford to send this. Um, still a very clear take for Ryan. Must have quite a bit to do with trailing the match by a lot. Double twos should just play to the five. Oh, nice shot from Ryan. That's going to make a board point and bring too many, two more checkers in. For sure we're doing this. Yeah. And now he just needs some sixes and fives to escape with tempo while Sean fans and he can be back in the driver's seat. It's going to happen plenty with the four point board. He's going to slot with it. Okay. I did not see that play. Uh, getting hit with the deuce seems pretty bad, but maybe it preserves your timing. It's not that comfortable for your opponent either. Okay. Maybe he just thought he needed the big swing on improvement and having more numbers working for him uh, when he was missed. He needs to buy time to get those three checkers around. Aces is going to crack something for Sean. Presumably just the first point from the back, which is... Uh, Oh, this is an interesting play. The seven to six, two to one. Yeah, I'm thinking of this. Just finding two checkers into the six. Four, six is just going to come out. No reason to kill the blocking point. Five, five. Okay, there's a reason to kill the blocking point. Consolidates around to a race. He's already cubed. And so Sean coasting home to a likely win here. He can dodge a six, three. Four one's gonna clear a point. Still a couple numbers to to avoid, like double sixes. Maybe that's the only one. The distribution ace, either three to two or two to one, looks more valuable to me than trying to get off the six point and pre clear. So that seems reasonable. A lot of times you want to be lowest on your outside point, have the tie a chance to get home safely. Ryan's going to keep just making board building plays. Not like running off the anchor for some reason, but I like the looks of his. I guess the gammon race could be getting close, and maybe you really want to conserve pips in that instead of playing to the ace. Double threes can rip four. Why not? What are you worried about rolling? Even if somehow you leave a shot and get hit, you've got so many off that you're doing pretty well. Um, so we can go a little bit more for gammons and such by, by just taking checkers off. Double sixes, okay. A lot of gammon potential in this position for Sean now. Ryan forced to stay with his five point board. And now how's the best way for Sean to reduce contact on this? Good hit and cover and then switch two to ace, switch five to four. Switching five to four looks like it cleans up a little nicer.
Yeah, still quite a bit of gammons from this position. An ace miss is not good for that cause. Buys Ryan a whole roll. 5-3 is likely going to play 15-10, 13-9, I think. Create as many ways to get the crossover as possible. Interesting. You shouldn't take crossover. I do not know that one. To win, if he can dodge a set, he'll save the gammon. And he does. And that's on to six away, ten away. It wasn't a backgammon, unfortunately. <laughs> well, and they're going on a quick break. Okay. Back with more backgammon action. I'm going to take a quick break as well. Be right back with a continuation of this match. Hit the dance floor Don't work too hard My break a backbone Return of the Mac The king is back though Corvette and cash I never lack though She saw the stone You know how that go Fatality My diamonds that cold Versace trunks I hit my backstroke Knock on the door She at the back bro All I really take Is a little taste Allen girl Blue eyes with a little bass Here for the thrill I don't need a chase Sir Wanna vibe it to get away Shimmy shimmy I got the semi four way Don't step out the line Like this a probate You hit the line And try to locate this for the time, got time for no day war Too many, I'm going Two. Too crazy and I got Three. Bad ones and they ready Four. A good time, so now it's Five. In the way we left that Six. Can't remember anything But I know we got late, 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 late. Good times Living in the moment Feel like The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market, available on Amazon. Links in the description below. Oh, you, you sure? You're right. <laughs> Not quite. 
We good, we good. Everyone's ready. Nick's ready. Everyone's ready. Nick's not ready. <laughs> you sure? Commentate ourselves. All right. Missed a couple starting moves in this game here. Had to get some tea, y'all. I'm cold and tired. I'm ready for dinner. <laughs> so I got to go for it. But okay, this is awkward. So the ace is hitting, and usually early in the game, especially when outboarded, we'd be thinking about playing down. But so many numbers are going to hit anyway that maybe it protects that checker to unstack to the ace. We have more in the zone than usual. Um, so both plays are very, very close here. Tricky play for, for Sean, for sure. And he manages to find the best anyway. Double fours isn't going to hit anything, but it's going to improve Ryan's position quite a bit. So out to a solid start. It's uh, Sean. And then Ryan found the best play last time. There we go. No longer backwards. 5-1, I think Ryan is probably going to cover the bar point because it's still in front of the anchor. But we always have to at least consider covering the ace after we slot it. No checkers back there. 5-2 hits the indirect. Great roll for Sean. And what is this? 3-2 is going to enter and hit. Sure, even with the blot back there, right? We hate to get another sent back, but... What else do we have? We're going to, yeah, I think everything has to leave a shot anyway. Sean's going to hit on the ace and step out with the five, it looks like. And in a commanding position, especially with like a fairly sizable deficit in the match, I think he's likely to be approaching a cube here. He's thinking about his best play here. What else? Oh, he could make the anchor. I didn't even think about that. That is a very strong contender. Just make the 20 point. Oh, they look like they're talking to the transcriber too. Oh, to Mate. Okay, I gotcha. I hope he's actually thinking about his play. Decides to just make the 20, make the solid play. But trailing, it's very nice to hit and come out. Mate just threw something at me. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> what do you got, Mate? Oh, a cup? They needed a different cup? They don't like some cup? No, nothing, nothing like that. Okay, okay. I just asked Aviv if he's feeling all right. And cool. Okay. I'm throwing things at you because I, you're saying <laughs> my name too, just too many times. Ah, I've been saying Mate's name too many times, so I got thrown at. My bad. You learn lessons, right? Some of us do. We got this nice cup for the stream now. Six out, six sees the lights. So that's a nice uh, roll for Ryan. Yeah, keep it moving. What else can we do? Play another checker behind in a bot. And that seems fine too, but I don't really see the gain on this. There's some difference. I guess I guess there's a severe lack of twos for Sean. That could be a big piece of it. And the cube's still in the center. I guess that seems right, but yeah, it's a mutual holding game, so we don't have much just thinking about being four points down in the match that he's looking for aggressive cubes, but it's hard to find one against an anchor. Oh, Dimitri's asking when the release date for the Mochi Mark book is. I don't know the date exactly. I know it's like a publishing software thing. Hopefully, whenever they can do that, mine should be like shortly behind too. Excited to share a match play book with everyone. Five, three. Also, I mean, they've been working on Monte Carlo and and releasing the app and everything too, so it just hasn't been the top of the list. 
But I think all this can do is play two checkers behind. Uh, Ryan looking to get a uh, checker active from the 21 point. Very nice roll for him. Relatively close race, so everyone wants to kind of conserve racing chances and mobility, all these things at the same time. The 3-2, he has to give up quite a bit by hitting. But I guess with the blot behind in the anchor, it why not? What are we going to play with it? Down? Maybe just two down? It's just a little scary with the two blots behind that he just created, and that's why he's thinking about that. Yeah, it looks like bot prefers hitting and cleaning up. What is play B, though? Otherwise, we're going to sit on our small racing lead and play six to ace? Yeah, the lack of options really makes you have to think about hitting here, too. No play looks particularly enjoyable. If we're just going for safety and flexibility, maybe he actually considers breaking the eights, playing six to five, or playing to the six and the five. I could see that play getting made. Doesn't look too bad here. Um, doesn't feel like our goal is really to prime Ryan, but it is still a nice asset to have. And the racing lead is a very nice asset to have, too, so he doesn't want to give up the midpoint and risk that. Oh, Dimitri wants to know if my book's about backgammon. I want to say backgammon. No, I wrote a book about um, adjusting to match play, and he does break the eight point. I, I think that makes sense. But it's, yeah, it's about, um, like, feel and rule of thumb, mainly, like, how to, how to make cube adjustments without knowing take points is more or less the idea. So um, hopefully an easy system for people to learn how to adjust without having to do a lot of math over the board. 6-2, what is this going to do? I don't think we're down in the race. We're not leaving the anchor, of course. He's going to look at it, though, running to the 13. I think he recognizes that that's not the right idea. Um, we can make a board point and still keep our checkers live. The 8's not serving us so much. That seems like the easiest piece of contact to release. We really don't like losing the midpoint here, either. Um, so, actually, oh, that's very interesting. I did not consider 6-4 to four with it and just leaving the 3 in front um playing for purity and and constructive and volunteering a shot letting sean break the anchor if he wants to um see if ryan can find that play but it's going to build the the four point next and play for contact best this is the easier one to find i think so he is now going to take a second to consider well what if i just uh yeah okay great find ryan this is nice. In these mutual holding games, we do have to do a lot to like improve our board and volunteer some shots here and there, and we get opportunities to make sure that we're the ones most ready for contact when it shows up. And Sean's got a little bit of a tactical weakness with two blots on the deuce and the ace right now that allows Ryan to play a little more pure like this. Um, so he's looking at the safe play again, see what she picks. Um, is, he's in the right uh, ballpark either way with these plays, though. Bors is going to escape cleanly with a nice racing lead for Sean, so finally cashing in on the game plan he's looking for. Um, still, I guess he could technically have a cube here, but it's not a very threatening one for Ryan yet. Yeah, still work to do to clear that 16 point. 5-2. I don't think we can volunteer from the 6, so the only thing that leaves is to clear the 7 safely. Six two for Ryan. I think probably keeping a single blot on the midpoint. We don't want to bury a checker when contact is our game plan. Yeah, that's a little stiff. It's it's close, but that invites the cube from Sean. I feel like maybe he missed an opportunity there. I'm not sure. Maybe not. Maybe the contact's still good enough, and he's going to be stuck clearing the nine point now, and hoping that Ryan's the first one to have to give up a point. And this is a very awkward number as well. We're either burying to the ace or volunteering somewhere. I guess we could make the three. Ugh. But yeah, this is a nice tactical opportunity to leave the... Now that Sean's cleared the, the nine and the seven, we can step out 21 to 18 and get good outfield coverage and to have a five-point board and maximize our coverage. This looks very nice. 
fly shots in nines aren't too scary. Not too many aces that hit and cover. So really we're not in too much danger of volunteering here. See if you can find that play. That's a choice too. And he does find the best to maximize his contact. Very well done by Ryan. 5-1. Uh, what is this? Does it just have to clear the six now? Everything else just volunteers a, a billion shots. Almost like a double shot minimum. I guess he could park on the 11 and duplicate fours, but he's going to find the safe play against the five-point board instead. I think this is wise. And now he's ready to hit a fly shot if he gets the opportunity. Maybe his Ryan's best move here is just to play from the 18 all the way to the 7. Keeps the deepest contact. Doesn't give up the midpoint, which is essential. And still helps cover the outfield. All he really pays off to is some aces, ace, two, ace, three kind of rolls. Everything else, he's going to be in really good shape with a better play. Oh, CMC notices Ryan's uh, playing at a slower pace. I feel like he's moving the checkers around faster for some reason. He's taking the time to think when he needs to, um, but then also moving things a lot more. I don't know. 6-5 links up. This is as good as we can hope for, is Sean, I think. He's going to think about coming around and volunteering and bringing both closer, but it just reduces blots, reduces shots. Maybe doesn't get us closer to getting both checkers home, but most signs point to this play. 5-4 gets hit. And I can't believe Sean never got to a position where he really had a cube in this game. And now Ryan's likely to have a pretty easy one unless Sean hits from the roof. Even at this leading score, I think he's going to be able to afford to cash this game. There's no gammons in it, of course. Um, he does have a little bit of work to do to close the three, but I don't think enough. And fairly clear market loss. I, I imagine this feels like a double pass to me. Pretty sizable one, too. Okay. And so his main concern is what happens if, if Sean just enters on the three or how many rolls is he going to have a chance at a fly shot for? If I'm not winning the race yet, can I really send this? Um, and just like with this much of a match lead, you definitely don't like to send a cube. Um, Charlie, wait, why is the clock on Sean? Is Sean thinking about something? I should go tell them that. For sure. I'll be right back. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, yeah. So How long was it for? So you want to give them, give them some extra time? They could do that, you know, or if you're not worried yeah, about sure. it. But I can ask for it if you'd like. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, just because, just I mean, I, I shouldn't be, but just... Yeah. I, I'm hoping the game will go on a bit longer. <laughs> I'm I, I don't know this, man. No, 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 I know. No, no, sorry. No, no, I know. No, not. It didn't... I, I don't know what it... It's um, it obviously just didn't quite rock, kind of, um, properly. It's a phone. Yeah, I don't know why they can't have a real car. <laughs> I think they're trying to advertise the app, aren't they? But, uh, it's not like it's the uh, finals in the Monte <laughs> Carlo. Exactly, it's the Monte Carlo like, Open, exactly. <laughs> okay. You have an extra time, it's mm -hmm. fine. That was the question. So you make the request that we can give an extra time. Yeah, give, him, can give it, it to him. It's only fair. All right. Let's find it and that's the good news. Okay. Oh, that's enormously kind to bring us a glass of wine. Thank you so much. <laughs> that's extremely kind. Do you need me to back up the tape? Hmm? Did you need me to back up the tape? Yeah, we were just going to look. I, I don't know. Like, I think I just lost a bit of time, kind of. I, I wasn't aware of how long it was. but um, I'm, Well, I'm, we I'm, asked I'm, about I'm, it. Both the players are happy with giving the clock back. So, And I got Arda to check on the ruling for that. If Ryan's okay with it as well, they're going to look back on the stream and figure out what the clock time should have been at. Um, and award that back to Sean. 
and we'll just correct the clock settings that yeah, way. So yeah, Tara's helping out with that. that. But uh, carry on and just yeah, I just noticed it running off, and I wanted to make it fair if we could. Or maybe they're not going to worry about it. I'm guessing if Nick mentioned it, it would probably... Yeah, if they don't care enough, that's fine, too. <laughs> I think Sean just doesn't... I don't see him timing out, but okay. I figured I'd just let him know that that was going on. I don't know how much ran off that way, too. Aces, usually when you don't have a extra spare to hit loose, you just do the switch. Um, these are confusing if you haven't seen them before. But, yeah, I think we just want to switch 6 to 4 here, or 5 to 4 after making it. There we go. Good find by Sean. Common second roll dilemma. Five, six. I don't know why we want to stay in harm's way, I guess. So just out to the 14 seems fine. Still have some racing advantage. And trailing in the match, 10 away, 5 away. Sean wants to think about whether or not his board advantage is enough for a cube yet. I don't think we're quite there, but we're not too far off. So why is to stop and think about it a little bit? Uh, after the hit, I don't see many there. If we could make a board point, we'd do that with the checker in the air. But just linking up with a 16 seems great here. Bringing two checkers in the zone seems nice too, but this is just going to win a lot of games. Uh, entering on the deuce and the four round, and this is uh, should be an easy cube from Sean, and is Ryan going to find an easy pass here or not? Um, very one-sided game. Super close on the borderline. Okay. So this is going to be a difficult decision. He's probably going to have to spend time thinking about it. These are the ones where we always spend the most time in backgammon, is when it's really close and we actually don't have potential to make a mistake. Um, and that's why it, may, it seems like such a complicated decision is because both options seem viable and we have to make sure we're not making a big mistake each way. Oh, and, uh, the new clock, I think people are like in playing on it. Um, I mean, all clocks, you have the potential to run off like that. Um, but this is a new thing that Galaxy's selling too. So of course they're excited to have that show it off to everyone how it works kind of on the stream like this. Yeah, I think the nice thing about it is that the setup's really easy. I think it's just a simple app, so like setting the time controls on it and everything like that is um, like dirt simple. Where like, I mean, I don't know. I feel like most people don't know how to set the clocks around a tournament room here. And I think you can do, because it's an app, you can probably do tournament control kind of things and things like that too. I can't remember if they said that was a feature for sure. Ryan does choose to pass that, by the way. Basically an optional decision and finds like a very small error there, but I think he'll be fine with having passed it, knowing how close it was. 4-1 is going to make the bar point, makes an asset. Not a bad start, but a little bit better start for Ryan. But again, very difficult to find cubes at 5-way, 9-way. Three two covers a nice blocking point and splits. Pretty good response for Sean. Still under some blitzing pressure from Ryan here, though. I think he's going to make the four point next with this six two. Uh, fly shot from Sean is going to save him. Barring that, he's under in a bit of pressure. Is it so bad that he needs to make the the twenty two point and break something with the six, such as the midpoint? Looks ugly. What is play B? It would just be running to the fourteen. And down in the race, that seems a little dubious too, but they're both pretty close. Yeah, so anchoring and voluntary priming yourself is a little bit better, um, but no good option really there. For this, I think just eight and nine, why not? Doesn't do anything we were hoping to do. He might be thinking about whether he needs a tempo to hit on the ace. I don't see much call for it, so yeah. Bring checkers forward, get ready to have everything in the zone to attack, should things go that way. Uh, no, okay, I guess, I don't think we can afford to leave shots, so it looks like it's, oh, we could actually play to the 13 into the 2, but first thing I saw, of course, is 14 to 10, and then if you do that, then you have to play 24 to 23 with it, I feel like, so he finds this nice alternative, okay, actually slotting the 5 is fine there, though, that is quite surprising to me, I can't imagine volunteering a shot there, but it is a huge improvement when you get away with it and gives us a lot of counter game. Very interesting play there. Tough to find. 
Um, two down to slot. I don't see allowing our opponent to escape with the tempo. So I think he needs to keep the midpoint and make the deuce point and keep the, the blitzing game plan getting more and more threatening. This is the, the upside on the slot isn't so strong either since the, the ones and the twos don't, uh, cover the prime all that effectively. There's not that many ways to just have a six prime and play forward. Um, being in like a head in the race with more checkers back, you must not have timing for a, a priming game either. So it's just not his ideal game plan. Going for the attack would have been nicer. The twos was going to be good for Sean either way. And now with this, uh, now that they're in a priming game, he's forced to go for this. Uh, one five. Now stepping up with the ace is, does not look so bad. Usually you prefer to be on the 24 to the 23, but uh, attacking isn't going to do a lot for Ryan with how much work he has to do to escape that five prime anyway. And it'll buy time for Sean to hold his structure. So nice find for him. Five, four, looks like it's going to cover and hit. And I think his best hope is to still go for the attack, but it's going to be quite the task to roll these... Aces and sixes to escape Sean's structure here. It's in a bit of a tough spot. It's an outfield prime, so Sean doesn't have like much of a threat of his own. Ace six is already very close to cracking himself. Next six is a real problem. Five one. Ooh. Man, he's getting all the dilemmas. Of course he'd love to cover and make the six prime. I think that's fine, but he'd love to step up with the ace too. And the six is great for Ryan. Okay, now he's uh in the driver's seat in this position. Maybe enough so to send a cube already. But this is, yeah, like really bad roll for Sean. Almost game over. I think uh, breaking from the seven seems most natural. What a swing on just one sequence. Anything where he can keep his prime and he's doing pretty well. But now Ryan's got timing. He's not blocked anymore. Um, he can turn this into attack and win a lot of gammons. And next roll might be even worse for Sean. Let's see if he can figure out that he's really jumped past 80% in this game. I was surprised to see how dead this game was after just the simple 6-4 sequence like that after making the prime, but looking bad in a huge pass, almost too good. I wonder if that's what he was considering, whether or not it might be too good. Uh, by the way, it's uh, Nick's birthday today. Everyone's been saying happy birthday. Thank oh, you, Mate. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They so all know. smash that like button if you wish him happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> that was Mate. Mate's going in. I don't know what that means. And he passes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're at four away, nine away. What sort of chaos is Mate introducing to the player from now? <laughs> he's always good for some excitement. Oh, he's uh, switching out the transcriber for a bit. Okay, transcriber needs some break. That's a hard job. Ooh, what's gold plated? I want to know what's gold plated. Oh, how much is the clock plus? Yeah, gold plated clock. Yeah, it's a <laughs> gold plated stand, but you have to use your own cell phone. <laughs> You can get your cell phone gold plated if you want. One six out to the bar. That's going to offer a lot of hidden covers, but I can't see it being better to play down to the offensive bar and get a third checker back. So I like Ryan's play there. Ooh, he's left with a dilemma too. I think I want to. Oh yeah, I. I think covering the five is more important. Then we have the opportunity to hit for tempo on the twenty-four to disconnect all the sixes that anchor on the bar point. It's a common theme in the opening to use fives to hit that way after your opponent splits to the bar. Nice response from Ryan, hitting on the ace, getting the back checker moving. 5-2 is going to anchor and hit. Great shot from Sean. Thanks, Dimitri. And how did we, we got hit and Ryan came out to the bar and now Sean's doubling this with the anchor, the better board, but three checkers back. This doesn't seem like much threat to me. Ryan's still slightly ahead in the race. Four away, nine away, we want to get our cubes in in time, but if this doesn't seem like anything for money, 
I think we should find a fairly easy take here. And so hopefully Ryan can go through that and, and figure out that he's still got a lot of game. But nice find from Sean to send it. Four two, it can optionally hit. That's very nice, um, but also makes the four points a little bit to think about. It's tough to make the four point and just volunteer a shot though. So I like this. Um, we don't really get better distribution by playing this rather than seven to five. So the cleanup is a little bit better option. Now Ryan has a bit of dilemma, but I'm not worried about having an anchor when my opponent has four backs. So I'm inclined to hit on the bar. At the score, they're quite close though, to just sort of uh, simplify the game by making an anchor. I like Ryan's play. 2-6 is going to hit again and continue the attack the best he can. 3-2 is going to anchor up now. And Ryan's made a decent game out of this. He is being primed a little bit, but having that anchor in the four back leaves a lot of game. 3-1 is going to cover for sure. And then how do we get moving the best? 13-10 uh, to 10 avoids giving the shot in the outfield, but it's tempting to, to play for contact here too. And Ryan stuck with the stiff play, stacking up the eight points. Four three must just need to get a back checker moving. So we can do that most effectively with 23 to 16. Stacking up the 20 is another option, but this sees the whole board and keeps the pressure on Ryan very effectively. And now there's no great place to play an ace. So maybe six to three reduces shots best. I don't know if there's something more constructive. I don't really see it though, so I'm probably just doing that. Ryan stuck playing a really awkward game here. Um, yeah, we can link up on the 10, and there we go. Play for dis diversification. Sean finds a nice play there. 3-1. Well, it can cover, and now the ace in the outfield's fairly safe. Okay, just indirects 6-5 and 7s. Uh, but Sean finds an 8 instead. What do we do to maximize this now? With a fairly even race, yeah, we just have to get that back checker moving. I like that play. Ryan hoping to keep him busy somehow. Can he afford to do it on this play? 6-4 could run and make the 12. That's a really interesting look, but it feels like it opens up to the attacking game plan a little too, a little too loose, I think. So I think I'm tempted to play 13-9, 12-6. Try to keep that checker back and go for the race instead. 13-9, um, 9-3 to not leave any returns from the bar is better if we're going to hit. Okay. Very interesting. And what is the best is just actually to play completely quiet. Play 12 to 6 and 8 to 4. Yeah, I I think I would find a play like this as Ryan as well. Difficult find. But he likes to play for the win. He's fond of saying that quite a bit. And this is definitely going to generate more wins at a little bit of risk. Fives, I think he's winning the race by enough that he can just go now and break contact. Even though contact feels like it's favoring him in some ways. 5-3, I think, is going to yeah clean up a bunch of blots, and Ryan's just playing a simple holding game now. Not too happy to be sitting on it, or not too sad to be sitting on a two-cube. Um, and something that he can turn around for contact like this with a close race, a, double, a set of double sixes just turns it around completely. Um, so not too dangerous of a game for him. Double fives looks awkward, but now it really solidifies his racing idea. Just play to the three again, why not? To the ace is fine too, okay. So oh, I guess he could actually switch. That's funny. And remake the ace later. So his contact is ruined. Sean can play pretty loose in the outfield to take advantage of that. And Ryan just needs that set of sixes. If it comes to it much, much later, he might just use a six to run. But for now, got to improve his board before he goes for something like that. Now with the 6-4, how does Sean take advantage of the contact most? It's, it feels like we needed that checker back to... Uh, Control the outfield a little better, but he quickly just plays it in for safety instead. And needs to find a way to make that four point. Um, I don't think it's so urgent that it's worth volunteering by making it straight out here. This is interesting, though. Slotting it is somehow an option. Two blots in board, and he's still primed after he goes for that play. Um, yeah, I would expect that I would probably find something safer like this, too. It's tough to fault Sean for... We're playing a little bit more quiet and relying on his prime. 
Slotting pl plays are fi hard to find, I think, sometimes. But the upside is there for sure. 6-3 rolls forward nicely. Ryan's still hoping for his double sixes. But he can just let the prime roll through him now as well. Has to start cracking his board, unfortunately. And I'm not sure if he prefers to roll a six and run here or not. He's at least saved a lot of gammons. Double sixes for Sean is going to volunteer a shot. Okay, Ryan has a new way to win. Four and something that cleans up. He definitely doesn't want to leave that return in board. Six two is going to force him to go. Okay. So even if he gets closed out here, it shouldn't be very few gammons here. Four one is going to be allow Sean the chance to try though. Oh, thanks for the happy birthdays again. Yeah, excited about Wilcox playing at 10 as well against, uh, why am I forgetting who he was playing against now? Someone very strong as well, I thought. <laughs> yeah, no breaks on my birthday, man. What else would I be doing on my birthday other than commentary? That's what I do. All right, Sean's probably going to prioritize safety here until if he gets a few checkers off with some fans, then he can start going for the gammon, but it's a little too far out of reach to, to play too aggressively here. 6-4, getting closer, needs to take a couple off. Okay, 6-3 is going to save a lot of gammons for Ryan, and we're likely to just move on to 6 away, 4 away. Oh, it's annoying me that I can't remember who they said Wilcox is playing. I'll figure it out. Oh, seven away, four away. My bad. This is an interesting score to me. Sometimes leader can still get some cubes in uh, in fairly normal positions because the gammon values like conveniently gets them to a match win, but has to definitely fear the recube. Um, balance each other out and probably wait towards waiting on the cube a little more. But it's close. Double hit for Sean's a very good start. Double four is great response by Ryan. What is he going to do with it? Just the nine after unstacking, or does he split and make the four? He does have the lot and board on the ace allows him to, to leave those fly shots. Both seem pretty reasonable. Okay, finds the best play. Fours is going to presumably make the anchor for like as part of it. And then what else with it? Do we want to invite our opponent to leave the anchor by leaving the checker on the seven? Because our other option is to dump two checkers behind with a fairly close race. It feels like a little too, a little too tight. We got to go for a little more, I think, and unstack the midpoint here and make a blocking point like this play. Ones advances the anchor and cleans up nicely. And looking like a small advantage for Sean with the racing lead and a little better structure in front. But pretty even in mutual holding games. Not going to be thinking much about the cube for a while here. And because of that, I don't think it's an opportunity to leave the anchor. We can still be attacked pretty, pretty easily. Two down and giving up the mid would leave a direct with sixes. So I guess we're just giving up some point. This seems like the nicest one because it makes a... A board point. Um, oh, if we play from the nine, we can start the four, though. But yeah, I definitely understand the logic of clearing the eight instead. Make something immediately now. Um, and what else is Ryan going to do with this? He can make the deuce point, or he can volunteer by making the four point. Um, oh, he should actually do both of those instead of clearing the midpoint. It does look pretty nice. But yeah, if we come down from the nine, making the two and not volunteering seems nice. Um, blot behind, we can play a little bigger, though. Let's see if he can find this. Yeah, four-point board is pretty scary. And being down in the race, that contacts his plan. Well, he's slightly ahead in the race now, too, so... Sure. Finds this. 
must be up there in the candidates. And Sean continuing to play quiet slightly ahead in the race after that. Well, slightly down in the race, actually. So Ryan, a small favorite in this game now. Five one, I think, is just going to clear the seven while making a four-point board. Pretty strong. And something's about to go for both sides. Six four looks likely to clear the eight point. Neither really wants to volunteer a shot against this four-point board right now. We're past that point. We're going to wait till we absolutely have to. Oh, thanks for the happy birthdays again. 5-4, what can this do? Yeah, yeah, just come from the midpoint. I like this. Only leaves some indirects. And eight's pretty much a winner for Ryan. Misses that. Gets to play into the six point, though, so... Nice constructive roll for him. 6-1 should safety a blot from the midpoint. Yeah, just 13-6. to six. I, His play B is looking at remaking the midpoint for contact, but you just open up to being attacked with fours and ones and allow decisive rolls for Ryan. Or keeping the anchor keeps it a 50-50 game. 5-3. I think we just make the ace point with this one. Yep. Everyone's just trying to hang on to all the assets they have. Clear safely. Um, something to run to the outfield for either of them. Like a 6-5 would probably be pretty nice. 5-3. I think it's still better to give up the 9 and make the board here. Look at this. He should keep the contact. Um, I mean, we're definitely coming not coming off the anchor. But this is a play I would have found too. I'm surprised that... Staying in the outfield so much. Oh, maybe it was last roll, actually, when Ryan made the ace that I was talking about. I don't know. That's a surprising play to me. And now we're at that point where we have to volunteer something, and I think we actually reduce shots and impact and improve our upside by leaving the anchor first. It's only aces and fly shots, and the aces aren't all that great. Um, where we leave a direct that's going to allow our opponent to come off their anchor and just win the game when we break the nine. Um, so he's going to stay a little further away and try to volunteer a 9 instead. There's some logic to that. But it also does keep us a little further from home. Keeps linked up with our back checker too, though. Running all the way is one last shot. Oh, interesting, because it blocks uh, fours. Yeah, so it opens up double threes. Yeah, it is five shots when you go. That's, that's very interesting to see. He's going to look at breaking this point too. Um, it was just not really, there's not as much upside, you know, Sean has better timing with all these spares on the six point as well. Could just, I mean, a, a hit there is going to be decisive for the game either way. Oh, someone's asking about what's the point of the clock stand. Well, you do get, uh, the app to configure it along with that. So it's not just the the stand, you know, you purchase and they send that out to you. But you get access to put this on your phone too. And there's a lot of configuration niceness to it. Um, easy to work with, pretty visible for the stream, all these things. Um, they don't show up clocks in general on the stream all that much. I know Mark loves playing with it. I don't know. I might like the physicality of the an actual clock too, but it seems like a nice option for a lot of people. I feel like Phil Simborg likes to work with apps and stuff like that quite a bit too. So... Um, yeah. It sure is. You know, the nicest thing is to not have to travel with this stupid clock when you go to these tournaments. All the gear that I should be bringing to these things is a pain when I want to travel light. So I really enjoyed just using my iPad as a clock for a long time. Fives around for 20 pips. That's going to give uh, Sean a Fairly clear advantage, um, but with the contact value for Ryan, he's going to have a simple take even at the score, too. But I, with only nine pips after the play, I don't know if this is enough where we want to really send, but it is like a last roll kind of situation. So if we're going to get a cube in, now's the time. We're about to volunteer the shot, and when we get away with it, we're likely going to win. Um, the only question to me is the upside on the and nine pips in a 70-pip race is enough. Okay, and he does find the cube. Ryan should find a pretty easy take here, unless the score deters him somehow. And takes, yeah. Has to play quiet to start. 
Quora one, Ryan's not going to leave his anchor, would risk gammons to do that, so he has to sit once more for the contact, even though he has to break his board. And Sean gets to play from the six one more time, keeping the spare on the five for one more option. And a 2-1, yep, gets to wait one more, hoping Ryan's forced to leave his anchor. And he is. Um, a little less punishing, though, if he can play that three around. Okay, he could maybe reduce shots by coming out as well, but this is going to make sure that he doesn't lose a gammon, I think, so I kind of like that play. Um, I didn't see... Ryan must have made some checker player that I missed to, to be kind of higher in the PR now. And now on this play, it does... I don't see any gain to Sean volunteering here. So I think he's just got to clear the six and the race has gotten pretty even. And Ryan's come out very well with this cube. Double fours is going to give him the lead in the race too. I think in with that last four, sure. And he can get some recubes in here. It's seven away, two away is going to be in like the high teens, something around 16, 17%. So he's going to have to get a little further than usual. But this double sixes is exactly that, much further than usual. And I think he's likely going to have a claim after this roll. 2-4 I don't think is enough to stay in it. He's going to have to think about it and convince himself for sure. But I think he's got a perfect opportunity to send an unlikely cube at this leading score. And he does send it. We'll see what Sean thinks about it. If he thinks he's close enough to play this out. Um, a lot of times people get tricked into wanting to play for the match here. But I think if he could see his winning uh, chances and understand that the race is bad enough to be only 5%, he'd know he has a pass. So the question is mainly if he can figure that out or not, or if he thinks he might be closer to 15 20% or something like this, or what's, you know, where the best value in this game is. It's never pleasant to pass and be down 7 away, 2 away, that's for sure. Yeah, people in the, or someone in the chat saying they would take here, it's feels like the intuitive thing to do, but you're giving away a ton of match-winning chances from 7 away, 2 away. You still can win the match. It's like 16 to 17 percent of the time. And so you're throwing that away and just playing the match for your 4.5 percent winning chances instead, which is massive. It's actually a very large mistake to do that here. It does happen, though. I really, um, I don't think it's the... It might be one of the bigger mistakes that we saw on stream all weekend, like someone's saying in there. But it's also a fairly common one. It's one that I think will occur in the tournament again, for sure, before the week's over. Um, it's just a difficult thing to deal with in the end of the match, unless you've studied and know exactly, like have some idea of take points and things like this. And he does know enough to pass it. Okay, good find for Sean. can be a very big mistake to miss the opportunity to play that game for the match if that's the correct idea too. So I credit Sean for spending some time to think about it. Ryan just fan with double sixes? It's not a good idea. Oh, and he got a double in with a no point board. Okay. That that could be okay. The take is very easy from there. Three six runs. It's seven away, two away. Of course, we're we don't want to lose our market. Double sixes is gonna make the bar point to start. And then well, I was gonna say maybe the deuce with it, but if we're making the deuce, then maybe just splitting to the ace does make some sense. Okay, okay, sure. Sure. It's a good find. Four six fans, and that's trouble for Ryan. Could be making up a lot of the gap on this game. Yeah, sure. Let's hit again. Uh ooh, I do like the hit in the outfield better, maybe, huh? Super unclear. You get more builders when you do this and you play another one down, but it feels strange to disconnect this way too. Um finds a good play there. They're all very close. Uh, Ryan enters deep, which is very nice. You love to enter with the two, and is going to challenge Sean to find a seven here to hit loose all the way on the... Oh, now he has a dilemma between the other checker again. 
Interesting. I was more inclined to prevent the anchor, but sending a third checker back is more effective at winning gammons. Okay. Ryan enters with two now, so two feet down should allow him to anchor a lot of the time, even when hit on follow-up here, and can't even hit loose. Okay. Best he can do is to hit a third checker or cover. And with two in, I guess you can't just let your opponent have tempo to play, so you got to go hit again. Okay. Start escaping too now that your position's overrun. These all come out really close again. That's that's wild. This one I have an easier time finding an uh, outfield hit for sure. <laughs> Thanks for the birthday wishes again, everybody. What is the prize for the winner of this match? No prize for this. This is still the... Oh, I'm sorry. There is a very big prize for this one. I think it's... Uh, what is it? I think it's close to 10,000 euros up top. And I think, uh, yeah, like 9,000. And then second should probably be close to half that or something. So around like four or 5,000. There's a side pool too that either one of them might be winning quite a bit on. Um, so yeah, this is a big valuable match for sure. Hard to play under that kind of pressure. Okay, and covers, and it's very small. 2-4 is almost perfect to Ryan. And he's completely equalized the position with that five-point anchor. And Sean, with uh, a massive racing lead, is still under a lot of pressure to get both those back checkers moving before he destroys his front position further. Um, it all starts with a hit here, and Ryan doesn't do that, so he's going to have to... best he can do is just improve his board by making the three... Oh, it does hit. He can hit 20 to 13. Can he go for that, though? It's really, there's so many returns. It feels like this must win more, but it gives up a few too many gammons of the score. I wasn't even really thinking about it. Um, and just sitting on this contact is going to, we can improve our board a little bit along the way, is going to win quite a bit, too. So we'll see if he can figure out how to make this adjustment. This feels like it's Ryan's style to hit, for sure. He finds this play. Okay. Well done, Ryan. Avoids unnecessary extra gammons. One six is blocked. Really wants to pretend like he can use it. Ryan doesn't think it's so funny. Mate thinks something's funny. <laughs> what can he do with this? I guess he's just got to get the back checker moving 14 to 8. Then any ace you like. None of them look too good. Uh, maybe we challenge him to come off his anchor and just place it on the seven. I think that's better than weakening your board to a three-point board now that Ryan's almost equalized board strength. Um, that's a tough one, though. You definitely prefer not to volunteer and just play the race here. That's the other thing. If you get hit, you can still win the race, too. So it's not too devastating. I think he finds a good play here. Ryan's happy to make the five-point and improve his board. And Sean really needs that five. Exactly that. I think... Hopping out to the bar, and then do we continue to the 14 and duplicate twos? Yeah, we're like really close to solving all our problems if we do that. The first instinct, of course, for me was to play behind seven to three and safety that checker, but we leave the double shot unnecessarily. Finds the good tactical play here. Very well done. Uh, yep, just maximizing builders for Ryan for the contact later. And a seven's going to solve a lot of problems for Sean here. Finds it. And on to a likely winning race. At least Ryan's not being blitzed off the board to lose a gammon anymore. And so most likely result is going to be 5 away, 2 away after this. Clears another point safely. Nice double aces. 6-4 is just going to keep rolling forward and waiting for something like a 6-2, should we get so lucky, or a weird set in a moment. 5-2 is going to make things a little bit more awkward. Um, yeah, okay, and he's going to avoid getting uh, staying odd out there and leaving leaving shots on 6s or 5s. Heads up play. Ryan can just leave with one with the blot behind now and save Gammons, and instead makes the ace point really don't like having to play in pure like that. 
Uh, Sean keeps finding deuces and being forced to play a little bit awkward. So now does he really commit to it and start to leave serious gaps in his board? Or does he just play six to four and something? And yeah, I, I don't fault this play. Feels like a little bit much now to to keep trying to avoid the anti-jokers. Understand why he found that. 5-3 finally clears the bar point safely. Just have to dodge a 6-5 next roll. Yeah, this is going to bring one all the way around and close the board. And of course, Ryan will stay for that 6-5 potential for one more roll at least. Double aces, punished. <laughs> uh, how does it do it the best? If we shift and cover, then we're out on the outside. So, and we don't win a lot of gammon. So, and yeah, maybe just ripping makes a lot of sense and hope that our opponent rolls a 6 and has to leave. That's a good find from Sean, too, there. Good tactical stuff. Ryan's still hoping he rolls the 6-5, and he does. Okay. Got one chance at a game winner. If he can do this, Sean's still got some, and he hits the ace. Wow. Not locked up yet. He's about 80% here, I think, 75 to 80 range. And his distribution's not great, so a little less than 80. Work to do, but of course, very good chances from almost uh, losing the game. 3-6, six, 6 and 3 off. He can bear off fairly conservatively, though, since uh, Sean doesn't have the perfect speed board or anything like that. So if he, if Sean had more checkers off, we'd be thinking about, like, like ripping and volunteering here. This is a good find for him. The clearing from the rear is fine. Clearing the... Well, I actually talked to him about this play a little bit, too, but it was more with a 5-1. The 3-1's a weird exception. Finds a good play there, too. I don't think it's much risk and does get a checker off, so he enters with a 3. We're not too sad. And we're more sad that 6-1 would have hurt worse if he had cleared that instead. This is just two checkers off. And yeah, Ryan's in the driver's seat now to win this match and win the final of the Monte Carlo Open. Six two, of course, forced to volunteer. Backgammon's never easy. Um, which do we we add one three deuce by doing that, but I'm not sure we lose more. So maybe just taking the checker off's okay. It's a bit confusing. This duplicates some hit and cover numbers. Double aces fans. I'm not sure this cleans up any better is another thing, but maybe it does. Six off, and we have the same similar decision. We're going to take an extra off this time and volunteer the 3-1. Not even sure how much we gain by hitting with that. The four hits continues with the five, and it's still going to be pretty difficult to turn this into a win for Sean. Going to need some unbelievable fans and things like that. He could have a three-point board against Ryan's too, though. Uh, gets to cover the ace. That's a nice improvement. And Ryan just needs to roll something to get past. 6-1. Uh, yeah, just keep it going from the back. Get closer to home. I don't think there's a lot of re shot reduction to be. We're not stepping into a second direct. And so the front is going to be the checker to go for Sean. Yep, and this could be a last chance. Ryan either gets past or volunteers a direct one more time. Or 2 is going to volunteer one last two shot to keep Sean alive in the game. Still got some racing chances if he misses, and he hits, though. Okay. And I think continues from the back there for containment. Wow, what a wild game. He's up to 30% now, a little bit better. He's making a run for it in this. It's it's very hard to win a late-game shot with all those blots around. 6-4, okay, Ryan back in the driver's seat, just entering and continuing is very strong and in indirect range as well. 6-5 is going to force Sean to come past. And, yeah, he could stay there for cons, I guess. I don't see how it gains with the ace. But I think, okay, this is going to basically decide it. But I think he was looking pretty good before the double sixes, too. Just had more checkers off and more progress. Five and one off. Once again, looking an awful lot like Ryan's got this. Potentially his first tournament one. Exciting stuff. Going to resign the match. And there you got it. That's our runner-up is Sean Williams of the Monte Carlo Open and Ryan Rebello winning that match with uh, playing a 3.35, which I think he'll be pretty happy with. Double checker errors and things like that, but well played. Very exciting match. See if he wants to... Woo! <laughs> Does Ryan ever smile? Yeah, he's totally smiling over there. You can't see it. You want to come talk to the fans, Ryan Rebello? Where are my mistakes in that game?
Oh, he just wants to know what his mistakes were. Are, are you interested at all that you'll be collecting some money for this no. tournament or anything like this? <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of what they... In the first game, there was some little tactical thing. We'd almost have to go look on the screen. But did Mate leave or tell you you can't touch it or what? Were you trying to look at it there? Played the cube pretty good in there. Yeah, you did. You were sharp on that. I'm trying to think if anything really interesting came up. Um, most of the takes were easy enough at the score kind of things, right? Like he was getting them in plenty early, so you didn't have tough decisions there. I remember there was one kind of challenging pass in there. So that's um, the hit with that 6-3 at the end? No, you made the right play there, yeah. I think someone in the chat said it was a money hit potentially, which wasn't clear to me. Um, but yeah, just at the score, you can't give up all those gammons. You can just play a quiet holding game. And it worked out pretty well. Did you end up winning that game, didn't you? With the contact from the... Somehow yeah, you won. Yeah, yeah eventually <laughs> that's the same game where you stayed and won it. That's pretty wild at the ace in the end and you got hit and still hung under it. Yeah, it was a good match all around, man. You both played pretty well. We can go look at it later, but congratulations. Is this your first tournament win too? Hell yeah, man. <laughs> There you go. That's your open chance, champion. Man, a few words. We got a reception to get to. I'm getting off the stream there. Oh, I don't know where Bill and Tara. They should be somewhere here to to close us out. They're off duty, probably eating out at the reception as well. But we'll be back at 10 p.m. local time with another high roller jackpot match. That's two hours from now between Wilcox, Snellings, and why can't I remember who? It's another name. It's another very strong player. Should be a very interesting matchup. Uh, but yeah, go take your dinner break with us or your lunch break, whatever it is there. Um, and we'll be back soon. Yeah, it's 2200 o'clock here. Um, two hours from now, as I announced. Man, exciting matches. Thanks for the happy birthday wishes again. I'll be back soon. Later, y'all. No, you didn't do anything. I'm just tired. Yeah, I got to go to the gym. We didn't lock it, but I got to go to the gym. Okay. I know. I'm going to go find it. You need to go to the gym.
Let's hit the dance floor Don't work too hard, my break a backbone Return of the Mac, the king is back though Corvette and cash, I never like those She saw the stone, you know how that go Fatality, my diamonds that cold Versace trunks, I hit my backstroke Knock on the door, she at the back, bro All it really take is a little taste Allen girl, blue eyes with a little bass for everybody, those still uh, listening here on the stream, we're uh, going to be shutting down for dinner break. Stream one will be taken down. We will resume at 10 p.m. tonight, Monte Carlo time. I'm not certain of the uh, match. It will either be the Monte Carlo Open Open Division Consolation Final or perhaps one of the uh, $5,000 High Roller Jackpot second round matches. So we will determine that and try to uh, give you a bit of prior notice. But until 10 p.m., we'll step away for that. Thank you for watching. Hope you're enjoying. Bye-bye.